Sure. I'm just gonna go through, I'm just gonna go down these, see which ones I, um, I commit. Uh, Thou shalt have no other god. I don't have any god, so I haven't broken that one. Two, craven images. No, I don't have any craven. Uh, I, don't, I don't accept there's a god to. Uh, three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord. I, again, I don't take his name in vain because I don't believe he exists, so I'm fine there. Uh, remember the Sabbath. I always remember Sunday. Um, <laughs> I know, I, I've got a calendar and everything, so I'm doing that. Uh, Honour thy father. Yeah, I do that. Uh, I've never committed adultery. Don't do that. Um, ever killed anyone? No, never killed anyone. Don't steal. I don't lie. And I don't covet. So. I am an amazing Christian. Pretty clear, yeah, you're a pretty clean living guy. Wow. There you go. Well, uh, whereas, I don't know, what, Carl, have you ever, what's your view? You I still, um, still open, like, post, that isn't for me. I'm um, just going to see that's uh, on there. That's opening other people's post, alert level, low, punishment, embarrassment, you have to walk along with your trousers around your ankle, <laughs> saying I'm a div. <laughs> Why do you open other people's mail? Uh, but it's just it's just a fella called Bruce who uh, he, he's the bloke who used to own the flat before me, and uh, I don't know. I started off and I thought, oh, should I pass it on? You know, because when people move, it's a lot of messing about tracking down where they've gone. Mm. So I thought, should I just leave them for a bit? And I collected some for a bit, and then there was one that sort of said, "This is uh, important" on the front of it. So I thought, how important is it? So I opened it. What was it? Was it important? Uh, not really. It was from a tattooist. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? It was just something they about. They said, "Oh, we use the AIDS needle on you. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you come in for a little test?" <laughs> so I just uh, I just started. Th I just kind of thought, "Oh, I'll start opening it, having a look." And it was it was weird because, do you know, like how you get fed up of being yourself? No, but go on. Well, I'm intrigued. Have, of course. No, you can just have days where you're like, "What I wish is I was going on?" It, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and Bruce and, Willis in your case, well, eh? well this this bloke was Bruce, so yeah. I just go, oh, let's see what you know. If I, if I was Bruce, yeah. would I be happier being him? Do you know, like yeah. I've said to you before, yeah. you never know if you don't feel well because they can't put you in someone else's body to sort of compare. No, but most people can just use their imagination. Yeah, sure. And, and so I sort of think they actually need to physically go into someone else's body to understand. That yeah, it's like terrible. ghost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, well. Would I enjoy being Bruce more? Sure. And what, so what have you what have you gleaned from Bruce? What's the, he's uh, got a tattoo. We know that. Uh, there wasn't that much. It was, it was mainly busy at Christmas. A lot of Christmas cards, which were good because I didn't yeah, get that oh, many. Yeah. He's so you just you put up his Christmas. Up. You put up his Christmas cards. That's well, that's you had Christmas cards <laughs> hanging in your flat. To, to, to have a lovely Christmas, Bruce. <laughs> Yeah. Auntie Jean, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, hang on a minute, because when you put them on your, you know, your mantelpiece or your shelf or whatever, you're not yeah. you're not looking at them every day. It's just a picture of Father Christmas. It doesn't matter who it's to or from. But why or, have them up at all? Well, why not just buy just some make blank Christmas? <laughs> you can yeah. just buy some blank cards yeah. and put them up. Use them every no, year. No, I don't have to. Bruce has got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, but I don't understand. It was more awkward, right? <laughs> Because the bloke downstairs, because I, because I used to always collect the stuff for Bruce, I got talking to a bloke who's in the same block, and like he used to see me picking stuff up for Bruce. <gasps> He'd always say, you know, all right, Bruce. No, you've never told him that you're not Bruce. Well, no point. In the pub I used to drink in, the landlord got it into his head that I was Steve, right? And you don't mean me? No, no, no. To call exactly. Steve. Yeah, no. This is this is before I met you. This is like t twenty-five years ago, and he called me Steve. And it got to the point I couldn't correct him. Yeah. Because I because it would be embarrassing for him, and so after about two years, um, we were playing cards, and someone said Ricky, and he went, "Who's Ricky?" And I went, "Ricky," and I just went red. I went, he went, "What do you mean, Ricky?" I went, uh, "Yeah, that's my name." He went, you, he said, "What do you mean, fucking Ricky?" I went, "Ricky," and I looked at him, "What do you mean, Steve?" I went, "I went, no, it's not Steve." He went. He said, well, I've been calling you Steve for two years. I went, have you? <laughs> like denying I'd ever heard him call me Steve. <laughs> oh, this guy, right? He, um... But hang on, did he, did he, what happened? What was the fallout from it? He's just sort of like, he was a bit confused. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, I think he still called me Steve for a little while, but it, <laughs> sometimes it was Ricky, sometimes it was Steve. It was, it was fine, right? But, um, this guy, right? He was, uh, he was a bank robber. Okay. Really? Yeah, he'd done he'd done um, seventeen years in all. In okay. prison. In prison, yeah. And um, I, I was sort of, I was a bit scared of him. I'm fascinated. He was he was fine. He was he was done now. He'd gone straight, totally straight, and he was running this pub. And um, 
I remember once, he'd, he'd tell me stories about it and he'd, he'd go on about his, uh, he did it with four people and um, they all did, they all did time and he said, he said, but you wouldn't recognise them now, he said. He said, they are the most respectable people you'd ever seen. He said, yeah, they're just uh, lovely businessmen, high of sophistication now. He said, you, you'd never guess. All right? And then one day, he came over to me, it was a busy pub, he went, Rick, Steve, <laughs> he said, you know those geezers I did the crime with? The other three. I mean, yeah, he said, they are in the pub here now. See if you can guess who they are. I said, you'll never guess who they are. I looked around. I saw three blokes in sheepskin coats with tinted hair covered in gold sovereigns and gold necklaces. And I went, no, who? He went, those three. I went, you are joking. You are fucking joking. That was his idea of Turtles of Biscuit. Tinted, they had tinted beards. <laughs> But they look like they look like fat Bee Gees covered in gold and sheepskin. It was unbelievable. It was. I went. Oh, that is that is a surprise. <laughs> that is a surprise. I thought they were barristers. <laughs> oh, unbelievable! I was always terrified of being mugged when I first moved to London. Um, and you remember, Rick? I uh, had a wallet with all my stuff in, and then I took to carrying a fake wallet, That's lovely. Okay, which I had some sort of old library cards and DVD cards, you know, video shop cards and stuff. And like, I put a fiver in there, you know. And then I got really anxious because I thought, what if I hand over my fake wallet? And he goes, well, it's a fake wallet. Okay. And then I got to hand over the real wallet, but maybe he also punishes me, you know, takes it out on me because he's angry. So then I took to carrying a second fake wallet. So I spent about two months carrying three wallets around, <laughs> two of which were fake, right? And then, do you know the reason I stopped? Because I thought, what if he, I give him both fake wallets, I give him one fake wallet, he opens it, he goes, well, this is a fake wallet. I give him the second fake wallet. He, now he's going to be twice as angry as he would have been if he only had the one fake wallet. And then I was thinking, what, but what if I do give him the fake wallet? And then he just starts using the library cards and the video cards, you know, and make, he could run up a huge fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be, yeah. I'd be in the same position I would have been like giving the, the money. Yeah, I also, I don't believe you'd ever put a fiver in the fake wallet. You wouldn't <laughs> be willing to. Yeah, yeah. I had a run in with crime. I was, uh, ripped off. Really? In, in a big sting operation a few years ago um i was at home and i was just i was rushing out and uh the phone went and it was my bank yeah and i went is that mr vase i went yeah he went um have you recently bought two hundred thousand pounds worth of gold bullion <laughs> and i went um i went jane are we, are we did bought, are we bought two, well, what, are we bought two hundred thousand pounds of gold bullion? <laughs> no, of course not. I, no. Uh, oh, um, well, someone's, uh, taken that money out of your bank account, uh, fortunately, and, uh, and they've purchased gold. And I went, right, okay. They went, um, we'd like your permission to get the CID involved. I went, well, yeah. I said, of course. I said, but hold on, you know it wasn't me then, um, so do I get the money back? And I went, yeah, you, all the money will be, um, put back into your bank. I went, fine. I said, yeah. I basically went, yeah, fill your boots. Mm. And they went, um, and can you come down? I went, oh yeah. So I arranged the time. I went down to the bank. There was the CID there waiting. And, uh, well, it turned out it was sort of an inside job. Someone who did some sort of random, um, checking of facts. You know, they phone you up and say, you're happy with the service. They put down the phone and went, oh, you never got so I spoke to that Ricky Gervais. Right, right. And, um, someone overheard. They were involved. They'd got a payoff from Mr. Big somewhere. Mm. It was out of the country. And, uh, but so. But isn't there more, I mean, you can't just, even if you work in a bank, you can't just walk off with cash, can you? There must have well, been a more elaborate. Yeah, they did a transaction, didn't they? They mm. okayed the transaction like it was me for these people. And then these people bought gold with it. And now all they have to do is go and collect the gold. Now, this is the tricky bit. So, what they don't know is now the bank know that it's not me collecting it. Right. So whoever turns up for the gold, they said they're probably just be, they might even be innocent couriers. Yes. But then we get, you know, the go, the go betweens or whatever. And where is it got, where is gold bullion kept? I don't know. It's just, um, I suppose you go and, go and get it from a, um, a vault somewhere right. and, uh, and, and take it away and take delivery of it. I, I, I don't know if it literally changes hands uh, or not. So what they need is obviously my passport. Mm. So, uh, they got the people, so it was gonna go to court, okay, I didn't have to go to court, but, um, I had to have a meeting with the CID for all the details and take the, you know, the, uh, it wasn't me and all that. Yeah. So, the funny thing was, I'm there with the CID man, and I said, well, how did they, how did they think they were gonna get away with it? And they said, well, they, they turn up with, um, a, a fake passport of yours, show the ID and I walk away, I went, right, okay. And they said they get a, 
um, a passport from uh, either a dead man or they steal one and they uh, replace it with your details and your picture and the CID man started smirking. Right? I went, what is it? Uh, well, they, um, the picture they used was this one and he showed me this fake passport and I tell you what, I was laughing. Uh, we, we, then he started chuckling and we laughed for about 10 minutes because all they did was they cut out the picture on the first series of The Office from the DVD. So it's a picture of David Brent <laughs> sitting behind a desk with that little smug look on his face. <laughs> That's my passport and this thing. So, I mean, uh, they might have got caught anyway. Yeah. It's nice to know that even such, you know, elaborate operations as this, it still comes down to just idiocy, criminal well, incompetence. Who was left in charge of getting a photo? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they go, uh, uh, you know, Dave. You're, uh, you're you're doing so and so and so. You're Julie. You're on the inside. <laughs> uh, Bertie, can you get a picture? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, can get, you can get a photograph of Ricky Gervais, can you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Where you go? You go what are you going to HMV for? What, what are you going to HMV for? <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have recruited someone who looks exactly like Bernard Breslau. <laughs> it's unnerving. Yeah. Clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not. You're right. And this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> Now that's funny. He knows funny costumes when he thinks. <laughs> but you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. Because I used to, a technique I used to develop at university was whenever people bothered me in the street, I would pretend to be sort of generic foreign. I can't really do a foreign accent, but I would just be like, like if someone asked for directions, I was always worried about giving them the wrong directions, so I would just, sorry, I don't, I don't really, uh, how you say, you know, it's just yeah. kind of vague foreign. Brilliant. And I've periodically used this method throughout my life, and not so long ago a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics. And I sprang into me old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian woman. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. I yeah, don't know what accent it went, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, I was like, I don't, uh, he was, well, let's just let me explain to you about it. I, sorry, I'm not from, um, and the guy, this world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet <laughs> Nord. And the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear Sorry. Not when you were famous. Oh yeah. No you didn't. Yeah. Cause I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me. I just, it was like a lapse no! of concentration. God. It oh, was a I lapse see. of concentration because, um. And did your bow tie spin round <laughs> and you squirted in water and ran away? <laughs> That's what I did. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you don't always remember that you've been on the team. It's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, are you Stephen Merchant? And I, and then you're in this position where you've got to go, either you've got to admit what you did or you've got to carry on the lie <laughs> and I chose the second one <laughs> so I was kind of like I don't I don't know who that is what I don't know what you and he was like oh god really you look a lot like him I was going I've never heard I don't <laughs> in fact you are Stephen Merchant freeze <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm always getting stopped for for I mean, there's so many charities now. Anything. I think that's the other problem, actually, that there's so many now. Years ago, a problem wouldn't have been a problem. Whereas today, mm. it's someone's got this problem, someone's got OCD, and we're collecting for that. Right. It's not just starving people anymore. It's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah. A lot of new, bank details. A lot of new diseases have Definitely. cropped up, particularly for these sort of rich and famous diseases that 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 really uh, third around. world people do not suffer from. So I was in um, W. H. Smith's, buying probably buying a Valentine's card. Oh, uh, okay. So there you go. You see, so I do yeah. do a bit. And um, is this the cheapest one you've got, love? <laughs> and I bought yeah. this, I bought a big bar of like um, Galaxy. Oh, cheaper okay. than a cheaper than a box of chocolates, but yeah, still nice for me. That because they had an offer oh. on, right? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. She's getting a card, isn't this she? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I felt awkward because she could see that. Oh, he must have some money. What a big bar because of you could afford it? some chocolate. Well, mm. it's, it was like an impulse buy thing. Yeah, right. So she's thinking <laughs> he's got money to burn. Yeah. So <laughs> at first, I didn't yeah. know who she There's was. There's a guy over here buying a big bar of galaxy and a, and a, and a small card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, follow him. So she's dun, there. Dun, dun, I'm dun, thinking dun, she dun. just works in WH Smith. Yeah. Morning, sir. All right, how's it going? Right. Oh, have you got a minute? 
Mm. So I'm thinking, oh, is it W. H. Smith saying, you know, how often do you buy the Galaxy? Because they always yeah. do sort of surveys yeah. and stuff. So That's she so. said, oh, you like chocolate? I went, yeah. She said, yeah, I'll have a chocolate. Right? Oh, little chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah. Then she goes, you. right. Uh, are you aware of the problems in the world? So I'm thinking, oh. What's this? You see, they've been clever there. Yes. I can't say no and walk off. I've had a bit of chocolate. Sure. Right. So Why don't you freeze. Um, Just freeze. <laughs> <laughs> We're closing up now. We're closing the shop. <laughs> so I said, "Oh, yeah, there's loads of problems. I'm sick of it." So she says, um, "No, not yours, sir. There so, are some people who are starving." Yeah, and he explained to her. I said, "Listen, I said I've got loads of these charities every right. month. I right. said my bank account is literally." Because I, I don't use my current bank account that much, so right. you look at it with a statement. It's like tools for Africa, right? Help the aged, mm. deaf kids. Yeah. Um, there's another one. dot com, deaf kids dot com. There's, 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 there's loads. It's tools for Africa when they send people like Carl over to help out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is comic relief. <laughs> tools for Africa is another name for comic relief if you watch it. So, um, so anyway, I said I do all this. She's going, oh, that's very good of you, but you know. W w we we need your money as well so she's saying just just as much as you can afford you know every little helps and everything i've been here all day look as you can see i haven't had much luck it's not that busy in the shop blah blah oh all right then right so i'll give her the details she looks at the amount she goes right now the options are we've got you can tick the five pound box the ten pound box the twenty pound box the fifty pound box this is a monthly payment right she said we'll I put you down for a tenner Forget the fiver, she just leapfrogged that straight, straight away. <laughs> yeah. And you can't go back, can you? Because you, then you feel bad. Sure. To sort of go, well, you've got a five pound one there, tick, tick, that one. Yeah. She can see I've got the chocolate, sort of wasting your money on things that aren't necessary yeah. when there's people dying around the world. Yeah. yeah. I said, right, yeah, tenner, fine. And, you know, I filled it all out, I left the shop. Yeah. Spent more on that than I did on the card and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right, so you, you spent under ten pounds then, basically. So <laughs> I get I get get home and everything, forget about it. I keep seeing these statements going out. It looks like Gandhi's bank account. The, the amount of stuff I'm giving away for charities. Sure. I forget about it though. Forget it. It's I'm doing my bit for charity. I should yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Anyway, something kicks off in the world. Right. Ring, ring, ring. ring. Oh. Hello, is that Mr. Bilkinson? Straight away, I'm thinking, oh, who's this? This isn't good. Yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> it's so and so charity. Right. Are you aware of the problems in the world? I said, yes, I am. There's lots of them. Yeah, but have you heard about the latest one? I said, yeah. She went, well, I'm just calling up to say thanks for the donation that you give us every month, but it's not enough. So I said, yeah, well, I think I give enough. I said, you're not the only ones here. I yeah. said, I've got, I've got five charities on the go here. Yeah. I said, and, you know, I've give you what I can afford. Yeah. She's going, yeah, but let me just tell you about the problems. There's so many people missing here. This is bad. These are dying. Da, da, da. I'm going. I know. I know. I've, I was told all this when I signed up, mm. and I agreed to that amount. Yeah. The ten pounds that I said I'm happy to give you. That's what I can afford. Call some other people up who aren't giving you a tenner. Yeah. She goes, no, but we haven't got their numbers, you know. And we understand that you're a supporter of our charity, and you know, just a little bit more will help. I said, listen, I can't. I've given you that amount. If you want, if it's not enough, let's stop the direct debit now. Right. I said, if it's not helping you, let's can it, <laughs> yeah. and I'll give it to deafkids.com. <laughs> I said, because they're not calling up mithering. No. Well, they can. That's a good thing with them. So <laughs> she said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it then. She, and, and she wouldn't let it go. And um, in the end, she got an extra £1.50 off me. Right. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go this year. Uh, you know, hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. <laughs> just like they do in, with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit. It's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year. You're going to have a good one. And who decides? Right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting. A with monk, but who gets together in the meeting? Uh, the, what will be the, the first charity. year? So what will be the first year this year? Right, well, we'd we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what, what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. Go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just going to give so them food. So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific people. So it's like hungry... Starving, people who are starving. If someone goes, oh, me, I, I, I've got, uh, I, I don't know, uh, what's another problem? Adenoids. Me, me kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once. Because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. There's things right. that I want. I can't have 
do without have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that. Right. But that's it could what I'm saying, Steve. Years before okay. your charity I know, comes but what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Oh, I need out really bad. I'm paraplegic. But so does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because if we don't oh. help the hungry now, right? They they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah. Well, where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. I thought I was going to be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this this is just it's just a chaotic order. idea. It's, it's a chaotic not. because people who are hungry, there's there's always going to be people who are hungry. Yeah, but but then you're not going to just because there's always going to be new people. Yeah. yeah, but but I sort the problem out. They've eaten all the food. It doesn't last forever. The but, food, but Carl. I sort it out properly. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What do you think you... they haven't Let thought of Let me hear that. the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's going to run out. Right. Give them a proper... You see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all... Do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? Right, when I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yeah. I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop. Mm. Because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so and so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out at Amazon with a computer. I saw it. They were using it as a breadboard <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric. It's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe. I wonder what their toilet facilities are like. Right. Mm. Thinking they might it might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know mm. how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company <laughs> had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet. Mm. Right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, "Oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there." I'm thinking, "Oh, brilliant." I go round there. It is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> It doesn't work, and this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. So let's just do the seeds. You're not giving them a... Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any... Got any food? Got any sandwiches? I'm well, starving. I have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. yeah. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? I'm going to help you. How? What are you going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and oh. water them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some. No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that, that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. There's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all? No, or you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it. So, now. not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald headed fucking twonk. <sighs> I think I'd quite like to meet some proper Aborigines. It amazes me the way that these people still live like cavemen did years ago. They waste nothing. They have a use for everything. I saw some pictures in the paper about some tribe somewhere who chucked their spears at a helicopter that tried to land close to them. If the tribe got annoyed with you, they would let you know that they were annoyed by shaking their knob at you. That's what they do. <laughs> oh, God! Oh God. See, that's, that's like a proper guide thing. Just in case you ever meet one, they start doing that. Carl just ends that chapter by saying, I don't know what the women do if they get annoyed. <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Within this new Carl book, of course, there are extracts from his famous diary. Uh, this is... You've actually been to Madeira, have you? Yeah. Okay, so this is a bit more of a factual, factually accurate, informative chapter mm. on Madeira. September 30th. Going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> oh God! <sighs> we had to get two cabs to the villa because they couldn't fit five of us into one. It cost 85 euros each. That's just whinging. That's not anything. 
That's there though, isn't it? It's a dare way. To, but it's not. Done they don't know how far that yeah. was. They don't know whether that's rip off or how you know. It's just letting you know that. What you don't know what the distance was. If it was, if Tuck it was a mile, a it's a rip off. If it was twenty five miles, it's a bargain. And you know you can't get five of you in one cab. It's all little little things that might help you on a journey. Yeah. Suzanne's dad said he liked the free biscuits that were in the cupboard. We went to try and find. Sorry, it. this isn't useful as a guidebook at all. That is absolutely in that. I know they go well, as a guidebook. So I'm like, oh, Suzanne's dad liked the free biscuits in the cupboard. How much people complain, you know? And they're going to be like, there's no free biscuits in this cupboard. We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because it because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> 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 That's why we went away. Oh yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? He, uh, to he's drown out the sound of vacuum cleaners, or he puts a vacuum cleaner in no, his if, room if to drown out the sound of the mopeds? No, if you've just got a noise, if you've just got a noise, um, that's constant. It makes you nod off, and it drowns out every other background noise. So all you've got is like, if it's a vac, it's just, and if that's constant for like all night, mm. you just. Not people off. next door going, they've got their vacuum cleaner on again. Put on the JCB. <laughs> people next door going, they've got the <laughs> JCB on. Get the. But poke, poke the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> That's how nuclear wars start. <laughs> yeah. It works. Doesn't work. We Ear watch plugs. Earplugs. Drown out everything. I've tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> Oh, you're such a strange little creature. Oh. We watched Jerry Maguire in Spanish. Suzanne wanted to go to bed, but I just said I wanted to hear the show me the money line in Spanish to see if it's as catchy. It wasn't. October 3rd. Sorry, sorry, it's Portuguese or Spanish? What I don't know what, where they, what they're speaking in this country. Madeira. So right. it's Spanish and Portuguese, is it? It's Portuguese, isn't it? Uh, I think there's a mix. I think you get people going it's Portuguese, on holiday. I think. Yeah, but you get Spanish people going there. Oh, so. Okay. so they sometimes show television programmes for ho for possible Spanish holiday makers. Is that <laughs> what you're saying? Or have you just got this factually inaccurate because it's a load of old toss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Amazing. Oh. October 3rd. Didn't do much this morning. Just think about this. <laughs> Just think about this. <laughs> Why would you put it in? As a as holiday. A <laughs> Just think about this next line. Judith Chalmers. What happened? Not a lot. Mm. Think about this, Rick, as a description of a holiday. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, you, okay. As Carl said, he loves to go travelling, it broadens the mind and yeah. everything. This is what he did. This is he's there with his family, he's in Madeira. <laughs> Didn't do much this morning. Just sat by the pool saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> Like fucking Noah. That's why you see nothing. Go How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or you grab oh, them in the air? Just see the legs going. <laughs> oh god! Stuck my finger on the top. They grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what? When it, like a, some sort of insect lifeguard, you'd see some at land, and they go right. That's me. Da 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 but it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that because you know that's something you know you're witnessing death, and if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think, have they learnt the lesson, or will they be back, and will they be dead in here tomorrow? But if they can get an extra day, I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday. Do your bit. I'm lucky enough to see the world. Do your bit. <laughs> I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving. Flies and things. Is there something? There's something so sort of. Meanwhile, an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah, well, he was saving a beetle. <laughs> there's something so kind of I don't know, desperately existential about your diary. That's what's <laughs> yeah, so extraordinary about yeah. it. As he says, I just sat by the pool saving insects that flew into it. It was full of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, so. God. It's so depressing. Isn't oh. it? All right. We walked round the shops. Suzanne's dad bought two packets of the biscuits he'd like to take back home with him. Suzanne's man bought a tin of corned beef. <laughs> it was a bit of a boring day today. Jesus. There was a dead bird out the back. Oh, oh. no. Where were you, Carl? Suzanne's dad said it looked like it had flown into a wall and killed itself. No, I think it caught a few insects, but they were covered in chlorine, so it poisoned it. Loads of ants were eating it. Oh, God. I dug a hole under a tree and buried it. The ants were still all hanging around the scene of the death, ages after the burial. 
Suzanne's dad said I should have left the bread for the ants to eat because I was messing up the food chain. I felt bad, so I gave the ants some breadcrumbs. This is weird. This is just so dark. This is dark. really weird. It's good bread out there, though, isn't it? I should have put that. We have to eat all the food we've got because we're going home tomorrow. Suzanne's ma'am cut her finger opening the corned beef tin and fainted. <laughs> Sorry! This is really weird. Why do you have to eat all the food? Isn't this like... What was it, what's that <laughs> film, the, uh... Amateurville horror where there's like a haunted house and there's dead insects and ghostly children walking through the corridors, <laughs> old people fainting, oh, oh insects. I'm just saving the insects, mother. But you always eat all the food that's that's in the fridge before you go home, don't you? It's but all there to be eaten. She bought some pikelets, which I've, what? I've never had them. They like squash crumpets. <laughs> right, okay. Start again. Start the whole thing again. She bought some what? Some pikelets. Pikelets? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't like them because they're not as fat as crumpets. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah. I just like a different didn't language! Eat them, and it was a big upheaval because, like, I was going home and, and her dad kept trying to sneak them into our bags. Because <coughs> he's like, they were for you, you take Smuggling. them. We don't want your stuff in, in our house. once Because he gets a bit funny about stuff being left over. There's bins that you can't put certain stuff in. There's a bin in the lounge and I put a tangerine peel in it. He goes, that, that sort of stuff does not go in that bin. <laughs> so it's rubbish, yeah, but it's not the right sort of rubbish. Oh, what, but, Someone will camp next to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to get a, a better class of camper. <laughs> oh, that's the book. Uh, it's called Happy Slap by a Jellyfish. Yeah, that's from one of the chapters, isn't it? By Carl Pilkington. Get that soon. Particularly if you're thinking of visiting uh, Madeira or Australia. Well, that's about it. Um, thanks for listening um, to this. If you enjoyed this and you haven't heard the the others, there's a we've got the whole. Um, all three series on iTunes. You can go and download those. Uh, the Ricky Gervais Show, is that what it's called? It's called The Ricky Gervais Show, yeah. Um, Carl's also made a programme for me, Steve, um, on my um, Fame DVD, out in November. Um, it's called Fame, so I thought we'd look like, oh, Fame, I'm Gonna Live Forever. Remember that guy we met who's gonna live forever? Oh, yeah. Called Howard? Yeah. That was a meeting of mine, and it's, um, it, it's Carl meeting Howard, and it's... Uh, got it's, on with him. It's really good, isn't it? It's really good. And um, they do, he, he really gets on with him. And um, we're probably going to do a new series of the podcast maybe next year. What do you think, Carl? If you're not too busy making this film with Clive Warren. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Don't, Go, don't plan anything. Yeah, just ch check out um, rickygervais.com. I am Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl. Right. Missy Elliott. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they, they, the, the clues are coming in f uh, furious. The answers, I should yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go on in. Oh, this is what Yeah, Rockbusters is well underway, Carl. Don't worry, you've done yeah. your work there. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh... You're just gonna tease us, aren't you, with three, uh, headlines, if you And I'll like. choose one, then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's go the way on. it works, and at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with, <laughs> with, with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last he confesses. <laughs> yeah, um, go on. So the three headlines for you to pick from, we've got, um, first one, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. Right. right. And, uh, the third one, <laughs> um, I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, <laughs> um... When? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think you said medieval times. Yonks ago then, yonks ago. Yeah, <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we, we're going back quite a bit on this. Well, one. you know, when you do f find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time, it just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, Alright, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that, because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and I'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made. 
you know, they weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So there wasn't as many houses, right? right? So what you what you ended up getting is like uh, you know the rich people having a nice place to live, oh. and the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, "Look, I haven't got anywhere to live. It's a bit cold. Can you let me stay?" Right? Mm. So they'd go, uh, "Oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days." But they ended up staying for like weeks, yeah. right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd uh, be making a lovely dinner like a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and uh, nice veg, yeah. gravy. And this happened every time, did it? <laughs> it <works. laughs> this is where the saying came from. <laughs> this is what happened, Rick. This, this is what happened every time. It was in that vague book, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague sayings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right, so. Uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but yeah. the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Yeah. Uh, meaning. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's rubbish. Um, okay. Uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why does that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why, do, why, why do they always, in every situation <laughs> when you want to get rid of a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so he They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. And are you giving me the cold shoulder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like, I like to do it cryptic. <laughs> that way, in years to come, <laughs> someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh, bacon in the morning! Oh, bacon in the morning if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. While the others just tease us again with the others, we'll come got, back to lose. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> Let's have another educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your your, your talk of well just the thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now we don't never see them. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So oh yeah, and the and the the lady with the head. Uh, like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's not yeah, go through these again. It just raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> He's bluffing. Um, and. He's bluffing. But it's, it's Who was the king then? Mm. Don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh-huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space because it's like I don't know. Don't know why they're running out of space. But <laughs> okay. They haven't. They haven't got much. I don't know why. Really. <laughs> I was gonna say they should have just buried them, but <laughs> yeah, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room. <laughs> to, uh, to have a conversation with himself. Yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's that. There you go. You've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because it was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, no, no. I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day, and you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yes. So you can imagine like just constant like being depressed. Mm. So and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh God, what are we <laughs> going to do? So they said. We're all too fed up. 
at the moment. <laughs> said, let's, let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what we need to do is, uh, have a big party. Mm. So mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're all diseased and that, so yep. they set f they set fire to the bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by. And you know, uh, we'll we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was fire. it was it was all the bones. Bomb fire is is bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, nah, probably. Okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I mm. reckon it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so stuff. That, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? <laughs> Do you like the fireworks? I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks, and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out. And but I also think just the adults tedious. think the kids love it, yeah. and, 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 and if they just got together and said, "Should we go this year?" They'd all go, "No." Yeah, let's not absolutely. Let's not go this yeah. year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, I'd pay to see. That's a fire <laughs> display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's that excellent. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. Play, play the record. Oh God! <laughs> Hello, I'm Ricky Gervais. As the Canadian physician William Osler once said, the desire to take medicine is perhaps the greatest feature which distinguishes man from animals. From keyhole surgery to stem cell research, modern medicine enables the 20th century man to play God. But how did we get here? What incremental advances through the ages gave birth to the medical wonders of today? Here to discuss the history and practice of medicine, a Stephen Merchant, Graduate from the University of Warwick and now award winning writer. Thank you very much indeed. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a shaven chimp with a head like a fucking orange. All right. <laughs> well, there is obviously so much to discuss, uh, Ricky. I wonder if. In an effort just to provoke some uh, initial thoughts, uh, if I can offer another quote from the great Carl Sagan, oh. who said, um, Advances in medicine and agriculture have saved vastly more lives than have been lost in all the wars in history. Mm. So quite a... Uh, yeah, just shows you shouldn't really worry about war. What do you mean? Not a big problem, is it? Obviously. So that's a good point there, Carl. <laughs> no, war, war's not as bad yeah, not as sure. a lot of people make out. Not what do sure. you think, Carl? Overrated? Uh, too much fuss about all. Oh. Well, I I don't know anyone who's died in a war, but I know loads of people who have died from you know cancer and what have you. So is that is that going on Carl's quote? Does that work? Is he right? What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we're off to a fascinating start. I think it's probably best, uh, Rick, if we return to the very beginning of time, the dawn of man, because of course, uh, even in primitive prehistoric ages, medicine was practiced in some ways, from the uh, research people have done, cave paintings and the like. Uh, Carl, I wonder if you would just give us your initial thoughts on, um, you know, the, uh, the medicine of the ancient world. Uh, you, you've not, you sound like you're, if you, you haven't studied it or? Or you're being... Are you being modest? Are you being modest? I've never you really thought about it. Uh, what I mean, do you think? It, it didn't have much. I know that, um, Tutankhamun, he, uh... Tutankhamun? He, he died of, like, a, having a knee injury. So they didn't have that much medicine knocking about back then. Right, where do you get this information from? It sounds vague. I, I read it, I read it at, uh, an exhibition I went to. And, uh, the, the okay, did you read the whole sentence, or no, just... No, I just saw, like, a, yeah. they had some, like, video footage, like, made up. It wasn't from yeah. the time, and they just sort of said, "This is probably what happened." Sure. Did Come you on. put the headphones on and listen, though, or do you just guess it? From I the just pictures? looked because sure, I, I, I couldn't have the headphones. <laughs> of course not. Uh, yeah. Why can you have the headphones? Uh, they're just they're expensive. <laughs> How much? About fifty quid, I think, deposit and everything. 
Well, well you get that back deposit, though. If you return it? them, all you have to do is take them yeah, off your head like and hand them in. I don't like the idea of handing money over because it's like when you get a flat and that, and you put a deposit in. You never get the full deposit back. I don't like deposits. Well, what Trust do you think's going to? What do you think they're going to do? They're going to they're going to take fifty quid off because you, know, you put wallpaper on your headphones. No, but it's, it's a not the same, is it? You're wa- so you're going to deprive yourself of education because you don't trust the natural history museum. He came off a chariot. The dangerous things. <laughs> he came off a chariot. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that on the. Fa- How do you know he died? How could you tell from visual images that Tune Kamun died from a knee injury? It's just. It, it, um, honestly, it's, you're going to make yourself look daft here because that's what happened. Imagine that in a room with Carl Pilkington, we make ourselves, make ourselves look daft. I would be after. W- uh, that would be incredible. So aside from Tune Kamun's knee injury, that's pretty much your grasp of the ancient world in medicine. Uh, well, I don't know. Anyone else who's knocking about? Whenever well, what you about that if age? we go back even further? What about if we go to sort of primitive man, cave dwelling man? What do you know there of of medicine in that early stage? Uh, they didn't really, they didn't really bother. Okay, is that medicine. guessing or wasn't what? the earliest ones like people like shaman and those, well, those absolutely of course tribal lords that would say, well that that was um, I assume even you know pagan man had sort of. Apothecaries that, that certain roots and yeah 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 shaman who would use uh, herbs and so on. But of course, if we go back to uh, primitive man, you're obviously familiar. I believe it's pronounced. Uh, is it tri- tri- trepanning? Oh, when you take the top of your head off and let Where, out um, the demons and they found various skulls from ancient man with holes bored in the top, some of which had healed over, suggesting that they had lived. indeed drilled holes in their head, or presumably they wouldn't have had drills in that point. Cracked the head yeah. and in their thinking letting out evil spirits and then they healed back over so in some instances the people survived mm. don't you think it's fascinating that, that there was there was a w- um, one point when man discovered that this thing that we now call the brain which sort of houses the mind he knew was in his head it's not that amazing well I no think. it's not to you because you know it's there but, no, no, but, but back then I reckon I'd know that's where it is why? Do you, can you feel where you're thinking? Well, it just makes sense to put it there. What do Why? you mean? When you think and you speak, it's, it comes out of your mouth. So yeah. it just makes sense that whatever's near that is near to the mouth. If your brain was in your foot, it'd take ages for you to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't! Why? Yeah. This is like actually talking to a primitive man <laughs> about <laughs> his know. understanding of medicine. <laughs> They yeah. would have more insight. By this point, we'd have just cracked open your head to get the demons out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Shall we move on to um, the ancient world in terms of Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, of course, because they made huge advances, particularly the Romans, who understood, of course, the importance of sanitation. You know, famously, their streets were clean. Yeah. Don't you think that if we hadn't have cleaned up as much, that I don't know, we'd be stronger. What? Uh, well, they, well, I know what you mean. Yeah, they, 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 say, they, no, say, they say, they say, let the your baby, kids eat dirt. Eat yeah, of course. That. Well, that, that, that's building up its sort of, um, you know, immunity system. If you're too cosseted, you don't, you don't fight it. And, you know, that's exactly what, um, uh, immunization is, giving you a bit Yeah, but of it's gone disease. mental now. Whenever a baby's born, it's drugged out of its eyeballs. It's only about mean? a week old. They're giving it all sorts of shots. Like what? Loads of stuff. Stuff for whooping cough. Yeah, you uh, don't want Oop and Cough. Toot and Carmoon could have died of Oop and Cough. No, but, but did you give it, give it loads of stuff? And uh, now it's like, I don't know, it's making us weak. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> soon there's going to be things that, one, we're not immune to, and two, our antibiotics no longer work. Because, of course, things like um, the viruses and, and, and bacteria or whatever, they evolve and change so quickly that you can't keep up with them. And, and um, also, there's this big thing, you know, like the superbug, for example, uh, there's a very strong the theory that says that it's where people took half the course of antibiotics and what it did was it was almost like an immunization to the bacteria and virus against yeah. the antibiotic they got stronger they they that's, um, that's what i mean so yeah we need some germs as you'd call them but there are some that we have eradicated i mean i think it was uh, in our lifetime that they eradicated smallpox from the world they just stopped it and it saved I mean, millions and millions of lives, mm. and they they wiped it out. Um, there are rumours, of course, uh, that both Russia and America still have the smallpox virus under lock and key, which they could theoretically breed and use in a chemical warfare situation. Well, there was a bit of a scandal a few years ago, I think ten years ago, where 
in a, a university laboratory, someone came across a marked yogurt pot in deep freeze that had smallpox in it. That was a hangover from the the seventies. When you say it was marked, was it like someone's put their name on it because they don't want someone to uh, to eat no, their no, smallpox no, yogurt? No, I, I think they they you know they looked into it and it was the deep frozen wow. um, smallpox virus that you know thawed out they and released. They just left in a fridge. <laughs> well, I think so. Yeah, it was a, an admin understand. problem. Um, uh, I, I'm sure that it's somewhere. What I mean is, it's under lock and key or, or, or frozen at minus well, that's 200 degrees enough, centigrade. Why? Under lock and key and all that. It's, it's, it's not good enough. Get rid of it. Why are they keeping a little tub of smallpox knocking about? Well, are they not? Are they not meant to be? Well, well that's a lesson. What are they doing there in the first place? That's To me, that's like in James Bond, where they don't kill him when they have the chance. There's always that little thing of, oh, let's play with danger. Let's keep a bit. Yeah. Well, Pop it's it probably next to AIDS in the Kiara bottle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand <laughs> why, you'd, why, you'd, why you'd store that. Well, there's probably a presumption. It's probably a thing from the uh, Cold War, where people were thinking, "Well, listen, what if Russia's still got some smallpox? We better hang on to some smallpox." It's just yeah. clutter, though, as well, isn't it? You see, we're obsessed. We're keeping stuff, and it's the same with germs. We can't even say, "Get rid of that. We won't be needing it." Smallpox. We'll keep it just in case. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> Fire tools. Right. What do you think of that, Carl? What would you? Th how would you? Do? What would if you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal? What would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh, Cockroach. I'd have, uh, I'd have like, uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. So you've, that's, that, that's as big as you can be now then. So you, you, you can't really pop on a lion's head, because it'd just lay there, going, I can't fucking move. Alright. I'd have, uh, head of an owl. Right? The head of an owl? Yeah, why, 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 come on, why, what does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So, okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll, mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works, yeah. isn't it? Okay. With the cat and the dog and all that. Mm. Okay. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have, uh, I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now, you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with the head of an owl. Slithering along. How yeah. is that gonna be friendly? They'll be- they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the sludge. No, cause the head's that nice that they'll- they'll forgo the, uh, the sludge. But hold on though, but wait a minute, so, this got- it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0 0.1 miles an hour, with a- going, whoo, right, you come over, you kick the head off. How is this No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah. Of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, a ball. No, this isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's- oh, God, Why has it got the slug- Why because is that so attractive? what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, an armadillo, they're good when they're on their feet. Flip them, they get stuck. Like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. <laughs> so if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can- Why well, have a limpet stuff. then? But, but, but it no. can't get any- how- it can barely move, it can just hardly go and, get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. What just, just can't get but anywhere. But how can it escape from danger? It's gonna move very slowly. No, cause what, it'll that's lock, the worst it'll lock animal. itself in, it'll lock itself in. Yeah, and then I'll just scoop it up on the you sand. You can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I'd give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has it got peacock heard. feathers? I guess this, it's just- This it's is just the so worst animal you- I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does, what, that's the thing. least threatening thing, peacock feathers. It's like Danny LaRue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be arming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Hmm. Uh, they eat lettuce. They eat lettuce? They eat lettuce? Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling them what he's gonna eat now, the owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yeah, <laughs> let it eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that, and let it eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that- if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, there was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> You wouldn't- you wouldn't even double take, it'd just be like, oh there's the, uh, the owl head peacock feathered thing. I don't know why he's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Cause that's the only way it can see, properly. Cause his head's coming out, like that. 
So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even explaining <laughs> no, its, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, no, it's, 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 it's mainly made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> oh God! Oh fuck it out! What a useless animal that is, Carl. I mean, but nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Oh, now and again, you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was. I think that's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, it's nonsense, absolute well, nonsense. Well, you're saying Absolute that. nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it? <laughs> and that's what happens with old people, once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old, what's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo, what's it doing? Can't fly. Its wings are useless. Eat it. Tastes horrible. Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I think I think they over farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it. But they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're it making this up again. All conjecture. No, but they, they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, "It's not for me, though." <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea. You don't You're know just making this. it up. What's this based on? I've that just... people, and also, why would that kid it out? Because I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, "Don't get another one in," and they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd ca take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once again, no got his information from a glacier mint no, advert. No, it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's gonna make them stronger. Mm. If scientists could bring back to life the creatures that have, uh, existed in the past, do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Bad idea. Bad idea? Yeah. Now, leaving aside the horrors of Jurassic Park, do you think, for research purposes, it might be a useful idea? Um, I don't think it is. It's for me. It's like a friend reunited. It's like <laughs> it's like people who you knew ages ago getting back in touch, and you go, I don't want to get in touch with you. <laughs> that was then, and it's the same with a mammoth. That was then. You had your day. It didn't work out. Now to bring it back, it's unfair. You're messing with nature anyway. I think I've said to you before about. I don't know what they do with them, the massive things. I think it's, it's like, it, it, they're just not thinking about it. It's like rushing into buying furniture that's massive, and then you get it back and you go, can't get it through the door. No, I don't be like that with a mammoth. Where no, are putting them? Oh, I didn't think of that. But what about if you could say you could feed the third world with mammoth meat? But what's wrong with, with, with we've got loads of cows and stuff. Why do they need a mammoth? No one even knows what it tastes like. Imagine that. You bring it back and you've got another dodo on your hands. <laughs> no, People go, this is well, t this is horrible. Well, they used to eat them, because they, again, what they, what humans found out is they, uh, they could take down a mammoth, but they got greedy and they found out they could, uh, they could chase them and so they'd go over an edge of a cliff. And what they did, they went crazy and they used to herd them and they'd all die, but of course then they'd waste the meat because they couldn't eat it all. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, I think that's why we shouldn't bring them back, because they are too big. So even if- Didn't you hear a word of what you said then, didn't you? No, no I did. You can- everyone can eat them, but the yeah. problem is they're so big that you couldn't eat it quick enough so it all went off. Yeah, but I was saying that they killed too many at once. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he no, know I heard what you're that. I heard that. But what I'm saying is, why not bring back an animal that's smaller, manageable yeah. for everyone? Yeah. Um, that's why the chicken is perfect. <laughs> Out of all the animals, perfect. Good size, feeds a family of four, <laughs> whilst it's alive it's giving you eggs. I agree. So and it uh, tastes nice. But it doesn't if you think it's not having a good life. If suddenly, suddenly it has said to me, I stopped eating it because I found out about how badly they were treated like ten years ago and at least I have organic. And honestly, eating an animal that's been tortured doesn't taste nice. Foie gras would make me vomit. The yeah. thought of it, the evil involved in torturing a goose because the liver tastes slightly better. I mean, where does it end? I think if they looked after, they don't want to die. The ones in a nice warm little 
you know, hut, being fed lovely food, you're going, right, we're going to cut your head off, and they're probably like, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to miss this, I'm loving this life. Whereas the one sat in its own shit's going, have me first, I'm sick of it. There's all, there's different ways of looking good, at it. Good point. So, what you're saying is, give animals a bad life, torture them, and they'll be happy when you eat them. Brilliant. But we've ordered a what's it? We've ordered a turkey. Right. It's way too big. So I don't know what we're gonna do with it. And it's worrying me now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice on Christmas Day, but it's my job to look after the kitchen and everything tidy up. And I know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it all. <laughs> the fact that he's been given a job to make him worthwhile, really, it's like a little home. No, but a chicken, like, uh, your chicken. Arthur, you, you're washing up today, aren't you? Yeah, Arthur's job. And that's the problem with, with a mammoth. I think the idea of it's probably quite pleasant. You go, oh, that's something new to, to try out. But afterwards, when you got to tidy it up and stick it in cling film, you'll be going, how much of this have we got? <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't bring back the mammoth. Um, Brilliant. Charles Darwin, of course, once <laughs> said, uh, I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent god would have created parasitic wasps with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars. Mm. His point being that, you know, uh, creatures and their reproductive cycles are so complicated, so intricate, so bizarre, that that alone is proof of the non-existence of god. Where do you stand on that? Um... It's, it's pretty weird. We talked about it ages ago, didn't we, about the wasp that has a thing growing in it and all that. Um... Lays its egg in the spider. Yeah, and then the spider goes mad, doesn't it? Uh, you fucking can't lay your eggs in me, you fucking stripey wanker. Goes absolutely fucking mad. It is weird. I've got a wasp going out my arse in a couple of weeks, you fucking... Don't know, I don't know how it, how it found out that that's what it had to do. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? Well, it didn't, did it? It just did it. No, I know, but when I say found out, I mean it just did it. Well, it's like mimicry when they say mimicry, you know, that there's there's a, a poisonous snake and then a snake comes along that looks a bit like it that's not poisonous, but people go, oh, careful, it's poisonous. That snake didn't go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strain and I'm going to try and look like scary over there. Some were born that looked a bit like scary and they survived. Yeah, I know. It's just being chosen. But that's changing now, isn't it? The fact that... Like, when them frogs came out, that were dangerous, they were just dangerous. What frogs came out? But... There's some frogs in the jungle somewhere that were, like, pretty dangerous. Yeah. Ooh, from Mattel. Dangerous frogs in the jungle. <laughs> yeah. But they... But people didn't know that yeah. they were dangerous. And they were going about killing loads of stuff. Anyway. They weren't going... There's no... They don't go around killing loads of stuff. Nature said, this is a bit unfair. Make them orange. So, then, the frogs that were orange were dangerous, but... You got a warning. It's a bit more fair. Nature said if they're gonna go about being dangerous, make them orange, make them stand out. In a jungle, orange stands out in all the green, right? So people went, there's an orange frog, stay away. Then over time, nature went, right, what's, hap what's happened there now? Everyone knows the orange frog's dangerous. Birds aren't eating it because they know it's dangerous. Mm. People are avoiding it. They don't even need the poison, it's just the orange it needs. So now you've got a load of frogs that are orange, not even deadly, but people go, is that a deadly orange one, or is it a friendly one? Well, best to leave it. Again, he's explained my point, but took yeah. 30 times as long over. No, so but listen, let me finish what I was going to say. But what's, what's interesting with all that is, evolution has taught stuff to lie. Because that orange frog isn't deadly, it's going about like it's the big I am. <laughs> yeah. You could squash it with your hand, you can't do anything. <laughs> But evolution is <laughs> swaggering has, around. Has, has, it's made it lie. So lying is part of evolution. If you want me tonight, pop a sesame seed bone on your cock. <laughs> Take out the fucking pickle. No one likes a fucking pickle up the fanny. Oh, oh, oh he's a bloody romantic. Oh, he, oh, he popped a, he popped a plum roll sausage at me fanny yesterday. He loves me. Oh, oh, no. Did you know, Carl, that? Cataract operations on the eye were performed in India as early as 1000 BC. And uh, in Babylonia in the same time, the fees of eye surgeons were rigidly fixed by law and were quite generous. So for instance, uh, if you're a very rich person, it cost you about 10 shekels. If you're a slave, only 2 shekels. But if the rich person lost the sight of their eye after the surgeon had operated, they would uh, cut off the hand of the of the doctor. What, so he gets, he gets one chance at it? 
Well, he doesn't want to screw up. Yeah, I know, but everyone's ad allowed what a couple of errors. That's how you learn, isn't it? A, st a, st a, stu a stupid rule, but then again, I don't know why they'd be so worried about their eyes back then. What do you mean? Well, there was less to look at back then. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, like that, I saw a fella on the tube on the way here today who was blind. Proper, fully on, fully on blind. Blind? Um, now, for him, I just was like, oh, that's so depressing. Right. So much to see in the world now. Loads right. of stuff. Right. Art, buildings, and all that. Now, back then, if these people did have sight once, the pyramids, y you remember it in your head, and that's, that's enough. There wasn't loads of clutter anyway. It was all sand, so even if you fell over because you're blind, you, at least you landed on something soft. Whereas now, <laughs> it's rubbish being blind. Stairs, loads and loads of people, loads of curbs and things. It's not a good time to be blind. So I prefer, brilliant. if it's going to be blind, That's be blind brilliant. back when Tutankhamun was not about. the choice that people have that are, that are blind now? No. If you're going to be blind, be blind back when Tutankhamun was knocking about. But all I'm saying Sorry, is- Sorry Doctor, I didn't realise there was a choice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you- if you'd only told me you were going blind, I'd have said, well, let's get you back three thousand years. <laughs> it just seems a bit harsh, that's all. When someone's trying to help you and operate on your eyes, and- and they have a little bit of a slip up like we all do in- in jobs, mm. you have a bad day, mm. and it's- he has to have his hands cut off. Then who's helping him? Who puts the hand back on him? And if they don't put the hand back on him right, do they have something done to them? They're blinded. Well, it just, <laughs> it just seems like yeah. a no-win situation. I wouldn't be a doctor. And maybe that's why there aren't enough doctors about now, because of things like that that put people off. I don't think so. Well, I wouldn't be a doctor now. Why? Look at the hassle that happens now. Everything's- you're being watched all the time. You're not allowed to slip up. Right. Well, that's generally quite a good rule, isn't it, that doctors don't make well, mistakes? No, but you've got to- I, I'd say, at the end of the day, it's a complicated job. I'd get more annoyed when, you know, say like the fella I've got round coming to fix my boiler. Mm. The fact he keeps having a go, he keeps charging me eighty quid. He don't really fix it. Is it, it still he keeps, still he keeps not working? Back. I haven't cut his hands off. No. He keeps coming back. Oh, I'm a bit short on money. Let's go round to the Pilkington house household. Charge him eighty quid again. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. Let's pop round twice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whereas a doctor who's trying to help people, it's yeah. a difficult job. Yeah. If he makes a mistake now and again. Mm. I think, well, it's bound to happen, it's, it's complicated. The, 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 can't you see where, um, I, 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 I agree with you that people make mistakes and, uh, and I imagine there are good and bad doctors, they try and even that out by, um, it being a very, very, obviously, uh, uh, stringent exam and, and, uh, you it's know. It's eleven years they've got to do. I read up on it. Eleven mm. years it takes to be a doctor. No, it doesn't. It does. It takes seven. No, but then they've got to be in hospital or something for four years before they get to play with someone. Right, okay, yeah. So okay. that's ages, are you gonna get bored? You're gonna get bored. Well, and then when well no, but that's it, they, they, you know, they, they really do try and, uh, rule out, and there's still, there's still chance and mistake and, and don't forget, you know, t you're given, um, it nearly impossible tasks still in medicine. Just, just think of the, think of the risk with, um, you know, transplants alone, you know, and they're getting better and better at those yeah. and they're lasting longer. But, but the fact of the matter is, it's better to have a go, in it than not have one. If someone well, said to me, right, depends. you need a new heart, yeah. we're gonna do it. If they say you're gonna die anyway, let's yeah. try this new thing, you might as well. Have a but will. then there are some things that there is not worth the risk. When someone, uh, it goes wrong, when someone's facial surgery goes wrong because they wanted plumper lips or a little yeah, well, nose, I go, no you're a sympathy. fucking idiot. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You yeah, shouldn't even be doing that. Doctors shouldn't even be allowed to do that. I, I don't, don't know think. why, I really don't know why, um, a doctor, uh, under a Hippocratic uh, Oath, takes the risk of something going badly wrong, sometimes general anaesthetic, cause they wanna, cause they can't be bothered to fucking go for a run, mm. right, so they have fucking bits sliced off and tied up and sucked out, I wanna go, you lazy fucking fat pig, mm. just go for a run and stop eating burgers, right, mm. you might fucking die. Oh. Well, can I just stop you there Rick, because actually if it weren't for uh, a plump patient, Mm. The stethoscope would never have been invented. Well, because he couldn't hear. Yeah, their the person, art. the person who uh, invented the stethoscope, uh, Doctor Rene Lenec, uh, couldn't have every fat patient come in and couldn't hear her heart through the blubber. But then that's that's the sign <laughs> of the problem. I mean, that's the sign of the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, rather than saying, hang on, let's, let's get a bigger chair in for her because she's got a fat ass. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, well, you're not welcome here. If you can't get through the door, I'm not seeing you. 
I mean, if you've got a doctor who's having his hands cut off because he messed up an operation, yet Fatty's coming in <laughs> and getting special treatment, <laughs> I, d I wouldn't give him time of day. You see, this this is what I'm saying, right? This is going right back to what I was saying at the beginning. <laughs> the problem is, we've got pills for everything, and all this is doing is making people treat the body badly. Because yeah. you're going, be alright, there'll be something. It's Don't funny, isn't it, that like these tests, they go, well, let's have a look. It's it, what we were talking before about, um, uh, weighing kids. If they can't get through the door to get to school, there's too, you don't, you know, if they go, oh, I'm just gonna take a sample of your stool. Actually, I don't, uh, you're too fat. Your shit's come out like Tagliatelle. Your ass is too fucking fat. Stop eating your gut. I'm gonna take a sample of your stool. What, the one you fucking broke when you sat down? <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is the problem. You know, we can do too much, and because of this, people are going, I don't care about my body. Mm. They worry more about, the, the plasma telly getting a scratch on it than they do about their own body. Exactly. And if we if we stopped giving them tablets willy nilly, they'd have to look after the body more. Willy nilly is one of the worst diseases in the Western <laughs> world, of course. <laughs> now, medicine is the art or science of healing, and that doesn't always have to be um, a, a drug or a surgery. I mean, bedside manner has a lot to do with things, and uh, also it's all about care as well. Uh, we mustn't just forget that um, some people don't need medicine, they just need help. Um, for example, uh, there are people that help disabled people um, have intercourse, where they can't, you know, maybe get on to the, 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 the woman herself, and uh, there's someone that actually helps the man put in his penis um, to the, uh, the woman's um, vagina, and they leave the room. What? I've never seen, I've never even heard of this. <laughs> it's true! Absolutely true. They're Stay. helpers. Yeah, no, I believe that is the case. Yeah. And that's just, no, that's just as needed as anything that, that, that might cure well, it's them. Not, out. It's not, that's pleasure. Yeah? So what are you saying, because you can't walk or, or move, that you can't love someone and want to, to, to share that love? I'm just saying it's not a priority. Well, no, but they, 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 they're, they're gonna live, they're, they're, they're healthy ap apart from their, their disability. I've met someone, they wanna, you know, consummate this, this love, and someone is, um, helps them out and goes, well, I, you know, that's, that's part of my job. No, it's not part of the job. <laughs> well, it, it, well, no it is part of this job, job because that's their job. I have never heard anyone say I've had a right day today. Why? I've been playing with Arthur's, uh, tackle all day. They don't I, play with Arthur's tackle, they pop Arthur's tackle in Hilda's vagina. I don't think they do. They do! How can they enjoy that? I mean, maybe once, maybe it. once, and they'd go, that didn't work, did it? I didn't enjoy that, Hilda. No. How can they enjoy it with a nurse stood there? They don't. Do she, no, they help her in. She helps it, Arthur in, or he might be a male nurse. Pops Arthur in. Goes, okay, Arthur. Um, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. Right. Goes outside. But That's what's the see. point, though, in that? Why? Because it's all about the mood and everything. He's just stuck onto a like like a stag beetle clinging <laughs> onto a leaf. <laughs> There's no enjoyment in that. Oh, the well-known, uh, stag beetle copulating with a leaf syndrome. No, but I'm no, not saying- That's the well-known position in the Garmin Sutra. I'm no, just saying- No, he knows that, you know, he's, he's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, I think it's a lovely act and someone's willing to- wouldn't you help someone Definitely in Definitely not. No, but, well, so, not. no, no, so the guy goes, um, uh, uh, oh, this is my wife, um, we're both say, well, I can't, I can't, you know, can you just pop me in, Carl? Um, you're the only, you know, it, 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 you're the only person around. No, um, I don't think it's important But there enough. are people- What do you mean you don't think it's important enough? I'd be happy to go round, put the washing on for them, make the bed. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. There you go. Oh, just before you go, forget it. <laughs> if they asked me to do that, I would- I'd, I'd quit. And I think it- I don't think it happens, because people it wouldn't take happen. that on for a job. You it never does. hear about it. On Comic Relief, when they're raising the money, they don't go, thanks to Midland Bank for this hundred grand, that's gonna go towards Arthur getting his end away. That's no. ridiculous. So you- you would- you would rather them not have the pleasure? of each other than just help them in. No, because they'd, they'd work out some way that they could do something for each other. I, I want to play the guitar, my fingers aren't long enough, I've knocked it on the head. It's the same thing. If you can't do it, don't do it. So are you telling me, right, okay, um, if the, suppose there's a, li a little fellow, he's got no arms, no legs, right? Right. L little Bob, okay, there he is. Alright, Carl. Right. Um, he's got a friend, another little fella with no arms and no legs. Alright, Carl. Right? They love each other. Two little, two little fellas. Little, two little dwarves with no arms and no legs, okay? Lovely little fellas. They get married. Okay? Look, Carl, you can't, you can't put my, uh, my penis up my, um, 
My boyfriend's bottom, can you? No, you I can't. No. Why, why not? Why no, not? Do you need can't. anything else doing? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, no, it's weird how you can manage everything else. Well, no. I'm no. here to help you. Everything else seems to be sorted. Well, I'm just in the chair. Why do you need help in this department? Well, because he's over there and I'm here and I'm just- If you just pop me in and just no, leave No, I'm not there. doing that. It's not good for you. You've lost your arms and legs. You'll be losing that soon if you carry on sticking it up there. <laughs> From 1978 car on Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's a great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh. As you speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan. People who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that. W werewolfism, really? isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy because because uh, <laughs> they they've sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So no, you see, two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories, it's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who've been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, oh, Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot in the head? Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this is the you, same thing as Have you seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They studied? drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, when, gold. You, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God, right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its yeah. face is well, against God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the man I'll cover again. <laughs> <laughs> man alive, Carl. <laughs> What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there! <laughs> oh! If anyone has ever seen that man on cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch, we'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research boats, they're going, we test everything, what would you do to man on cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, have control yeah. of a nuclear Do you reckon you can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> and what, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb, whatever. <laughs> Tie bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, Carl, look, let's have, um, uh, let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. Uh, For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, the sun, as you may know, has a, a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics and for he... What? He was a ski. He was a skier, right. and he won gold medal. And uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what? I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you do it? is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing <laughs> if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to. It's not, not going to help you. Is no, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, like but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not. It's not going to help them. <laughs> 
you, yeah, sh- you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you can, try I, can, I, can I say? Can I say the, 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 the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defence. Probably the, it, it, it wasn't. It probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed <laughs> to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting isn't... off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out of your head. But why don't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cos, uh, performance enhancing <laughs> drugs do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glint, glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attractive. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build Swimmers up muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers, for runners, example, runners. Yeah, not, not only do they have build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance wise, yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff. Right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't on a bomb would that help before. You? What? Why would that help you when you all you've got to do is balance on skis? <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like. If, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I ate this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... Daft <laughs> me, <are> you! She's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, you know, all right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you uh, agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like you know, all right. I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So good luck to him, and he's done well out of it. And it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though um, when I was, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station. And he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head, yeah. <laughs> but I do recognise him and then my girlfriend got off the train and I said, I'm sure I know him, she said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so thank close God for your to girlfriend. Does she, yeah. does she get, you get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, That's what about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before I, you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because <laughs> um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. <laughs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, it doesn't do you any good. What about, wh- where do you draw the line there? Though? What if you say lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. If, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that, so what? Yeah, but it's the, pres- it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. Alright. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well he can't. It's, a, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's right. what they wanted to That is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best. So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. Doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's... Who's annoyed you? Th- this, th- just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets, and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. Like, it's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's it's beautiful, and this is for Carl.
Yeah, right. but there's loads of things that you go, oh, this is a bit embarrassing. I bet Charles Darwin, when he said, we've all come from apes, I bet he sat home going, should have talked about the frisbee first. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer <laughs> chips, that silicon can have information uh, uh, put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, yeah. do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, that, yeah, the but that's na nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. He comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. Now it's, it's, it's clear to any sensible, reasonable, educated person that, that we did evolve from, um, uh, apes, or rather, we had, uh, a common ancestry, and that we're closest to, to the chimpanzee. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Um, we're closer to a chimp than a chimp is to a gorilla. Genetically speaking. But I, I just find that hard to believe when you Well, I'm telling you it's true, so no, what, no, what, 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 what are you finding hard to believe? Well, your eyes, y your own eyes are what, what sort of comes up with a lot of, uh, thoughts. No, you know, no, 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 no. One's eyes don't come up with thoughts. No, Two, but what I'm saying is, you, what you through, mean is, through you, your own eyes, you look at things you and make up your own decisions. So if there was no Darwin or anything, yeah. and I was sat somewhere and yeah. someone said, right, we're gonna bring a few animals in, one of them's related. Right. Uh, they're all related. All right, but but they're all related to you, but one's not so long ago, all right? And they brought them in, and they lined them up, and there was a chimp stood there, yeah. and a gorilla, mm. and a uh, what's another one? A orangutan. orangutan. Right, yeah. Right, a girl, the orangutan. Send that out. <laughs> I'll be first to go. So he's definitely not linked to me. Mm. Uh, See, I disagree, but there we go. That's yeah. just looking at you. Yeah. Right, so the, the air colouring. There's none of that in our family. Well, there's no air. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that it loses out because it's ginger. So that's gone. Right, so I'm left with a gorilla and a chimp. Right. I would go for the gorilla. Well, it's a good guess, but you'd be wrong. Um, so we are much closer to the chimpanzee, okay? 98.6% genetically identical. Think of that. We only differ. On 1.4 percent of well, our that, genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot different. <laughs> Animal rights is uh, is a hot topic. It's a big issue. What rights should they have? Uh, how do they compare to humans? You know, uh, it's a well-known fact that. We test on animals um, with the assumption that humans are more important. We test drugs on animals and uh, we're basically saying if they die, they die, we'll learn something from them. People do make distinctions between animals, right? They, they know that it's probably more acceptable to kill an ant uh, than... Uh, Put your cow. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, it, I think it, that comes again from how close are they to humans? Have they got a face? But that's are the, they furry? I told you, you know, about me, my dad's mate who had a who had a monkey and he had to thump it. What? <laughs> why, why, well, there's two things there. One, why did he have a monkey? Two, what sort of discipline is thumping a monkey? What was the monkey doing? He kept, he was annoying his wife a lot and sort of, you know, pinching her ass and stuff like that. Right, no, right. that's Wait, not we, true. We, we've it's never heard this before. How have we had all these years no, of monkeys sure and we've never heard this before? Ago. Your dad had a mate who had a monkey? Yeah, I'm sure I told you. That, well, why did he have a monkey? Just for a laugh? Well, it was back in the day when you, people did. They all had, like, <laughs> odd, in, sort of, pets and when? that, didn't they? In like, about 68. Oh, in 1968. When the, oh, when everyone had a monkey. But he had to thump it. Now the weird thing is... Now that's weird enough. Is this the, this is all the story? This is the entire story no. you've got? All the information you've got is he had a monkey and he had to thump it? Yeah, my dad told me about it. When he found out that I, I was into monkeys, he said, oh, Benny thumped one. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> Benny Thumbtrunk! Oh, my son's into natural history, particularly, uh, Simeon variety. Um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Carl. Sit down. What is it, Peter? Um, Benny thumped one. But, Brilliant. But, but what was uh, interesting is the way that people are thumping other people all the time. No one bats an eyelid. Thump a monkey. People go, you thumped a monkey. <laughs> yes! Yes, they do! 
They do yeah. go- You thumped a monkey. So, so that's what's weird, isn't it? But this Jim doesn't want to be caged and kept in a fucking council house in Manchester. No, he was, was quite happy. And if it he wants to live happy. like a human- I mean, in the 70s, you know, there were all, all the teabag adverts and all that, and they were loving that. No, they and weren't people loving it. Fear. People go, oh, that's unfair. Now they, they're in like a cage in a zoo. You go, they, it was better when I was pushing a piano up a stairs. They weren't really, they weren't really- They weren't actual delivery, man. They weren't really sitting down and having a cup of tea. Well, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> a week in the life of the monkey delivery, oh, man. I love that. Chimps in a zoo now going, okay, now we, at least we were, at least we were free. Remember we? when we used to drive a van? And, we were, and we're on 58 quid a week. Yeah. They're not meant to be kept in a house in Manchester. It's cruel to keep a person in a house in Manchester, so it's fucking cruel to keep a monkey. <laughs> are you aware, Carl, that 99% of all forms of life that have existed on Earth are now extinct? So there's only 1% of everything that's ever been still alive? Yeah. Well, that's just as well, isn't it? Why? Well, I think it's pretty crowded now. So it's just as well. You see, this is this is what I'm saying now. Years ago, they accepted that cavemen wouldn't have been going. Oh, we're losing stuff. Stuff's dying. <laughs> Whereas now, everyone's oh, the panda, polar bears, not got any ice, and all that. At the end of the day, the world's only so big. We know it's not getting any bigger, right? Stuff's got to die, hasn't it? You can't keep everything. Just think of that though, as a tool of natural selection, that the species that are surviving today are one percent. Just how amazing that is to survive and evolve. How perfect everything is on Earth. It's amazing. No, but but it'll drop off again, won't it? As we find the new stuff, other stuff will be dying. Well, In that one percent, when that was written, when that statement was made, was the dodo gone or was it still here? It was. I'm pretty sure it was the gone. dodo was gone. It was gone already. It doesn't matter though, does it? A percentage is a percentage. Yeah, the dodo went. The last yeah. dodo died. They yeah. said that was the last dodo. No yeah. more dodos. <laughs> but we found a, a Dido still making great great cheers. albums, great albums. Great, yeah, we, we lost the Dodo, but we've got Dido. A recent album's not sold very well, actually. It's, I've heard it's dying out, I've dying heard out. Heard it's, Everything yeah. has a lifespan. Uh, Dido's dying out. But mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that's life. So it's not amazing, really. That's that not either anymore. No, that's not either. That's life's gone. That's gone. That was good. What else? Mr. Ranson forced to just die out in the jungle. Yeah. Right? It's a shame. When I went to Nat Natural History Museum, there was right. a thing called a uh, cider ear or something. Right, died out ages ago. No one knows about them, which is weird because everyone knows about the dodo. Well, yeah. that's because it died out uh, in I think the uh, was it the 18th century or something, wasn't it? Well, we, you know, within what might what might some recent history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this thing's sort of. I don't think it was far behind it. Just timing, isn't it? Got all, that got more press, the dodo. The <laughs> Sither or whatever it's called. Mm. It was a big thing. It well, was a you've, cross. You've seen it and you still don't know what it's called. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's spelled awkwardly. <laughs> but it's, uh, but they said it was a cross between a moose and a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't need that, do we? At no, no point have we said, do you know what we need here to get us through this? Well, that's funny because when um, they first named the giraffe, they called it the camelopard. Because they thought it was a cross between uh, a camel and a leopard. Really? Yeah. Well, I can tell you that when zoologists examined a platypus for the first time, some of them thought it might have been a hoax, because they thought it could have been different parts of different animals sewn together. Because the platypus has the fur of an otter, the tail of a beaver, the bill and feet of a duck, and the venomous spurs of a fighting gamecock. So they assumed that uh, it was like a, a scrappy challenge of animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember right. But they actually, sorry, sorry, say, well, you know, just to clarify that, it actually is descended from a link between reptiles and mammals almost 150 million years ago, a sort of living fossil. When I was about 13, 14, I once tried to improve the animal kingdom by making the hardest animal ever, the most perfect animal. Now, just to clarify, you didn't, in sort of Frankenstein style, no. try and bolt various bits of animals together. It, it was a drawing that I sent to Blue Peter. There was no competition going on. You just thought they would be appreciated. I thought they'd, they'd look at that and they'd go, well, this is, he's a genius. Yeah. This is like Da Vinci. Sure. Um, and this is the animal. This is what I thought, the perfect animal. I mean, when I say perfect, I meant the hardest animal. This right. animal, it could take anything. It was just the strongest, hardest, fastest, right? Yeah. So. I started 
with the head of a lion. Of course, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Rawr, it looks good. Rawr, bite it, right? Yeah. Okay. I popped that on the body of a rhinoceros. Okay, so it's got the toughness, oh, the armour, if you God, like. The, oh, it's full strength. Head yeah. of a lion. Think of that. So you've got this picture. Head of a lion, body of a rhino. Perfect. Okay. Hold on, though. Pop some arms on it. The front arms were the arms of a gorilla. The arms of a gorilla. So okay. it could punch, grip, it could make stuff. The lion, I mean, that's where the lion falls down, because it can't make stuff. Sure. It can't climb, you know. So, okay then, wait a minute. You think that's got enough weaponry? Sounds like it. No. Pop on the tail of a giant scorpion. <laughs> a giant scorpion? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the scorpion that's, that's the size so of a Exactly. So the tail was as long as that rhino. So now right. this is a scary animal. Yeah. And this is where the animal fell down. Uh, I thought, right, legs. Well, the fastest animal is the cheetah. The cheetah. Popped on four cheetah legs. Four cheetah legs. It would have collapsed. Crushed under it the weight It would have collapsed of the immediately. <clears throat> so, uh. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you drew this, did you? I drew it, yeah. Did you show it to anyone else? Yeah, my mates went, that's brilliant. Right. They said, that's brilliant. <laughs> And, uh, then just sent straight to Blue Peter. Yeah. Any reply? No reply at all. Really? Hello. I'm Ricky Gervais. The English biologist Thomas Huxley once wrote, To a person uninstructed in natural history, his country or seaside stroll is a walk through a gallery filled with wonderful works of art, nine-tenths of which have their faces turned to the wall. Teach him something of natural history, and you place in his hands a catalogue of those which are worth turning around. To some, the wonders and intricacies of the natural world are a miracle, living proof of the existence of God. To others, the natural world is a wondrous illustration of Darwinian evolution. To discuss the complexities of plant and animal life, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick and award-winning writer. Thank you so much for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a man with a head like a fucking orange. All right. Natural history obviously takes in everything to do with animals, plants, bacteria, which are in neither group. Um, I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. Conservatively, there's two million species of animals. I mean, without even taking in plant life, there are at least two million species of animal. With plants and animals, there could be up to ten million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it? It's a lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's totally... Plants are different. I, th I reckon no, there's a natural no, cure for everything no, out cause there. No, because there's loads, there's loads of animals that have toxins that, uh, are used in medicine. Yeah, I know that we use dangerous spiders to get rid of headaches or whatever, or they do in the tribes, right? Yeah, do you well, want to just expand on that point? Um, it's just, uh, that's what they do in tribes. Oops, they've got mate. all natural, all these tribes, they've got, they've got all natural remedies. They, you know, they go, what, what's up with you? You've got a sore ankle, chew on this twig. And it works. I've seen it. They've, they've sent women out there and like, they couldn't believe the stuff they can do with twigs and trees and hedgehogs and stuff. Mm. So it wasn't an in-depth analysis, was yeah. it? What I'm saying- Women, they just sent some women out there. <laughs> well, they, 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 <laughs> apparently. Yeah. I mm. reckon the, the stuff that's got venom in it, that's useful. Mm. We probably know about all them. Because it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense, we right, probably know about all of them. What, what I mean is the police know about the gangsters. But right. they go, right, we're aware of them, right. let them get on with it, we'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, they're lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised yeah. if there was something- It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now. Because we have to, we live no, in a world don't. now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or- Well no, well, no look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or- What do you mean a, it's like, not a natural neighbor. thing? 
It's not a, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's AIDS hasn't been like living under the soil for millions of years going, I'll wait till the nineteen eighties and I come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in not I mean it, uh, evolutionary terms. There's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> <You're talking> but, about... <laughs> but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to I don't think she can just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of because, the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s we uh, said uh, everything that's going to be invented has been invented, and and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, <laughs> it's all, it's, it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go. It's all right. It's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like looking at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with <laughs> Einstein? It's PR of, people. In did. one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. <laughs> and that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now, because everything that's needed. Remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, that somebody, I can put yeah, bread yeah, yeah, yeah. In. And what can it do? I'll shake Necessity it like that, is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little, where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. So right. I've just been beaten to the post. Yeah, but all you're really doing, Carl, is That's modifying that. an existing invention. What, 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 what other examples are being pipped at the post, well, are there? Did, uh, it's got to be one that hasn't been done. Or it's not your theory. But also what? something that unlocks a mystery. Or helps the world. What's causing problems in the world at the moment that needs sorting? Well, cures for things. Uh, Faster transport, uh, t t anything to do with security, anything to do with well-being. You I know, mean, obviously, environmental concerns are a big issue. People trying to design automobiles that Fuel. can run on different yeah. alternative fuels. I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their design a car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> And then it, he put he put shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania! I think that's a brilliant. I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently, and I would have loved. But I think he did it when he was about nine, seat. and he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good? But if why hasn't why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you're going, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would so you So you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at what you point do you wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Well, at the end of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So, you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Pol Perro. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. You need one? Not really. There's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy. I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. There's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick, that takes, doesn't it? Ten no, minutes yeah. to pull off, have a quick shit. Driving along. Just, it's just going on. It's just going on. Don't even know about it. Radio's on. Everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know, I mean, we all do it as well, that's the thing. Anything else you'd, uh, come up with? I mean, so far you come up with nothing. 
That was a, a, a nine-year-old boy's idea. <laughs> I mean, the Breville maker wasn't needed. <laughs> That's true. That's What's right. the Breville maker? <laughs> like toasted sandwiches. <laughs> There's so many things, chocolate fountains, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. What about them? Well, I mean, that's in the in the last few years, you know, uh, in a, a hundred years in our existence, okay? They've been dabbling with anything even close to a computer. N nothing before that. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand, now for someone to come up with that, you go, "This, there must have been some sort of alien involved here." What do you mean? Why <laughs> do you think that? <laughs> so I love it. So the frisbee, rubbish. Anything too clever? Well, it wasn't an invention; it was an alien. <laughs> So there's nothing between frisbee and computer <laughs> chip. What I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip. Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding. Yeah. So well, you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Great. Because I, I can't believe that someone would go right. I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do. I don't know. Let's use some sand. We've got loads of that. You, you go, what are you on? You don't get Well, that's what genius is, though. But isn't Carl, it? there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And th there's all them rumours, isn't there, in the anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find the sand. But that, as an explanation to human genius, is nearly as ridiculous as the Adam and Eve explaining uh, life on Earth. Uh, how could you tell that to someone without going red? I mean, I always worry about that. Where people, like people who believe in Adam and Eve, don't they wish there was a slightly better explanation with all the evidence but, we've but, got? But do you know what I mean? On. With all the evidence for evolution what? that they think the Earth is five thousand years old, and God made Adam out of some dust, and then he went, "Oh, I need a bird. It's all right. I'll make it out of your rib." <laughs> we've got this obsession thing again. It's saving everything. It's like <laughs> how we save every animal, even a germ. We get upset about if it dies out. Keep yeah, but it, well, you, you say that, but of course, famously Alexander Fleming discovered uh, what may be the most important breakthrough um, of the 20th century, which was the first antibiotic, I think, in 1928, and he's literally saved hundreds of millions of lives with that, changed the face of modern medicine, um, and he discovered that because he uh, left a bit of old bread out for a while and it went all mouldy in his kitchen, and he thought, "Oh, what's that?" Oh, let's have a look. It's, uh, it, uh, like I've said to you before, it's it's down to him being scruffy more than anything. Well, not. It mm. just seems like there's a lot of scruffy kitchens around that, are, you know. I mean, you're saying. But think if his cleaner had come in and gone, oh, Mr. Fleming, oh you, oh you, you disgust me, you fucking filthy scruffy cunt. I'm gonna throw all this bread away. He's gonna go, um, uh, Maud. What did you do with that, um, old bread I left out? It had gone green, sir, so I chucked it away. Oh, Maud, you dopey fucking slut. You just caused millions and millions of people to die. Keep out of my fucking kitchen. I know, but, but don't put it there. It's the same way smallpox and so a, in a yoghurt pot. So you're It's a yog in a yoghurt pot. <laughs> well, you're asking for trouble. But what if Maud had come in and thrown that away? Again? He couldn't, he couldn't shout at her. She's doing a job. I'd be annoyed if it was still there. Yeah, I so say, you d it's been here now for a couple of weeks. You haven't even asked. There's a lot of cleaners. That's a, that's part of the problem, I'd say. The cleaners, they're not doing the job. That's the problem in hospitals, isn't it? Yeah, there's filth everywhere. Well, they proved a point. Uh, in one hospital, they brought a team of people in to show doctors and nurses how to clean things properly, and deaths went down thirty percent. There you go. Just from properly washing your hands and properly. Washing the floor and mm. things. That's amazing, isn't well, it? It's pretty simple. Just don't put like yogurt pots with smallpox in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, that's but a you, starter. Yeah, but you were saying earlier, um, oh, let's let babies eat mud. Don't inject them. Yeah, but let them we've crawl around a dirty floor, I clean did, up the floor, and no one will die. I did say that, but we've gone too far now. Babies are coming out mad. Oh, they can't handle anything now. Oh, they've got what? a runny nose. They're coming out all mardy. 
Oh, get Marty. ill. Yeah, they get ill easy. These, they're not tough babies anymore. We're ending up with a load of weak people who need looking after all the time. That costs a lot of money. <laughs> and they can't do anything. They're useless. Now that doesn't happen in, in other nature. If a little weak bird is born, you see Bill Oddy saying that won't <laughs> last- <laughs> He says, he says that won't last a week. And he's right. You, you watch it and say, oh, that, that third baby that came out, it died. And but what's right. your point, Carl? That modern Me medicine point- which can help people live to the age of 75, 80, that it shouldn't be doing that? It should let people just die off? Well, here's something, right? Go the on. estate that I grew up on. There's a woman there. Yeah. Scruffy Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I like her already! Oh, it's great! It's so descriptive! Now, she had no chance, even if she cleaned up her act. <laughs> yeah. She'd come in looking like pretty woman. You'd go, alright, Scruffy. <laughs> no, so, what's the point? What is the point? Oh, so, so the thing is, she used to always get on these buses called dialer rides that were sort of like <laughs> posh taxis. You could call for one, it'd come round to your house. Yeah. And it would pick you up and you'd pay like 50p. But, but you it would were pick alone. up a bunch of other people as well. Yeah, yeah, on the way. So it, it, it would take ages oh, to get to where you're going. Oh, what a nightmare that is. Oh, it's, it's, it's good though. It's kind of a bit of a day out. Old people used to love it because you'd right. get to see things. Right. And uh, you'd hear a call coming in on the radio that, you know, Scruffy Sandra's being picked up and you go, oh God. And she'd always have loads <laughs> of bin bags with her for some reason. Now the thing is- Well, she sounds clean. She, no, she stunk. Well, she's taken out the was bin she bag home? though. No, she wasn't homeless, no. She used to just, uh, she just didn't bath and that. She just stunk. But the, but the weird thing is- Why did they call her Stinky Sandra? She never was ill. Right. People didn't sit next to her. Yeah. Because she stunk. Yeah. Now, because of that, anyone who may, might have had a bit of flu or a cold never sat next to Scruffy Sandra. Right. Because she stunk. But that was good. That was like a protection thing for her, because she knew that because she stunk, no one wants to sit next to her, she wouldn't pick up the the germ. Right. Now, but this is quite- your point is, in order to fend off illness, you have to not bathe, and so you stink. It, so you don't- it, so you don't- so you're saying that it wasn't that she'd built up an immunity, it was that she stank so much that flu wouldn't come near her. <laughs> this There'd is a such a specific <laughs> example, mm. it's- it's not applicable in any other scenario. There's always colds, there's always flu, it's whether your immunity is- is good or bad. Uh, the times I get ill, uh, are usually after like a, a- you know, a long haul flight or something, when you're surrounded by it, and you're run down a little bit. Mm. Um, well, or- Maybe you if know, you didn't bathe, for three days before yeah. the flight. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's always there. There's colds and flus everywhere. That's interesting, isn't it, that, um, more sort of colds are spread through shaking hands than people, you know, just taking in the air. Because people sneeze into their hand and they think that's sort of safer, but then they shake hands and you get it on your hand and it sort of dies in the air quickly, but it, it stays on your skin a bit more because it's, you know, you're it's nice and warm, lovely environment. So, uh, that's why some sort of germaphobes don't even shake hands anymore. Yeah, well that's going too far. Cause they're gonna die or something. You can't be that paranoid. You've gotta get on with your life. Loneliness. And it's good to feel ill, because when you feel better you appreciate how good doesn't you feel. Doesn't make any sense at all, no, it's good to no. feel ill. Doesn't make any sense at all. No, it does afterwards. The other weekend, when I was ill, I don't know what was up with me, but I got, I got something. Symptoms? Uh, d- went to the toilet a lot, felt sick at the same time, got a sweat on, uh, felt weak, had the shakes. Um, just a bug, yeah. Lasted, a... lasted probably about 24 hours. After that 24 hours, you go, oh, I feel good again. It's nice to feel good again. And it makes you appreciate how good you feel. Now sometimes I don't know if I feel well. It doesn't make any sense at all either. What you... do you mean sometimes you don't know whether you feel because well? I, because I've been in my body for years. <laughs> Here he goes again. Go on, yeah. Here he goes again. Now, the two minds. If there was a, if there was some sort of kit that the doctor said, "How are you feeling, Mr. Pilkington?" And I go, oh, "I think I feel all right." And they go, "Well, do you?" Yeah, I don't know. And they go, "Well, step into the machine, right? Get into the machine, and if he could somehow transfer my feeling into his body, so I could feel how he feels, and then he can feel how I feel, and he'll go, "Oh, you're not well at all." Your heart beats irregular for a start. You're a maniac. This is. I no. don't know what's going on here. Because you're, uh, why do you, you just get accept used... that if you feel well, you know? Because uh, you don't know if you feel on, well. Hang on, let's get this machine built. Sorry, why are people bothering studying AIDS? We got to get this machine built. Listen, this machine could do a lot of good if they could do it. Why? Because some people, you hear about people who go, "Oh, I think I've got a bit of wind." Before you know it, they drop down dead, right? Because right. they didn't know. They just well. 
didn't, didn't Mr. Uh, didn't Mr. Jones have, have a sweat on Mrs. Jones before? Oh yeah, he did, but he always had a sweat on. Well, didn't it bother him? No, he was used to it. Happened for years. Why didn't you come in? Oh, so, and what would the machine right? do again? The machine would make my doctor yeah. feel like me. He'd be sat there and he'd go. Sorry, oh. who's, who's saying to Mrs. Jones, didn't Mr. Jones have a sweat on? The doctor. So the, the doctor knew he had a sweat on. Why didn't the doctor say, well, no. we look at that? No, no, he, no, didn't. No, he, he asked, didn't. He asked he's Mrs. Jones. He's not a very Jones. good doctor, though, is he? He's not a very good doctor, then. Yeah, but this is the problem now, isn't it? Right. So, so Mr. Jones went to the doctor and said, oh, I've got a sweat on. Right? Uh, right, so he'd go, hmm, well, I'll tell you what, get in the machine. So Mr. Jones gets in the machine. Yeah. The doctor hits the button. Mr. Jones gets into the doctor. The doctor right. goes, you have got a sweat on. I'm familiar with this because I had a fella in the other day with a similar thing. Take three of these. You are a mental case. But I don't know what that. I don't know what this is. Because but why can't the doctor is, make that observation like a doctor yeah. does? Why what can't the doctor, this? using his knowledge, observe the person with the sweat why. on? I tell you this why. is like a scene from Ghost. This is right. like Patrick Swayze. Listen, do you know that time when when I went to the doctor's and he said my nerves are too short? That doesn't make any sense <laughs> at all. No, but listen, you've, I've told you about it. I don't want to go through it again. But he he uh, he he. You know, looked at my legs and stretched them and that. He said, "Yeah, it's the old short nerves problem." Now, <laughs> that, <laughs> the took, old play, the short that took that took like three visits before he worked that out. Right. But how would he be? Able, just because he's, if he was feeling how you were feeling, I wouldn't help him identify it. Yeah, would you, it? You're, you're there in your body, and you're not going bloody how my nerves are a bit short, <laughs> doctor. You go into the doctor. Okay, and we're just going to place uh, Pilkington in the wrong. Right. Uh, Pilkington is in me. Oh, my nerves are too short. When my nerves were short. Are they not short or any, have they extended since then? Well, yeah, I just have to do stretches and it's pull them, it's pull them about. <laughs> right. But when I, when I add that, I'm not very good with words. Go on. So when I was going in saying, Doctor, my knee's aching, uh, and he'd go, what sort of ache is it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I've, I've, it's just an ache. An ache. It's like a toothache in my no, leg. No, but it's different. Go it's on. a different ache. Now the thing arse is- ache. It's like an arse ache. It's hard to explain an ache. So no, he'd yeah. have to feel the ache and then he could make an assumption from Thank it. Thank you. So he would presumably go through training going in the machine and they'd bring in various sick people and he would experience and feel every single ailment. Great. Yeah, but over- Doctor, I'm gonna let you know now what a swift kick in the bollocks feels like, just in case you ever have to diagnose that. Oh, you can't- I can't remember that one! Yeah, but- Doctor, now you're gonna feel a spike up the arse. It's all about- <laughs> yeah. it's Oh, I can't remember that one! Okay. Look, Doctor, couldn't I just wait until the man comes in with a spike up the arse? No, no, you gotta tell you so you know but when I you feel I it. But I reckon I could assess it if he's no, coming no, and he's no, got no, a spike no, up his no, arse, no. I'd be able to You've gotta experience everything before someone comes in and gets into your body, like ghost, and you'll know what it is. Hey, listen, let's not- Let's not dismiss this idea out of hand, of course, because you'll famously remember, uh, Rick, that Carl had the idea of a man who can grow backwards. So he's born as an old man, yeah. and when he dies, he's a young baby. I think we're all looking forward to the new Brad Pitt film. Mm. That is exactly that plot. That's well, a bit strange. It's not really strange, is it? Because it's from a novel. Uh, I think written before Carl was born. That's true. That is true. Yes. Yeah, so but actually, I haven't read it. Well, so that's obvious. It's just an idea, and with all ideas come something. Einstein said that. He said, if, a, if an idea isn't- Go on, uh, wait, 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 just let him finish we, We've got an Einstein quote here. Yeah. This is a historic day. Um, Carl, sorry, what were you saying? What did, what did, uh, what did, uh, Albert Einstein say? He just said something along the lines of- well, no, 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 give us the quote, give us the quote. It doesn't matter about no, no, how, no, no, how no, he no, worded it, it's no, the point in hand. Well, I think it is, I think a quote, it, it, I think like all, uh, you know, any, any sort of, uh, uh, poetic content of anything is exactly how it's- how it's worded. So just what, what did Einstein say exactly? Well, no, is well he, he said something along the lines of. Go on. Uh, an idea. Mm. If an idea isn't daft. Oh, start again. Start again. No, come on, let's hear it. No, because he started. He, 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 he said, if an idea isn't daft, it isn't worth thinking about. From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh, as we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you are a People fan. People who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing <laughs> yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that? Wa werewolfism. Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Cause, uh, <laughs> cause they've, they've sort of grew up with, uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So. No, you see, two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories, it's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. 
No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were, like, laughing, and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this is the you, same thing. Have this you is... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God. Right, tell a story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its yeah. face is well, against God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was right. going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> okay. Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> what's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. oh! If anyone has ever seen that metal cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> what sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion-pound research budgets. They're going. We test everything. What would you do with a manhole cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Do you reckon it could send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what we could do. We could let the put the manhole cover on it and aim it, and then blow the bomb up, and it would <laughs> it would the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. Whatever. Try bangers to a bomb. See if it's louder. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Anyway, Carl, let's have uh, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, the sign is they know has a, a section called White Van Man, where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions; it's just your views, really, on these big these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he. What? He was, a ski, he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why Because all you do it? is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to... It's not, it's not gonna help you, is No, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but even like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not, it's not gonna <laughs> help them. <laughs> You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow yeah. and you try and you hold Can I say, can I say, the, 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 the drugs Apparently he was taking- that's his defence, Probably, the, it, it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't jacking up H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting doesn't... off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out of your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cos, uh, performance enhancing drugs <laughs> do. What, wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glint glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragedy. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. They're, not only do they have build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance by yep. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again, he, was, he wasn't why on a bomb would that help before. You? What? Why would that help you when you. All you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's <laughs> a lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your legs. It's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I Very ate good. this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... Don't <laughs> make you. 
She's <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, all right, I only got an E in history. <laughs> sure. But knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your know. girlfriend. Does she, yeah. does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what about the fact that, uh, the pension crisis... Sure. ...is gonna force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Um, because you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah, you'll live longer. Yeah, it's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. <laughs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. Doesn't do you any good. What about where, where do you draw the line there? What if you say lose a finger, pop into work? Um, depends if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? D <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean. Okay. Um, and finally. Um, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the pres it's the prime minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all? They had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand, he wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, a, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted. That's that is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And the thing is, which one? I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best. So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's... Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets, and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think that. you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Should I, should I play a lovely song for you? Because we're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. Like, it's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Well, after the medical advancements of the Greeks and the Romans, of course, uh, through the Middle Ages, particularly in Europe, we ended up going backwards, um, and it became, uh, you know, people sort of returned to superstition, started relying on that, you know, sanitation was poor, a lot of the amazing sanitation the Romans had built was left to ruin, and uh, we went backwards, and really it wasn't until the Renaissance that people like Leonardo da Vinci started to, you know, draw pictures of the anatomy and so on. Well, putting scientific um, evidence and experimentation behind the theories as opposed to someone with a big cauldron saying, if you bury your toad, your warts go away. Exactly. He looked into this and, uh, and then thought, well, maybe they don't. Maybe it's a coincidence, you know. So uh, that's where our experimentation comes. Empirical evidence, not just hope. Of course, you still couldn't uh, experiment or dissect humans because that was frowned upon. Uh, so often they would actually, they, the only people they were allowed to dissect and operate on were criminals. And at times, criminals would actually be uh, dissected or cut open whilst they were still alive as part of their punishment. Is that ever justifiable? Do you think, uh, Carl, that people sacrifice for medical advancements? They do it now, don't they? You hear about these people having, uh, you know, test done on them, you get paid 20 quid and they say, let's, let's rub this cream on your head. Yeah. And you get your 20 quid and if, if your head goes funny, they say, well, you took the 20 quid, it's your own fault. Wasn't that a student that took, like, yeah, a few head, grand? He, he became happened? the living elephant man, didn't he? Oh, yeah. It was quite horrific, his head was in all kinds of weird Yeah, shapes. I mean, that's unfortunate for 20 quid. 
but I'd say do it on the ill people because they've got nothing to lose. Just test it. It's you know all this testing on animals and that. Well, don't test it on animals. If you've got an itch, the doctor can say, "I've got this cream here. We haven't tested it. It might work. It might make it worse. Give it a go." Right. Yeah, but the whole point is that if you do that, someone's head might blow up to the side yeah, of the elephant. Yeah, it might outweigh well, the ailment. That's yeah. happened already. A fellow who had nothing wrong with him has now got a head of the elephant man for yeah. twenty quid. Yes, I know. Well, but that isn't fair. No, I know. But you're saying um, you're going for athlete's foot. Rub this on your feet. Oh, your bollocks fell off. Never mind. It was a chance we had to take. I mean, that's a particularly sloppy bit of medical research. That <laughs> one. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but say like my auntie Nora, right? She's had everything wrong with her, right? She's had tablets that that haven't been tested on anyone else. They test them on Nora. She's and she's up for it. She's like, oh, I haven't had that. That's a little <laughs> tester. Yeah. She loves it. But she's she's she she knows that that's the case, and she's happier to give something a go than not a go. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of stuff she rattles. She carries that many pills, <laughs> like a maraca. <laughs> you can hear her coming. But. That's that's the way her <laughs> life is now. She's just used to the fact that if it weren't for all these tablets, she'd be dead. Yeah, but the, well, not necessarily. But the, but but the pills. She doesn't take pills that have been untested. She's not taking experimental pills. I think pills, she's God. she's honestly she's got so much. Uh, well, so again, okay, you lot. just you just <clears throat> made that up then. You just assumed that that they haven't been tested on someone. Where'd they get them? Where'd they get these pills from that haven't been tested? Well, it's it, it's all very new. She's she's on a lot of new medication that can go either way. Could this be one of the reasons why she farted for 24 hours? It, it could have been one of the side effects. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what the, that's, you know, that's what my mum said. It's all a medication. Cause your body's in shock, isn't it? It's been, you know, given all these drugs that it's not used to. Luckily some of the pills weren't suppositories cause she'd have lost them. <laughs> in, in the, in the, in the great fart of 1989. <laughs> I've lost all my suppositories. <laughs> but you know, that's what you do, isn't it? If you're in pain. And uh, I mean, like, I don't know if I told you when I had kidney stones. I think you mentioned it. I was in agony. Yeah. And they said in the, I was in A and E, mm. lying on my back. Mm. And the woman at the A and E counter said to Suzanne, "Who's that over there?" And she said, "Always oh, with me. He's in agony." So they said, "What's up with him?" So they, oh, it's his kidney stones again. Because this is when I went back at the night. Mm. I, I was like, I couldn't care that people were staring at me. I, I was rolling about on the floor. Like a, a dying fly on my back. <laughs> I just didn't care about what was going on around me. But I was told that because it's busy, that they might have to send someone out to shove like something up my arse that would get to the pain quicker. Well, what Ooh. do you mean send them out? Well, they send what? No, while no, you're no, lying no, on no, the no, floor no. in A and E, they're going to send something so, yeah, out. What do you mean? Oh, you mean a, oh, you mean a, uh, uh, a pill? I thought you meant to get to your kidney quicker than up your nose. No, 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 no. A pill. They put it up there, and, yeah. and apparently it'll kick in quicker. Yeah. Yeah. The tablet works quicker. Yeah, up your ass and it does down your throat. Yeah, because it's you a mucous membrane and it's. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I was up for it. I just was like, whatever it takes. Now, saying uh, that to me now. But now, hold on, though. What if the doctor said, "Okay, um, I could give you this morphine. To take it. It will take a few minutes to kick in, or I could rub some on my um uh, penis. Uh, I pop an orange on the end of my penis. I rub that in morphine, and I pop that out of your uh, your, your rectum, Mister Pilkington. Are you in agony or not? Are you in agony? Okay, look, I'm just smearing. I'd, I'd, I'd say I'll get uh, a second opinion. Well, no, you haven't, you haven't got time. There it is. Do you want this? Up, do you want this up your ass? It's covered in morphine. He's um uh, in his private life. He's a he's a he's a promiscuous gay man. But in his in his professional life, he is a doctor with um, a morphine smeared penis, and he's ready for action. So if you're, are, are you, and he's he, willing to do that in the middle of A and E. Yeah. Well, so he takes no pleasure from that. Uh, it's the only way. To, so are you in pain? Do you want this done or not? Yes or no? He comes out into any reception, his trousers around his ankles, he has an yeah. erect penis, he says, Carl, do you want me to stick this up your ass? And your answer is? Yes or no? I d I d You're in terrible agony. He's wearing a condom. He smeared the condom in. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not unprotected, um, uh, uh, morphine, uh, uh, penile, um, surgery. Administration. <laughs> Administration. <laughs> and what, in and out, done? Just in and out, yeah, he just administered the, 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 the your, your, your ass takes on the morphine from the doctor penis. <laughs> it's the only way, really. In uh, and out. Yeah, <coughs> in and out. Up once, okay, and out. It'll definitely work. Uh, you, oh. you will. The pain will go away. No side It'll effects. It'll be pleasurable. No side effects. effects. No side effects. No. I'd probably call Auntie Nora and ask if she's had it yet. <laughs> Can 
I just return us back to where we started from? Because in Ricky's introduction, he said that modern man, in a sense, with all the technology we have, can play God. And this is something which is huge now, a lot of yeah. ethical discussions about things like stem cell research, should we be interfering no. in what should be a godly terrain? You say no, straight away, straight away, no. I think, uh, they sort of like messing about now. I think that's the problem. We've got the tools and they like to use them. And that's what happens. I've got a sander, uh, for Christmas and I, I, I can't wait to sand stuff. I can't even think of enough things that need sanding. But I want to use it. And Not scrappy sander. And that's the problem, innit? If you've got the tools, you can't have the tools and say, so pop them in the shed. Oh, no, I don't want to use them. Got a new tool here. Right, well, sand the shed, though. That's the problem, innit? All these, all these, you know, medical people. Mm. Um, that's what happened in the Hulk, innit? Yeah, well, again, that's, I'll just say that is a work of fiction, the Hulk. Yeah, but with all fiction comes the future. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so, Certainly uh, in science fiction. <laughs> but the problem is, this is what I say is the problem, we can sum it up here if you like. And then go on, sums it up. go on now, this is a- you, Is you, it a quote you, from someone? Well yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it is one for sound bites and um, it just no. saves a lot of time, uh, Carl's quote, you don't, you don't have to study the book or anything. Um, so uh, let's let's sum it up there. Let, 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 we're gonna end it here, but we're gonna end it uh, oh, oh. With, uh, with this quote from Carl Pilkington. Carl, shoot me. <laughs> People are living too long. <laughs> okay, that but what, that's your summary of medicine. Well, yeah, it is medicine. because it's kind of now. You see, I agree with medicine to stop pain because it's, it's depressing pain. Mm. Stop the pain. Mm. Um, I'd say, I'd say, as soon as we sorted that out, and we started saying, "Do you want a new face?" That's way over the line. Yeah. No one should be getting a new face unless they're really disfigured. Yeah. But those are the people who are getting new faces. No, they're not. There's people messing about. Yeah, no, it's people- Or plastic doing, surgery, but that's yeah. people's own choice, they're paying for no, it, it's, it's ridiculous, I know, but it's, it's, not, it's not taking it away from other people, is it? Yeah, it is, because the person who's messing about with someone's face could be doing something no, else. No, because they're plastic surgeons, they're privately employed. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. They should be sorting about? someone else out who's got a little funny head. They shouldn't be messing about with Pushing someone who's got nothing wrong yeah. Trying to get some free treatment. Get some free and treatment it never looks right, anyway. They spend no. all that money, it never fits properly. You no. know, you, you, this, fish, is, this is what annoys me about Fish Carly. lips and, uh, and that, 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 little, that yeah. stupid little skeletal nose. You'd be and better off changing the head, all of it, rather than messing about with the face, because it never fits properly. Mm. But you've completely, as a form of summary, you have completely gone off tangent. No, no, that's no. not a summary yet. Sum right. up, I have one right. more go. So, this, is, this is the real one. Okay, Carl, sum up our global guide to medicine. Go. Uh, today's cure mm. Mm. Today's cure is something like it's something like that. It'll be something like uh mm. Today's cure is tomorrow's headache. It's all right. That's all right. Cuz what I'm saying there is Go on. we can come up with with stuff. Mm. We can come up with a tablet to get rid of headache. Mm. Tomorrow, your headache's gone. Your leg's hurting. So today's cure is actually tomorrow's leg ache. So today's cure is tomorrow's leg ache. Yeah, but ages ago Go I on. said to you, don't solve problems. Yeah. Because a problem solved is a problem caused. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I don't remember that quote. <laughs> But, okay, so, so finally, in summation, you were, what you said was- So, uh, okay. At the end so, of the day, we've all got to die of something. Right. Now, Albert might come in, I'm a doctor. Right, Albert, how are you today? What's, what's wrong with you today, Albert? Uh, oh, I've got an inflammation of the, uh, testicular region. Right. Oh, my scrotal sac is all, it's all stretchy and swollen, it's pustulating and it's causing the penis to, uh, to be all red and inflamed and, and that spread to the anus. Uh, right. <gasps> Take these tablets. Right, where do I put them? Where do I put them? Just stab them with some water after a bath. Okay, I'm not gonna have a bath. I can't have a bath of these because the, 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 the if uh, honestly you see these get in a bath and they start bubbling with the yeah. Like the, I say, just the, take the tablet. I think I think I don't know what it is, but it's look at it. It's yeah. like a mess. It's like quite a mess down there. I can't. Oh, take, take the tablets. <laughs> oh, take the tablets and yeah. come back. Come back. <sighs> Some, you know, in a week's uh, time, uh, let me know how it goes. Okay. Right? Right, so, so let's, it is. let's imagine that that perfectly normal scenario <laughs> has happened. <laughs> what 
<laughs> what what is your point? Right, he'll come back the week after. Yeah. The problems downstairs will be sorted. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's seventy six. He's gonna have something else wrong with him. I do another check on you. And even though you, you, you sack as sort of- They're not, it's not, they're not quite right, to be honest. No, but they better. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, it swings and roundabouts yeah, because- well, that's, that's the, life, the, that's the, life, the, 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 the penis is, is, is much more functional. The, the testicles are, are really, the, they've lost all their skin, it's just, a, it's just like a bag of spaghetti just hanging on the chair. Mm. And the arse, the, the arse is the itchiest arse I've ever had. I've had to, at some points, <laughs> I, I've got blood under my fingernails, it's great. So it was not completely cured. And this is why no one wants to be a doctor anymore. <laughs> Rick, you may be interested to know mm. that Carl Pilkington, basically thanks to the efforts of your good self mm. in making him into a household name, mm. has got a book deal. And there's a book that will be coming out later in the year called Happy Slapped by a Jellyfish hmm. by Carl Pilkington. What's that about Carl? What's the, uh, what's the angle? Is it a novel? Well again, I just was letting my mouth sort of think and what have you, just churning stuff out and I was thinking about holidays that I've been on, because they always say write about what you know and stuff. Mm. So I thought, well I've been on a few holidays. Mm. Um, write about them. I actually thought about it when I was on holiday. Is it a real, is it like a, a travel book then? It's your experiences? It's just like, uh like a rough guide. And have you, have you done it? Have you done it? Have you finished the, the... Yeah, I've just got to do some pictures and that and colour them in. And then it's done. When's that out? October? Yeah. So you say it's a travel book, um, and yet I've, I've managed to get hold of a few pages. Um, no. And this chapter is titled Australia. So You've never I mean, been to Australia? No, I know. But, well, it's but not, it's how not, is it a travel guide? No, it's not, it's not like Wish You Were Here type thing. It's, it's just saying, if you're going away, think about it. Right. It's just asking people to sort of think. But why about they just let their mouth do the thinking? Why no, but just just have a read of of like my thoughts and you. Okay, have so you don't then. you don't know anything about Australia because you've never been. No, but but exactly. So I'm saying I've never been. This is why I've never been. Is this why you've never been? Well, that, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. It's a pointless book. It's not a pointless book. Well, let me, sorry, okay. wh whereas you thought it was going to be what? <laughs> <laughs> right, can we read a bit of it then? <clears throat> <clears throat> so this is the chapter entitled Australia. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to <laughs> Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. Carl, you it? are a maniac! It's just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? No! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, right, okay, read on. I've heard that a lot of people go camping in Australia, which I think's mental. If I was to fly all that way, I'd want a decent bed. Mm. Plus, I wouldn't be camping in a place where there are killer spiders wandering around. I agree. I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's alright, Lyme Regis. But it was, it was all a bit of a nightmare, because I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, who had a bit of land in the garden? What's the point, though, in it? You know, you're camp. What's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of like a spa down the road and like a pub? No, because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, so, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have Getting for like, when they have it, parties yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a quite a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. Well, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of kipping on the beach. But, uh, Did he pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found a bit of... See, we, we found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish 
So we oh, thought nice. that's the place to go. No, yeah, I love a it. municipal well, that, tip. What was it? Was it was it chemical waste or just like you know no, just, um, coke just syringes stuff. and oh, the but, but listen, though, you've got to think about that. Rusty, if there's, if there's, rusty. If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like it's a way. That's like a little tip of. I would love this to be a real so, guide. So you um, could have slept in a public lavatory. Yeah. Yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? <laughs> Means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed <laughs> up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there. And then so what was annoying is he puts down the tent. <laughs> we uh, we what's her name? We uh, it was already up. It, it was already all up. The they way carried it all the way there. They weren't let's pack it down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was. Soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's all the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they, uh, that, that was probably in the guidebook. They started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near, th th there's some nappies over there. Yeah. Near, near the nappies. And, um, they offered us some sausages. Oh, right. My mates would all ignore them. That's like code for, uh, swingers. What? No! What, so there were some people cooking some sausages, <laughs> yeah. saying, would you like the sausages, we've made too much, and you it's said, no, that's thing. code don't for swinging. don't talk to strangers. It's like, we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone, you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And so, then uh, so you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about 45. Who were they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? That means, you, you, you say, right, I want the bald one, love. <laughs> If it's like wife swapping, should, <laughs> should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't. I don't know all the rules and that. But uh, he's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of. I said, don't believe sausages is a is code, a code for swingers. <laughs> I don't because uh, eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, "We'll get your pants off." And they go, "Wait a minute, we just have some sausages." They go, oh, "This isn't working. This code." But why we need would a better be, code. Why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't- let's not trust these people, let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. Clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's no- You're right, and this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. He knows funny costumes when he thinks. <laughs> But you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. Because I used to, a technique I used to develop at university was whenever people bothered me in the street, I would pretend to be sort of generic foreign. I can't really do a foreign accent, but I would just be like, like if someone asked for directions, I was always worried about giving them the wrong directions, so I would just, sorry, I don't, I don't really, uh, how you say, you know, it's just yeah. kind of vague foreign. Brilliant. And I've periodically used this method throughout my life. And not so long ago, a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics, and I sprang into me old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian one. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is, I don't yeah, know what accent it went, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, I was like, I don't, uh, he was, well, let's just let me explain to you about it. I, sorry, I'm um, not from, um, and the guy- This world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet Snark. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear sorry. To God. Not when you were famous. Oh yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't. It hadn't occurred to me. I just. It was like a lapse no! of concentration. God. It oh, was a I lapse see. of concentration because. Um, and did your bow tie spin round? <laughs> and you squirted in water and ran away. <laughs> That's what I did. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> because I, you know it's one of those things where you know you don't always remember that you've been on the. It's not like That's I instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, "Are you Stephen Merchant?" And I, and then you're in this position where you've got to go. Either you've got to admit what you did, or you've got to carry on the lie <laughs> and I chose the second one <laughs> so I was kind of like I don't I don't know who that is what I don't know what you and he was like oh god really you look a lot like him I was going I've never heard I don't <laughs> in fact you are Stephen Merchant freeze <laughs> uh, I'm always getting stopped for for I mean, there's so many charities now. Anything. I think that's the other problem, actually, that there's so many now. Years ago, a problem wouldn't have been a problem, whereas today mm. it's 
someone's got this problem, someone's got OCD and we're collecting for that. Right. It's not just starving people anymore, it's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah, a lot, of new, bank a lot of new diseases have Definitely. cropped up. Particularly for these sort of rich and famous diseases that, that, that really, uh, Weren't third world people do not suffer from. So, I was in, um, W. H. Smith's buying, probably buying a Valentine's card. Oh, uh, okay. So there you go, you see, so I do yeah. do a bit. And, um, is this the cheapest one you've got, love? <laughs> and I bought, yeah. this, I bought a big bar of like um, Galaxy. Oh, cheaper okay. than a cheaper than a box of chocolates, but yeah, still nice for me. That because they had an offer oh. on, right? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm this. saying. Okay, yeah. She's getting a card. Isn't this she? is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I felt awkward because she could see that. Oh, he must have some money. What a big bar of because Galaxy you could afford it? some chocolate. Well, mm. it's, it was like an impulse buy thing. Yeah, right. So she's thinking <laughs> he's got money to burn. Yeah. So <laughs> at first I didn't yeah. know who she There's was. There's a guy over here buying a big bar of galaxy and a, and a, and a small card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, follow him. So she's <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm <laughs> thinking <laughs> she just works in WH Smith's. Yeah. Morning, sir. All right, how's it going? Right. Oh, have you got a minute? Mm. So I'm thinking, oh, is it WH Smith saying, you know, how often do you buy the galaxy? Because they always yeah. do sort of yeah. surveys and stuff. So That's she not. said, oh, you like chocolate? I went, yeah. She said, yeah, I'll have a chocolate. Right? Oh. Little chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah, then she goes, you. right, uh, are you aware of the problems in the world? So I'm thinking, oh, what's this? You see, they've been clever there. Yes. I can't say no and walk off without a bit of chocolate. Sure. Right. So, Why don't you freeze? Um, Just freeze. <laughs> 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 We're closing up now. We're closing the shop. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, there's loads of problems. I'm sick of it. So she says, um, No, not yours, sir. There so, are some people who are starving. Yeah, and he explained to her, I said, listen, I said, I've got loads of these charities right. every month. Right. I said, my bank account is literally, because I, I don't use my current bank account that much. So right. you look at it with a statement, it's like, tools for Africa. Right. Help the aged. Mm. Deaf kids. Yeah. Um, there's another one. Dot com. Deaf kids dot com. There's, 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 there's loads. It's tools for Africa when they send people like Carl over to help out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is comic relief. <laughs> Tools for Africa is another name for comic relief if you watch it. So, um, so anyway, I said I do all this. She's going, oh, that's very good of you, but you know, w w we we need your money as well. So she's saying, but just just as much as you can afford, you know, every little helps and everything. I've been here all day. Look, as you can see, I haven't had much luck. It's not that busy in the shop. Blah blah. Oh, all right then, right? So I give her the details. She looks at the amount, she goes, right, now the options are, we've got, you can tick the £5 box, the £10 box, the £20 box, the £50 box. This is a monthly payment. Right. She said, well, I'll put you down for a tenner. Forget the fiver, she just leapfrogged straight that straight in. away. <laughs> yeah. And you can't go back, can you? Because you, then you feel bad. Sure. To sort of go, well, you've got a £5 one there, tick, tick, that one. Yeah. She can see I've got the chocolate, sort of wasting my money on things that aren't necessary yeah. when there's people dying around the yeah. world. Yeah. I said, right, yeah, tenner, fine. And you know, I filled it all out, I left the shop. Yep. Spent more on that than I did on the card and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you spent under ten pounds then basically. So <laughs> I get I get get home and everything, forget about it. I keep seeing these statements going out. It looks like Gandhi's bank account, the, the amount of stuff I'm giving away for charities. Sure. I forget about it though, forget it. It's I'm doing my bit for charity. I should yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Anyway, something kicks off in the world. Right. Ring ring. Ring. Oh. Hello, is that Mr. Bilkinson straight away? I'm thinking, oh, who's this? This yeah. isn't good. Yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> it's so and so charity. Right. Are you aware of the problems in the world? I said, yes, I am. There's lots of them. Yeah, but have you heard about the latest one? I said, yeah. She went, well, I'm just calling up to say thanks for the donation that you give us every month, but it's not enough. So I said, yeah, well, I think I give enough. I said, you're not the only ones here. I yeah. said, I've got, I've got five charities on the go here. Yeah. I said, you know, I'll give you what I can afford. Yeah. She's going, yeah, but let me just tell you about the problems. There's so many people missing here. This is bad. These are dying. Da, da, da. I'm going, I know, I know. I've, I was told all this when I signed up mm -hmm. and I agreed to that amount. Yeah. The £10 that I said I'm happy to give you, that's what I can afford. Call some other people up who aren't giving you a tenner. Yeah. She goes, no, but we haven't got their numbers, you know, and we understand that you're a supporter of our charity and, you know, just a little bit more will help. I said, listen, I can't. I've given you that amount. If you want, if it's not enough, let's stop the direct debit now. Right. I said, if it's not helping you, <laughs> let's can it yeah. and I'll give it to deafkids.com. <laughs> I said, because they're not calling up mithering. No. Well, they can. That's a good thing with them. So <laughs> she said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it then. She, and, and she wouldn't let it go. And um, in the end, she got an extra £1.50 off me. Right. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have 
like one year where they go this year uh, you know hungry people right. next year people with a limp or <laughs> just like they do in, with the China thing with the year of the cat year of the rabbit it's very clear yeah it's that year that's who we're helping this year right. if you've got that problem it's your year you're gonna have a good one and who decides right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting a with- But who gets together in the meeting? Uh, the, what will be the, the first charity? year? So what will be the first year? This year? Right, well, we'd- we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what- what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. Go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just gonna give so them food- So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific people, so it's like- Hungry, starving people who are starving. If someone goes, oh, me- I- I- I've got, um, I- I don't know, uh What's another problem? Adenoids. Me, me, kids deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once. Because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. There's things right. that I want. I can't have. I do without. Have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that. Right. But that's it could what I'm wait saying. Twenty Steve. years before okay. your charity I comes I know, around. but what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Uh, oh, I need out really bad. I'm paraplegic. But so does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because if we don't oh. help the hungry now, right? They they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah. Well, where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. I thought I was going to be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this this is just it's just a chaotic order. idea. It's, it's a chaotic not. because people who are hungry, there's there's always going to be people who are hungry. Yeah, but but then you're not going to just because there's always going to be new people. Yeah. yeah, but but I sort the problem out. They've eaten all the food. It doesn't last forever. The but, food, but Carl. I sort it out properly. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What do you think you... they haven't Let thought of Let me hear that. the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's gonna run out. Right. Give them a proper- you see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all- do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? Right, when I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yeah. I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop. Mm. Because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so-and-so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out of Amazon with a computer. I saw it. They were using it as a breadboard. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric. It's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe, I wonder what their toilet facilities are like, right? Mm. Thinking they might, it might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know mm. how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company <laughs> had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet. Mm. Right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, "Oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there." I'm thinking, "Oh, brilliant." I go round there. It is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> It doesn't work, and this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. So let's just do the seeds. You're not giving them a... Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any... Got any food? Got any sandwiches? I'm well, starving. I have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? I'm going to help you. How? What are you going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and oh. water them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some. No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that, that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. There's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all? No, or you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it. So, now. not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald headed fucking twonk. I was walking uh, away from the show last week. I was walking towards Berry Street. I like to look at the records and the record sure. shops. And I was on my mobile phone. And I was chatting away to someone. And uh, what can only be described as a prostitute. Go on. Stood on the street corner. Was she a woman that gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. Yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, Do you want to buy sex? Do you want to buy sex? 
Now, you sure my... it wasn't a market trader giving six plums away? No, it was definitely. Six for a quid? No, it was definitely a prostitute. Yeah. And what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> It's like, can you imagine, who, who would I, I, what, am I going to hang up? Sorry, Mum, can I call you back? I've you know, you know you say you want me to meet more women. And you know you sent me that 30 quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Johnson, I'm really excited about the job. Can I call you back? I'm just going to negotiate with a whore. <laughs> and it was, just, it was like, it was just, sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack. So she was literally, she, the normal etiquette. Of prostitution, you know, that they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> I've seen this in they films. Will ya. Yeah, they exactly. Will, yeah, 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 yeah. Take you out for a meal. That I sort know. Of that had sort of gone out of the window, and yeah, she was just sure. there, desperate, running around. Did she the go out of the window? Like because girl. that's another thing they sometimes do, specialist <laughs> exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London, I was weird, isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I, I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve... Steve, Steve knows is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't think... Well, <laughs> No, he does. <laughs> Do you know, do you know yeah, before... no, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks. No, no. It's what he thinks of you talking about his looks on... No, but it's, it's like how you were talking before about, you know, your eyes are bad. It's nature's little way of saying, look, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> I don't get that! I don't know what you mean! What when you look in the mirror and that, they've gone, look, he hasn't got the looks, let's make his eyes bad, right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, see, they're balancing I... it out, right? Yeah. And it's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right? Johnny Depp. Hey, listen, <laughs> but... I'm gonna... My, my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I, I am gonna burst. You know, seriously, can I be honest with you? You look like, you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, right? Just a little balloon, like a party balloon. If you drew a little face on it, right, and inflated it about halfway, that's what you look like. <laughs> this is like, this is like... Right, I wasn't... So, no, play a record, no, I don't listen, want to get into this, listen, it's now, too now, intense. Now you've, you've got onto this, let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't gonna tell you, because I think it was I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Right, it was on the tube. Right. Well, I was. Someone told me they were on the tube, mm. right? And um, it uh, the, the tube pulled into a station, <laughs> right? And one of the women saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with you and Rick on it, right? Yeah. So this this woman apparently goes, uh, "Oh, look, there's uh, it's Ricky. Ricky's on the radio, right?" And uh, the other woman goes, "Oh yeah, d don't you listen to it?" So she goes, "Oh, I didn't. I didn't know he was on the radio." And she goes, "Oh." <laughs> Look, I'm look sorry, at because he didn't look, sound this bad. When... She said, "Oh, look at that! Look at that person he's with." So she goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." She said, "That's Steve." She said, "I'm kind of, I was, I sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio." Yeah. So, so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So uh, that's what that's that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me. Sort of telling this one to say anything that was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was it? Sorry, you seem to be relishing this. Was it because of the little balloon story that made you? I'll, I honestly see. I want to told you, but if you're going to start, you know, having a pop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I can't just sit here and take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean, yeah. all mates. Yeah. It's just. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was mistaken yeah, for Johnny yeah. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that, if you want to have a go at me. Well, you know, someone just thought you were a fat with a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me, because he said you'd look... Well, you started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, did. I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know... Oh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross you can go and hang out with. <laughs> you don't need other friends, people who've helped you in your career. He's, yeah. he's a good-looking bloke, isn't he, Jonathan Ross? He's a good-looking fella. What have you got for us, Carl? Uh, News headlines? There hasn't that, sort of been that much going on. Sure. Sort of headline-wise, you no. know? Sure, for, sure, no, sure. No, because I look for good headlines and that, don't I? That sort of yeah. get you interested, like the... Well, then, then when you're interested, you don't read on. No, I did. Okay, go on. Like the one, do you know I read, the one I read out a couple of weeks ago, that was, uh, man lives in dump for ten years. Mm. 
Right. I remember the Chinese woman eats dirt. Yeah, yeah well, that man, was a man, cracker. man lives in Dump for ten years. I read on with that one yesterday. Yeah. I found it in my bag because I took it home, so I'll read that when I get a minute. Yeah. Right? News. Imagine that. News. Yeah. I might read last Thursday's Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch up. Uh, do you know how he got caught? What do you mean how he got caught? What he, lived, was? he lived in, he was a, living dump. in a rubbish dump. Well, he what's li up with he that? lived in a rubbish dump. What's no one, no one knew he was there. Right? Yeah. He was living off food that had been chucked away. He said a lot of people chuck away stuff that isn't off. So you can survive on that. Uh, he had a nice little place to sleep and that, an old mattress that was all right and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got away with it for ten years until he decided to celebrate bonfire night with some fireworks. Can <laughs> 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 you believe that? <laughs> well, he, you know, he's happy that the uh, gunpowder plot was foiled <laughs> exactly. and the Guy Fawkes was beheaded, anyway. thus saving our system of government. <laughs> There's got to be a couple of news headlines, surely? Um, Hold on, wait a minute. Bong! Piss penis man off the hook. <laughs> Bong! Man changed his name to bubba 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 bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Bong! Dwarf to live in a glass box. <laughs> Dwarf to live in a glass box? Yeah, it's meant to be art or something. <laughs> it's not though, is it? What? <laughs> Meant to be art. Why is yeah? Well, who's who's idea with this? Is is it is art or is it is someone hired a dwarf to live in their box? It's just a box, and he can even leave when he wants. Apparently, he can yeah. like go. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm going for a walk, and he be puts a little note. Uh, with his Damien Hirst, he might end up in four bits. Oh. So just be careful. But to me, that's like that thing when I said to you about the woman in the jar. What woman in the jar? The woman in the jar. They go, oh, come and see the woman in a jar, and yeah, then it turns jar. out it's a big jar. So it's like, well, jar. put me yeah. in there as well, then. Exactly. It's not yeah. special. Yeah. And that's that's the same with with him. It's a big box. He's a small fella. What's what's good about what that? What do you want to do though to compress matter? But hang on, it's not a world record breaking attempt. It's supposed to be art. You know what's art about that? Well, I don't. What's art about that? Oh, can we do a show for BBC Three? Carl Pilkerton going around. What's art about that? Yeah. That is brilliant. What's art about that? I'd love that. Would you? I'd love that. Me and Steve are going to do a thing called Is Art Rubbish? Where we'd go around and we'd chat about it. Yeah. But um, we, well, we can hand that over to you if you want to do that. If anyone from BBC Three is listening, Carl Pilkington, what's art about that? All right? Weird, isn't it? And what would you go around like Sensation and things like that and Saatchi and go and... Dali and that. You put a sheep in for Meldoride, what's art about that? Our oh. butcher does it. Uh, all right, uh, weird, isn't it? Uh, what do you make of Dali and the the melting clocks, all that stuff? Talked about it, haven't we? Have I we? Told you, yeah. Told you. What do you think of it? it? Uh, he sort of milked the idea a bit, <laughs> right? Because yeah, sure. every everything had a melting clock on it. It yeah. was like he had a bit of success with it once, and then he just ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. like it's like you with the monkeys, like status quo. Yeah, or yeah. Sure. What's your favourite artist? Don't say Lowry. Lowry is my why, favorite. Why? Why is Lowry your favourite artist? Captures life, doesn't he? Going on and in that. stick form. I know you're a big fan of Where's Wally as well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've never found him, have you? I never found him yet. <laughs> no, Carl. That's not Wally. That's a stain on the table. You've come <laughs> off the book again. <laughs> I make it clear now. I do not condone in any way, shape, or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean? Toilet attendants. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant. Yeah. So, um, go on. But because I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or a uh, pubs or big trendy pubs. You go in there, and there's the toilet attendant in there. He's got his little display of um, you know, aftershaves, sprays, yeah. some sweets, maybe blue straws, whatever it might. Yeah, maybe blue, a lollipop. Blue straws, maybe a lollipop. <laughs> and. All right, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy to do irritate they, do the When the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy who's just like... <laughs> is it like basking? Yeah, he's they, snuck in. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour, he's got a little bag, carrier bag, <laughs> yeah. he snuck in the, in the toilet. But the uh, thing is, it's the fact that, uh, toilet attendants, fair enough, I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me and then shoots off, but it's when I have to see them there. I feel I guilty because I'm like, I've got to, it's like, I oh, maybe we wash my hands, I'll forget he's there, he'll hand me a paper towel, 
suddenly I got a tip him like but a quid it or something. It annoys me because they're there. I wash my hands at all. I don't usually wash my hands. I, I, wash my I, hands. I, I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out. Oh. I do it by stand and change my trousers when I get home. <laughs> exactly. So it annoys me. I have to go through this charade of getting it out, <laughs> slushing out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, just if he did any of those elements, what, I'd tip it for him a you? quid. Yeah. Pop it out. Pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. And I I just, know. It's just guilt. And I, sometimes I'll hold it in because I'm doing. I don't want to go back in what there. It's costing me a fortune. Like a Water, I mean, it's a pound of piss. It is a pound of piss. Do you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I, or in a like, top hotel or something. Yeah, it's absurd. And I tell you, I tell you what's worse than that. I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids. But it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanized. You know, if he was only dehumanized, Rick. <laughs> yeah. If he was, if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under the, the, under the, the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or if and he could put hide a underneath hand the out, sink, like thing from the Adams. Like, just he just put, puts out. He you can know, just pop a hand out. Doesn't say anything. With just hands me the paper. So you don't even see like you know hand out. And then I go. I'd put a pound in, I'd take the thing, put a pound in, nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no aggro. Exactly. It's the fact I've got to see them and I feel guilty because, you know, I'm on the radio, I've got a cushy life. I know. Here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad, it ruins my evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them. Can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a, can they get a job? Illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Well, I tried to uh, try to play rugby, but it's awkward when you've got glasses. <laughs> I don't know something about you. Don't, you. you didn't really play with glasses on. Yeah, of course. Well, I couldn't see anything, could I? I couldn't see anything. How else was I going to play? Oh, my God. And so you're just... bound to be cautious, because inevitably you're a bit more cautious when but you've got glasses you next to your face. you the person on the pitch as well. Yeah. I mean, you were, uh, like, w w when you were about 14, you were probably six foot already, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone right. else was, like, five two. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you were uh, towering above him, and with glasses on. Just with the glasses, on. and you've got pretty cool glasses now. Thanks very you've much. had a bit of a, a makeover. makeover. It's like Trillian Suzanne said, yeah. first thing to go, the glasses. Sure, sort them out. Yeah, yeah. and but presumably you used to have those national mouth sort of bottles. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it true you've never been able to mosh? I at a try concert? to mosh. I, I, because I've gets... always watched people stage diving, moshing at concerts. I've always thought that looks like brilliant. You know when they they um they ride above like a everyone's wave, heads, like they're surfing across on someone's the, yeah, hands. And stuff. Everyone's like, yeah. And I've always wanted to do that because I'm a big rock music fan. And uh, the only time I did mosh was at Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> but, I tried to but, mosh at Rage Against the Machine. I, I love the idea of. A, a band called Rage Against the yeah. Machine yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, aimed at a man with glasses who yeah. won't mush. Well, it was at the Reading Festival, and I think the lead singer, I forget his name, he went, um, can I just remind everyone that racism and fascism, fasci fascism are on the rise in Europe again. Let's not let it happen. What did you do? And we all cheered, obviously. I mean, if there's one thing that guarantees a cheer yeah. at Reading Festival, it's down with fascism. And what did they do about it after the concert? And did pretty they, much did, went did, back and did, went, went home and had a cup of tea. Probably, I don't yeah, know what sure, they got sure. up to. They, they didn't go to Europe then and try don't and stop. They, no? I don't think they got involved politically in Europe. I think they just continued to rage. Against the machine? Yeah, mainly. but largely in, in America, I think. Sure, but, sure. But um, I tried to mosh, and I got, got moshing, and um, glasses flew off. <laughs> And I went, I went, I remember, because we were playing away, you know, hey, you know, do what you tell me, you yeah. know. And I went, I was just going, careful, I've just, my, I've dropped my glasses, can we just, can we be careful? Loads of kids so in, in hooded tops, yeah, exactly. just going mental. Yeah, and they're all jumping up, so I was just, can we just calm down for a second? Until Let's I not got be them. silly. Yeah. Yeah. It oh. was absurd, and I had to kind of, you know, scrabble around on the floor, and I, thankfully they were okay, and they didn't get broken. So what couldn't you do then? What do you mean? What can I do? What well, at school? Could, can you not? Can you not see without glasses? No. I mean, what you're? It's like that you couldn't do anything. It's a blur. Really? Yeah, it's a blur, definitely. God. Yeah, it's like being kind of punch drunk or whatever. So yeah, you can't play sports when you you know when you've got glasses. But why why not contact lenses? Because they're, they're not strong enough. No, I just I don't, it was they seemed a bit fiddly. Ah, oh, brilliant! <laughs> um, yeah, this is a question. I was discussing this yesterday. I'm not. This is not a bit of shit. This is not a joke. I genuinely have all be, always been slightly perplexed, and we were discussing it last night. The notion of the birds and the bees. Yeah. Now, I don't mean you know the birds and the bees. I no. understand how. You why, know. why they use the birds and the bees? Because yeah, well, you see, I always as a child, I never. No one. Was, I assumed the bees were having some kind of relations with the birds. No. So what's what is there anything to do with the birds and the bees, or is it literally you know just like a euphemism? It's just uh, oh, the birds and the bees. No, but they, they... Do the birds do anything with the bees? No, no, not at all. It was where parents... Just take them out? They it was where parents them. used to, to sidestep the issue by saying things like, you know when a lady blackbird and a, and a man blackbird, they meet, right? They make a little nest. And then because they're in love, they have an egg. Yeah. And that was it. I understand that. That makes sense. But why the bees? Why the birds and the bees? 
Um, well, probably, um, I don't know. I don't know. You see, I, within nature, forgive my ignorance, within well, nature there well, is no relationship between bees well, no, and birds, is there? No, no, not at all. No, not at Nothing's all. Nothing's going on. But probably what it was, it was, it, the parent found it hard to say, you know, daddy puts his penis at mummy's vagina. It was much easier to say, like, in the insect world, billions of them queue up and just fill the queen with spunk for about a day. <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, thus yeah, avoiding yeah. the embarrassing <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> exactly. That's m what I think, Carl. What do you think? <laughs> were you were you taught about the birds and the bees? Did anyone bring that up with you? No, Carl? it was just in that class, wasn't it? When uh, they put a video on. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> That's what we had. No, we had a film. And they just said, "Lay, I watched that." And then uh, what like, film? Right. Though? Basic Instinct. It was just just like you know, two two people, and uh, all sat around the telly and watched it. One girl fainted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they said, right, that's that. Next week, you know, prisms. Or whatever. <laughs> and did it teach you everything you needed to know? Uh, but, well, how much do you need to know? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> no, true. Except one kid in my class still thought a baby came out of an ass. <laughs> Afterwards, he didn't understand. <laughs> I think what they should have shown on those videos is technique as much as anything. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Because yeah. it was largely just instructional. Wooing. Mm. Wooing. Mm. What he didn't tell you was how to get into a position where this <laughs> might be of some interest. <laughs> that should have been the first four weeks of the course. Yeah, well, obviously, that baby who had a, the, the kid who had a baby. What was going on there, Carl? That was that weird. Was Did you see that? Yeah, that was going to be your favourite programme, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't that good in the end. What Why? This, this is, you told us about this story ages ago, didn't ages you? Ages ago. I told you about, about a year ago, about a baby that had a baby. Yeah, yeah. a bit different, the baby that had a baby, isn't it? Whereas a Siamese twin with a with a, a, a breech um, actually just, you know, developed in, inside him for, you know, just, well, it wasn't even developing. Uh, it was uh, a, a, a twin stillborn that um, just was inside... Mm enveloped in the other one's body so it's a little bit different to a baby what had a baby isn't it yeah. actually disappointed he was mm. do you know what he said to me he went well i thought it was going to come out and yeah. go oh bloody hell i'm seven what a waste of my life <laughs> like he's been yeah. in there going oh, hello <laughs> yeah hello <I'm> seven <laughs> idiot yeah yeah a bit disappointing but there was a program on after that right um at 10 o'clock on Discovery, and I haven't got Discovery. Oh, well, it was about. Good? Well, I didn't see it. This oh, is it. Okay. I was going to say to people if they've got a copy of it on tape, if they can send it in. What was it? Uh, about a baby with four legs. <laughs> right. That's That was on. That 10 on. It wasn't a puppy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing up there? <laughs> yeah. It's my baby. <laughs> oh, is it Mamma? Right, then. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Oh, he's got four legs, yes. Yeah. Sometimes they do have Look, four Dad's legs. gone, he's never coming back, you've yeah. got to get over it. <laughs> so, if anyone's he's got not a baby, <laughs> send it in. Oh right, dear, okay, send it good. in so you want to take with a baby with four legs. You're going to be disappointed again. It's not going to be like a baby with four legs who's running round, running up the curtains. You know what I mean? It's not going to be that. They're probably, it's probably going to be two legs and then two sort of like floppy appendages. You know what I mean? It's not good. They're not going to be brilliant. It's not going to be like Jake the Peg. You're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Come on, Carl. You're getting paid for this. Project. Out. We'll take one of those CDs away. All right. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? <clears throat> Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Sick of it, as I say. Mm. Um, so there's some people dressed up on TV. They were dressed up as the characters. They had their sort of costumes. There was a guy I remember, there was a guy I went to university with. Uh, I don't want to mention his name. Went into his room once. He's, he's into that sort of thing. In the, he showed me in his wardrobe, he had a full-size Star Trek outfit <laughs> that his mum had made for him. That his just, mum had made yeah. for him! But I wanted to say, well, A, you take this university, but B, when are you going to wear that? Yeah! When but, are you ever in the mood to wear that? Well, you know, you never know when, uh, it, you know, like on Apollo 13, wasn't it, when someone had uh, measles or someone, someone else got in. <laughs> sure. So you might go, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it. The Enterprise, uh a uh, Huru can't make it. But it's the idea of that being, you know, I'm not one to speak, but it's that idea of that sort of being attractive to women. Because that's presumably generally when you're at university, when you're 18, 19, that's the reason you wear those kind of clothes, is to try and make a bond with someone, isn't it? Try and establish some kind of connection. Yeah. Saw a guy walking down the street the other day, must have been 18, 19, wearing an honest t-shirt, just had a picture, and the, the words, 
um, Star Wars Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like but he's just doing the other girl going yeah well I love hey. that film as well yeah yeah. they're supposed to be kind of kooky and eclectic t-shirts aren't they normally they're supposed to be a bit sort of radical and a bit my, offbeat uh, my favourite though are um, I, I love fat goths yes I really love who fat are still goths. persevering with it even yeah, into their uh, 30s uh, yeah I, I like fat young ones I love fat 18 year old goths I really like them they're uh, one of my favourites and I like 42 year old goths <laughs> yeah. who they're, they're losing all their hair they just grow it at the back but you know, I don't know. I don't know what jobs they do. But their, well, their main hobby is looking like Nosferatu and yeah. wearing lots of silverware. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's 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 one of my favourites. I think I mentioned to you before. I saw a girl on the tube. She had a bag, and uh, she was quite gothy. She had a bag, and it had it sort of had like a Barbie's head, kind of sort of defaced, sort of yeah. hanging from there, and loads of badges and tassels and little motifs and all things. And she decorated the bag, and then had sort of things like you know, um, legalise cannabis and ban the bomb, you know, and stop the war. Yeah. And I just wanted to grab her and say. Um, you're doing much about the war, or you're working mainly on the bag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you like, spent most of the year. Yeah, you're filling in the petitions. Are yeah, you doing yeah. the marches? Collecting or is it badges. The bag you're focused on. Oh dear. I'll tell you another thing that one of the, a fashion mistake it always offends me whenever I see it is an Englishman yeah. of any age yeah. wearing cowboy boots. I had cowboy boots. I, well, I, I can't you, believe it. I, when I was 18, right? Um. I went out and got a pair of cowboys. The cheapest. I mean, they were the only ones I could afford. Awful. Why? I mean, was that they were like in... they were like clogs that came up to the knee. They were so uncomfortable. And why? And why did you get them? What, who was wearing them at the time that you that, that you thought they were cool? Clint Eastwood, <laughs> right? Okay. And I I had cowboys. I put segs in them. What segs? Which the little things you nail into the bottom. So right? they sort of clip clop as well. Clip So I'm about uh, eighteen, right? Uh, those tight jeans. <laughs> So tight, in fact, I thought I had, I had to went to the doctor and I said, my balls are aching. And I went off, I said, oh, I've got a pain in my epididymis and all this, which I was doing biology. And he went, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> right? Uh, so I had cowboy boots, right? And pale ones, not even sort of like finished properly, sort of like just the raw sort of leather, cheap wooden bits, the bottom segs, really tight Levi's, <laughs> and a red sweatshirt with bullshit on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a present. Just avoided on. I looked pretty hot, baby. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I uh, and I remember once as well. This was this was really embarrassing. I had leather jacket and. Uh, How old were you? Oh, this is embarrassing. Twenty six, I think, and I just had a nice leather jacket, right? But I was bored one day, and so it's about uh, nineteen eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven must have been, and uh, I just painted on the lapel <laughs> a little acid. <laughs> 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 and that didn't last. And were I, you going to acid house uh, raves? Uh, no, of course not. No, no. But but I remember. I remember that one didn't last long. That was in the bottom of the wardrobe immediately. Yeah. I knew at the time. I just thought, what the f what yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I I forgive anyone sort of anything up to about the age of 25, right? I don't know. But I mean, it's getting close there, yeah, but certainly up to age of 20. But it's the 40-year-olds. It is yeah. the 40-year-olds that yeah, yeah, yeah. just still have a little have a little go. But, goths are the best. Goths but, but, but are goths the best. Or, or the cowboy stuff, because there's never been a culture of cowboys in this country. I know, You know, yeah. so you see the 40-year-old guy with the kind of cowboy jacket with the tassels. Yeah. You know, or the bootlace tie. Add that, add that, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've yeah. been through most phases. This is what's been interesting to me about you, is you're yeah. now, you're quite self-aware. But the most committed one was probably the New Romantic when I first went to university, so, uh, you know, uh, 18, red bullshit t-shirt and tight jeans. Within a couple of months, D David Sylvian, just just full makeup and yeah. that, that, that. Can that. I ask? Because I have never really subscribed to one of those fashions, yeah. one of those styles. Yeah. With something like New Romantic, which is, you've got to be quite committed. Do you ease into that slowly? Start wearing a bit of nail polish, maybe an earring, and then you work no, your way in, or you first, went whole hog? No, I remember the first time I did it um, was the sort of like the first disco in my first year. Um, just. Uh, Borrowed someone's makeup, put it on, stopped at the chin, hadn't quite got the sort <laughs> right. of looked like a sort of like a mannequin. Right. And then I sort of got better at it, I suppose. Right. What right. did it look like David Sylvian? That, yeah. that was the idea, and then it sort of And like so stuck you had to then... literally go out and sort of start again with your wardrobe, presumably. The cowboy boots went out, the tight jeans. You had to literally go to a shop and buy an outfit, a new romantic outfit. No, it was okay because in those days it was a suit. So new right. was a new romantic, you wore the suit. It, oh, I didn't okay. I didn't wear all the Sort of like um, pirate gear and pixie boots. Right, I sort right. of wore the suit and the and luckily I before I went away um, I'd bought a suit from my mum's catalogue which was one of those <laughs> woolen ones that went bobbly. <laughs> so not quite David Sylvia, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know at least I was having a go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, respect. Have respect. you ever subscribed to any of those fashions, Carl? Uh, 
No, I just, uh Just going to the gay look now, aren't he? Where's Ben Sherman's and he shaves his head? Remember watching some Dr. Martins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my mum worked at a college in a canteen, <laughs> and, uh she knew what it wanted some, but she got some, uh it was an old woman who worked in the canteen. Who said she had some, and it turned out to be like little granny boots. Having <laughs> <laughs> them for a bit, <laughs> with a little zip up the front. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. brilliant! Did you wear them for a bit? Yeah, oh, you yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah. Waste not, want not. There's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. Station. Yeah. And I don't know how to describe it really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's like, it like American it, Beauty, but with with uh, different. Not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station, <laughs> yeah. and it's like if you go to the seaside, you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts, and it looks like you're a big fat person or whatever, and you yeah. can have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I think morning. they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and two just... hours of makeup before they yeah, exactly, open, yeah. dressing her in there. Because I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She, she has just... to go by feel alone just to feel the fridge <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can. You gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing. Does she there's have nothing. to sell her way out of it. <laughs> exactly. If, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there till the next day. Yeah, it's like a world breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, dear, that's Finchley Road. So if you, you so know, if, yeah, if you're on Finchley Road or just want to pop down there, have a look at the snack woman because it is. Uh, it's how does amazing. she get refills though? I don't know how it works. I don't know how she goes to the toilet or eats. I don't know what she does. Yeah. But uh, mm. but uh, God bless her. That's, that's so that's one of the jobs you would not that's have. jobs i would not like i've yeah. always worried about working in one of those big photocopying places sure because it's just that's constant taste of toner yeah you know what i mean it's so dry and just just i, I just imagine going to work with a hangover yeah eight hours in that sort of i think it's those jobs where what's the best that can happen <laughs> that day do you know what i mean the photocopying shot what's the best well they probably have interesting things like they you know people going in and photocopying porno, I, porno mags <laughs> I have 30 copies of my art. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't make it to the to staff party. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I wonder if I <laughs> yeah. could do that in here. Yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job wouldn't you want to do? Well, any job, you're a lazy... F you're yeah. joking, aren't you? What? I've done loads of stuff. This, um, I'm, I'm quite happy now doing what I'm doing. Yeah? You but, look uh, happy. Trying to think. You I sound happy. Yeah, I mean, you, you, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. I Are you on E? I'm happy England have won and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on, I'm happy for them. I'm happy in that. Yeah, what do you mean happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely contributed. Like... Switching on the TV was about as much <laughs> as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, come on! Yeah. Do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. Oh, Every, I, I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes, I had so the, much the mash farmers. Last night, I had so much sausage mash, right, I, I, second helpings, that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds. Spuds and bread. I could not do without I spuds feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds, I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah. And it's like, you, they're amazing. You can boil them, you can broil them. Yeah. I don't know what broiling is, Nor do but I. I, it's, I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as. I mean, obviously, the chipped potato is. For is the working classes, the oh, chip. It was always on. The chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the uh, you know the, the death trap fire. Um, what's it? Polystyrene ceiling was <laughs> <Yeah>. yellow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Comes yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And uh, it, yeah, it always had chips. Because or, I, all I remember hearing, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was that was your job, wasn't it? Yeah, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me because what did you have to do. Didn't you have to? Did you have to fill a diary out for your? Well, when, do you know when you're at school? I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you. So if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what are you playing at? Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like... I haven't had errands for since no, the 70s. Nice just, really. just, just, I went to you phase. Right, the little local supermarket, yeah. and I got. Uh, What's it called? Youth and euthanasia. <laughs> what I did. You phase. You new phase. You phase. You phase. Yeah. Like, H U G H. You phase. Oh, Hugh oh phase it's his name. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just phase, had to get. Right, yeah. I just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did. Yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when like even the teachers were like, just just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, 
Let's start putting the same thing in. I sure, know, start joyriding or something. Live. I'm, I remember when, uh, when Jane was little, she was at school, I think it was about 10 or something, that do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of 100 animals hmm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get a bit of as you knew. Unless it was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know the Dibblethwaite had slut. One. I don't she know, maybe... I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just. I'm just, I just it feels like it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the taters. I got nothing else. I got to have that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or uh, or mash, isn't it? Really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. You don't think so? Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves? Sure. Sure. Is, is the, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one strike that would we'd go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take your picture. Or they, they, they do a caricature the stri- of you. The strike. Yeah. Imagine the strike. You go out and you go, well, I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to get this? This is unbelievable. Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivor the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. Who was, <laughs> who was bloody awful, but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? <laughs> this fella built his house. Uh, after it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fellow was like, uh, <laughs> fella Ivan. he, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just what? stopped him making an house like that. Again. Blimey. That's why bad, you, isn't it? Why didn't you take away his trowel? Then he could have seen <laughs> yeah. that he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. You can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. I, we, I, suppose he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that, once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He Good thought, why? Why? Because you I, gouged people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but... Take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous, you know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat, but... Yeah. Ivan, uh, Ivan gouged someone's eyes out. That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the... C- Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're going to get on an history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity work he did. It, the impaling remembered. is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or little Ivan the Terrible is the, the, the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article. No, it was, it was just little bits like that. Talking about him, there was a thing about uh, someone who worked for that, that fella who painted the ceiling. Sistine in, Chapel. Yeah, there was answer. a thing. The, the, a woman who worked for him, in his house, and um, I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic, or just or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out, built him a house. The f- that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you probably end up with not not getting a grade, or yeah, or, or, or thinking you turned yeah. out to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the Go woman on. who lived with yeah, the woman who lived in a shoe. Go on. Yeah, yeah. there was this woman who uh, who lived with him, and yeah. uh, she used to like you know go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, but, but just... no, no, no. Wait, that's an excellent point. <laughs> Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints. But why and couldn't stuff. she draw, draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do? Because it? he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. That's it. That is. We were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. But um, it's not lying, is it? What do you mean? <laughs> wow. It's got no the poison. interesting thing about um, like a toad that uh, secretes a poison is that um, often it's no good for it as an individual, but it's good for the species as a whole because someone will come along and, and chew it. Now, that toad might well die, but that fox is sick and it doesn't eat another one. So it's sort of saving the species. Yeah, but at the same time, 
the dodo tasted rubbish. Everybody said, yeah, oh, yeah, you well, want we to let me go that. back we to the dodo. We don't know that. We no, don't know that. No, no, I, I, have, I have read it. I've read that they don't taste very nice. But it didn't Why stop doesn't it, it taste out. very nice? Why it's just, in the same way that chicken's nicer than duck. You can't all have nice tasting flesh. Pork's all right, but I prefer beef. <laughs> <laughs> Point proven. Good night. So what I'm saying is, with the dodo, um, it did taste horrible, but everyone wanted to give it a go. Meanwhile, it's different people trying it, so it died out in the end anyway. So your theory of a frog being poisonous and a fox going there, yeah, that's horrible. I won't eat another one of them. Then you get another fox trying one and another fox. They don't all have a word with each other, did they? Going, I had a rotten frog the other night. So it's pointless. It's a pointless exercise. What I like is your image of nature. This idea that sort of. In your head, there's Mother Nature sat around like a boardroom table, yeah. making these decisions. People are coming in, oi, frog, what's been going on? Well, I've been poisoning people. Why? What about you? It's just, you just picture everything as one large you, 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 Your confusion is that they, you still think of evolution has a will. You still believe that things are striving to be something else, as opposed to surviving if they adapt or change. I just want to, um, go through some of the, uh, the wonderful diversity of, uh, nature, um, some of the incredible feats of, uh, the animal kingdom, in a way. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Alligators and old people have something in common. They can hear notes only up to 4,000 vibrations a second. I don't know what you meant to do with that information. <laughs> <laughs> When's that ever coming on, dude? When the band's getting together, they don't go, no, we're after <laughs> crocodiles and old people. What sort of tune do they like? It's pointless. <laughs> You're not, not impressed, okay. Um, scientists have applied electrode to the pleasure centre in a rat's brain. The rat pressed a lever 48,000 times over a full day in order to receive that shock that seemed to him pleasurable. Choosing the simulator instead of having water or food or sex. So it, it chose that virtual pleasure, well not virtual pleasure, it gave it real pleasure, but an artificial stimulus rather than the real thing like food or water It never sex. ate and had water, it never yeah, had it a could, change. It could, no, it was addicted, it just, it loved this l electrode, it was giving it, it just made it feel good, it was getting as much pleasure from that as the real thing, from sex or, or food. Yeah, but with, with any pleasure you get sick of it, don't you? If you have too much of it. Well it had 48,000 hits in a day. But I like having a Twix. But if I have more than four a week, I go, I'm, I've, I've ruined that little pleasure I used to like. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, what did he do the second day? No, did he go the, near the machine the second day? No, no. Well, there you go then. No, 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 no. But what you're saying is this, right? That Twix is failing to give you pleasure on that fifth Twix, but this succeeds every time because it's literally pleasure. It hits the part of the brain that says this is pleasurable. So but. my pleasure, uh, pleasure nerve, <laughs> that you're talking about in my head. <laughs> it lights up when it I, twicks. I, I don't think it ever lights up. Right. I don't think you've got a pleasure nerve. But it lights up when it ever twicks. Right. It lights up, uh, if there's something, if there's some chicken, right? It lights Fuck up me. if there's a- What a miserable <laughs> cunt he is. You know, all, all, all loads of things. Chicken and twicks. That's no. it. That's all he lives for. No. Hang so, yourself, mate. So, what you're saying is, if I had that device that the rat's got, mm. I'd just sit there, wouldn't I, hitting it, thinking, I can't be bothered going to the shop for a Twix, I'll just hit this button. Yeah. Think of this. So aggressive is the horned frog of Argentina that people believe that if the frog bites the lip of a horse, the horse will die. Actually, the frog's mouth contains no poison. It earned its fearsome reputation because it attacks animals many times its size. What do you think of a frog it's attacking ridiculous. a horse? I don't know what's going on. I don't know why that would happen. Why, why is he getting upset with horse? Of all the things for a frog to be, like, getting cocky with, them two should never even meet. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? Because it's not, I, I mean, fights are normally over something, aren't they? Yeah. If you have a fight with someone, you're in my yard, or, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it, you're fighting over something. A horse and a frog- I that he immediately goes back to the 1930s. Yeah. You're, you're in my yard. But a horse and a frog. How did that disagree with that? I don't, I don't understand what they've got in common. I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I bet that's only happened once. It's a rare incident, someone said put that in a book. <laughs> I can't imagine it. <laughs> that that's happening a lot. That horses are being bit by frogs all over the shop. <laughs> I 
I saw this trailer for this documentary that said uh, the man who's having a baby, mm. and I turned on, and it's a woman going through a sex change and she's pregnant. That's not a man having a baby. That's a woman having a beard, having a breakdown. Uh, uh, what? What? Why is that? What? That's a con. That is pure sense. It's a man having a baby. Look, the world's first. But no, it's a woman. It's a woman. What do you think of that? What would you do for your doctor? And I came to him and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't. I, the penis. I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm going to get rid of. I want. I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that, everyone knows that, it's just <laughs> the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? <laughs> That's why we cover them, they're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> what, is not why we cover them though, is it's it? It's part of it, I think, I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> Even he had a leaf on. <laughs> no, but listen. Right. So, are you thinking fundamentally then that aesthetically the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than uh, yeah. And and that's that's the thing, isn't it? With with modern technology, you, need, you know, the, th the thing is, the testicles have to be outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise, the satoli cells die, which sort of feed the semen and all that. So, they, they, you know, to to be functioning and sort of like fertile, they have to be outside, which is annoying because I'd put a little rib cage around them, like that. I'd I'd pop a rib cage around those, protect them, wear a cricket box, have that built in, so you cannot get a kick in a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick. But it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way <laughs> that they, they, they were hidden away. Right. Yeah. So that they were just, then you dropped them, it's like, right, we need to cool them down, be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a, on a aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, landing gear down, and the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like, just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they could detach and you could pop them in the fridge. Yeah. Down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Of course, when you say easy, what are you gonna do, what's your plan? Just, uh... How do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but Testosterone, isn't it? <laughs> Testosterone. <laughs> They're Toblerone. I want to. Yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits, mm. like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Supposing I came to you and said, uh, "Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them." I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my arse where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. <laughs> 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 Rick, I know you're a big fan of Professor Richard Dawkins, the evolutionary biologist. He wrote a book, uh, The Ancestor's Tale, in which he predicted a post-human world. Uh, this was his, you know, his kind of hypothesis, if we were to, to, to uh, well, let me read what he's written. If nuclear war destroys humanity and most of the rest of life, a good bet for survival in the short term and for evolutionary ancestry in the long term is rats. I have a post-Armageddon vision. We and all the other large animals are gone. Rodents emerge as the ultimate post-human scavengers. They gnaw their way through New York, London and Tokyo, digesting spilled larders, ghost supermarkets and human corpses, and turning them into new generations of rats and mice, whose racing populations explode out of the cities and into the countryside. When all the relics of human profligacy are eaten, populations crash again and the rodents turn on each other, and on the cockroaches scavenging with them. In a period of intense competition, 
short generations perhaps with radioactivity enhanced mutation rates boost rapid evolution. With human ships and planes gone, islands become islands again, with local populations isolated, save for occasional lucky raftings. Ideal conditions for evolutionary divergence. Within five million years, a whole range of new species replace the ones we know. Herds of giant grazing rats are stalked by saber-toothed predatory rats. Given enough time, will a species of intelligent, cultivated rats emerge? Will rodent historians and scientists eventually organize careful archaeological digs and through the strata of our long compacted cities reconstruct the peculiar and temporally tragic circumstances that gave rat kind its big break? Carl, thoughts? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Well, that's about it for the second in the series of the Ricky Gervais Guide to. That was natural history. I think we've left no stone unturned there, Rick. I think that is a definitive work. Um, if you've enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Guide to Natural History, why not go back and listen to the Ricky Gervais Guide to Medicine, if you haven't already, or if you have, because you know, it's it'd be revision. Do you know what I mean? There will be a test. There will be. A, there won't be a test. There won't be a test. We can't be uh, bothered. No. Um, and next in the series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Arts. Look forward Sorry, to that. Sorry, just to clarify, that's the arts. Yeah. Right. Just, not the arts. Sorry, just yeah, the, the, arts. the way you speak. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I think it you should never go away people speak your words away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, but just be clear, be clear. Well, no, but you're right, you be clear, clear, be clear. Yeah, clearly you're not being clear, 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 aren't you? You're like a dumb, bumbling fool. And we won't even get on to Carl Pilkington. Anyway, thank you very much from me, Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> we, we've got this obsession thing again. It's saving everything. It's like how we save every animal, even a germ, we get upset about if it dies out. Keep yeah, but it, keep well, you, it. you say that, but of course, famously Alexander Fleming discovered uh, what may be the most important breakthrough um, of the 20th century which was the first antibiotic, I think, in 1928, and he's literally saved hundreds of millions of lives with that, changed the face of modern medicine. Um, and he discovered that because he, uh, left a bit of old bread out for a while and it went all mouldy in his kitchen. And he thought, oh, what's that? Oh, let's have a look. It's, it, it, uh, like I've said to you before, it's, it's down to him being scruffy more than anything. Well, not, it mm. just seems like there's a lot of scruffy kitchens around that I say, you know, I mean, you're saying- But think if his cleaner had come in and gone, Oh, Mr. Fleming, oh, you, oh, you, you disgust me, you fucking filthy scruffy cunt, I'm gonna throw all this bread away. He's gonna go, um, uh, Maud, what'd you do with that, um, old bread I left out? It had gone green, sir, so I chucked it away. Oh, Maud, you dopey fucking slut. You've just caused millions and millions of people to die. Keep out of my fucking kitchen. I know, but but don't put it there. It's the same way smallpox and so a, you're in a yogurt side. pot. It's a yog in a yogurt pot. Well, you're asking for trouble. But what if Maud had come in and thrown that away again? He couldn't. He couldn't shout at her. She's doing a job. I'd be annoyed if it was still there. Yeah. I'd so say you, it's been here now for a couple of weeks. You haven't even asked. There's a lot of cleaners. That's a, that's part of the problem. I'd say the cleaners. They're not doing the job. That's the problem in hospitals, isn't it? Yeah. There's filth everywhere. Well, they proved a point. Uh, in one hospital, they brought a team of people in to show doctors and nurses how to clean things properly, and deaths went down 30%. There you go. Just from properly washing your hands and properly washing the floor and mm. things. That's amazing, isn't well, it? It's pretty simple. Just don't put, like, yoghurt pots with smallpox in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, that's but a you, starter. Yeah, but you were saying earlier, um, oh, let's let babies eat mud, don't inject them. Yeah. But to we, let them we've crawl around a dirty floor, I clean did, up the floor and no one will die. I did say that, but we've gone too far now. Babies are coming out mad. Oh. They can't handle anything now. Oh, they've got a runny nose. They're coming out all mardy. All get mardy? Ill. Yeah, they get ill easy. They're not tough babies anymore. We're ending up with a load of weak people who need looking after all the time. That costs a lot of money. <laughs> and they can't do anything. They're useless. Now, that doesn't happen. In, in other nature. If a little weak bird is born, you see Bill Oddy saying that won't <laughs> last- <laughs> He says, he says that won't last a week. And he's right. You, you watch it and say, oh, that, that third baby that came out, it died. And but he was what's right. your point, Carl, that modern Me medicine point? which can help people live to the age of 75, 80, they shouldn't be doing that? They I should just, let people just die off? Well, 
here's something, right? Go the on. estate that I grew up on. There's a woman there. Yeah. Scruffy Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> like her already oh it's great it's so descriptive now, she had no chance even if she cleaned up her act yeah. she'd come in looking like pretty woman you go right scruffy no what's so, the point what is the point oh, so, so the thing is she used to always get on these buses called dialer rides that were sort of like <laughs> posh taxis you could call for one it come round to your house yeah and it would pick you up and you'd pay like 50p but, but you it would were pick like, up a bunch of other people as well yeah yeah on the way so it, it would take ages oh, to get to where you're going is. oh it's, it's it's good though it's kind of a bit of a day out old people used to love it because you'd right. get to see things right. and uh you'd hear a call coming in on the radio that you know scruffy sandra's being picked up and you go oh god and she'd always have loads of bin bags with her for some reason. Now the thing is, well, she sounds clean. She no, she stunk. Well, she's taken out the Was bin she bags. Homeless? No, she wasn't homeless. No, she used to just uh, she just didn't bath and that. She just stunk. But the but the weird thing is, why they call her Stinky Sandra? She never was ill. Right. People didn't sit next to her. Yeah. Because she stunk. Yeah. Now because of that, anyone who might might have had a bit of flu or a cold never sat next to Scruffy Sandra. Right. Because she stunk. But that was good. That was like a protection thing for her, because she knew that because she stunk, no one wants to sit next to her, she wouldn't pick up the the germ. Right. Now, but this is quite- your point is, in order to fend off illness, you have to not bathe. And so you stink. It, so you don't- it, so you don't- so you're saying that it wasn't that she'd built up an immunity, it was that she stank so much that flu wouldn't come near her. <laughs> this There'd is a such a you. specific example, mm. it's- it's not applicable in any other scenario. There's always colds, there's always flu, it's whether your immunity is- is good or bad. Uh, the times I get ill uh, are usually after like a, a- you know, a long haul flight or something, when you're surrounded by it and you're run down a little bit. Mm. Um, or, maybe if you, know, you didn't bathe for three days before yeah. the flight. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's always there. There's colds and flus everywhere. That's interesting, isn't it, that, um, more sort of colds are spread through shaking hands than people, you know, just taking in the air. Because people sneeze into their hand and they think that's sort of safer, but then they shake hands and you get it on your hand and it sort of dies in the air quickly but it, it stays on your skin a bit more because it's, you know, you're it's nice and warm, lovely environment. So, uh, that's why some sort of germaphobes don't even shake hands anymore. Yeah, but that's going too far. Because they're gonna die or something. You can't be that paranoid. You've got to get on with your life. Loneliness. And it's good to feel ill, because when you feel better you appreciate how good doesn't you feel. Doesn't make any sense at all no, it's good to no. feel ill. Doesn't make any sense at all. No, it does afterwards. The other weekend, when I was ill, I don't know what was up with me, but I got, I got something. Symptoms? Uh, went to the toilet a lot, felt sick at the same time, got a sweat on, uh, felt weak, had the shakes. Um, just a bug, yeah. Lasted, a... lasted probably about 24 hours. After that 24 hours, you go, oh, I feel good again. It's nice to feel good again. And it makes you appreciate how good you feel. Now sometimes I don't know if I feel well. It doesn't make any sense at all either. What you... do you mean sometimes you don't know whether you feel because well? I, because I've been in my body for years. <laughs> Here he goes again. Go on, yeah. Here he goes again. Now, the two minds. If there was a, if there was some sort of kit that the doctor said, "How are you feeling, Mr. Pilkington?" And I go, oh, "I think I feel all right." And they go, "Well, do you?" Yeah, I don't know. And they go, "Well, step into the machine, right? Get into the machine, and if he could somehow transfer my feeling into his body, so I could feel how he feels, and then he can feel how I feel, and he'll go, "Oh, you're not well at all." Your heart beats irregular for a start. You're a maniac. This is- I no. don't know what's going on here. Because you're, uh, why do you, you just accept that if you feel well, you know- Because uh, you don't know if you feel well. Hang on, let's well. get this machine built. Sorry, why are people bothering studying AIDS? We've got to get this machine built. Listen, this machine could do a lot of good if they could do it. Why? Because some people- you hear about people who go, Oh, I think I've got a bit of wind. Before you know it, they drop down dead. Right? Because right. they didn't know. They just- well- didn't didn't Mr. Uh, didn't Mr. Jones have, have a sweat on Mrs. Jones before? Oh yeah, he did, but he always had a sweat on. Well, didn't it bother him? No, he was used to it. Happened for years. Why didn't you come in? Oh, so, and what would the right. machine do again? The machine would make my doctor yeah. feel like me. He'd be sat there and he'd go. Sorry, oh. who's who's saying to Mrs. Jones? Didn't Mr. Jones have a sweat on? The doctor. So the, the doctor knew he had a sweat on. Why didn't the doctor say, "Well, no. we got to look at that"? No, no, he no, didn't. No, he, he asked, didn't. He asked he's Mrs. Not a very Jones. Good doctor, though, is he? He's not a very good doctor, then. Yeah, but this is the problem now, isn't it? Right. So, so, so Mr. Jones went to the doctor and said, "Oh, I've got a sweat on." Right. Uh, right. So he'd go, "Hmm, 
Well, I'll tell you what, get in the machine. So Mr. Jones gets in the machine. Yeah. The doctor hits the button. Mr. Jones gets into the doctor. The doctor what? goes, you have got a sweat on. I'm familiar with this because I had a fella in the other day with a similar thing. Tech three of these. You are a mental case. Well, I don't know what that- I don't know what this is. Because but why can't what, the doctor this, make that observation like a doctor yeah, does? Why can't the doctor, this, using his knowledge, observe the person with the sweat why, on? I tell you this why. is like a scene from Ghost. This is right. like Patrick Swayze. Listen, do you know that time when- when I went to the doctors and he said my nerves are too short? That didn't make any sense <laughs> at all. No, no, but listen, you've, I've told you about it, I don't want to go through it again. But he- he, uh, he- he, you know, looked at my legs and stretched them and that. He said, yeah, it's the old short nerves problem. No. <laughs> that, took, the that, took, that took like three visits before he worked that out. Right. But how would he be able, just because he's, if he was feeling how you were feeling, I wouldn't help him identify it. Yeah, you're, you're there in your body and you're not going, bloody hell, my nerves are a bit short. <laughs> doctor, you're going to the doctor, okay, and we're just going to place uh, Pilkton in with right. uh, him. Pilkton is in me. Oh, my nerves are too short. When my nerves were short, are they not short already? Have they extended since then? Well, yeah, I just have to do stretches and it's pull them, it's pull them about. <laughs> right. But when I, when I add that, I'm not very good with words. Go on. So when I was going in saying, Doctor, my knee's aching, uh, and he'd go, what sort of ache is it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I've, I've, it's just an ache. Toothache, it, it's like a toothache in my no, leg. No, but it's different, Go it's on. a different ache. Now the thing arse is- Arse ache, it's like an arse ache. It's hard to explain an ache. So he'd yeah. have to feel the ache and then he could make an assumption from Thank it. Thank you. So he would presumably go through training going in the machine and they'd bring in various sick people and he would experience and feel every single ailment. Great. Yeah, but over- Doctor, I'm gonna let you know now what a swift kick in the bollocks feels like, just in case you ever have to diagnose that. Oh, you can't- I can't remember that one! Yeah, but- Doctor, now you're gonna feel a spike up the arse. It's all about- <laughs> yeah. it's Oh, I can't remember that one! Okay. <laughs> Look, Doctor, couldn't I just wait until the man comes in with a spike up the arse? No, no, you gotta tell you so you know but when I you feel it. I could assess it if he's no, coming no, no, he's got no, a spike no, up his no, arse, no. I'd be able to tell. You've gotta experience everything before someone comes in and gets into your body like ghost, and you'll know what it is. Hey, listen, let's not- let's Let's not dismiss this idea out of hand, of course, because you'll famously remember, uh, Rick, that Carl had the idea of a man who can grow backwards. So he's born as an old man, yeah. and when he dies, he's a young baby. I think we're all looking forward to the new Brad Pitt film. Mm. That is exactly that plot. That well, a bit strange. It's not really strange, is it? Because it's from a novel. Uh, I think written before Carl was born. That's true. That is true. Yes. Yeah, so but actually, I haven't read it. So well, that's obvious. It's just an idea, and with all ideas comes something. Einstein said that. He said if a, if an idea isn't- Go on, uh, wait, 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 just let him finish. We, we've got an Einstein quote here. Yeah. This is a historic day. Um, Carl, sorry, what were you saying? What did- what did, uh, what did, uh, Albert Einstein say? He just said something along the lines of- well, no, 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 give us the quote. No, no, it doesn't matter about no, 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 how, no, no, how he worded it, it's no, the point in hand. Well, I think it is, I think a quote, it, I think like all, uh, you know, any, any sort of, uh, uh, poetic content of anything is exactly how it's- how it's worded. So just what, what did Einstein it's say exactly? It's it's not not it, is it? Well, he, he said something along the lines of. Go on. Uh, an idea. Mm. If an idea isn't daft. Oh, start again. Start again. No, come on, let's hear it. No, because he started. He, 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 he said, if an idea isn't daft, it isn't worth thinking about. From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh, as you speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan. People who hate him would yeah. be interested would be, in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Should we leave in, uh, I think, Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that. W werewolfism, really? isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy because because uh, <laughs> they they sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So no, you see, two <laughs> things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two, been pictures. There's been pictures. There's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have. Or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no. There's kids who've been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, oh, Steve! This is no. Too remember, easy. listen. Remember that time with the maggot and the head, yeah. um, and getting out with bacon, and you were like laughing, and then people called up and said, "Yeah, I've I've seen that. I've read about that." Yeah, this but is the you, same thing. Have this you is... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads. People who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is. It's 
comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were at school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God. Right, tell a story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its yeah. face is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> okay. Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> What's going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. oh! If anyone has ever seen that man on cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> what sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion-pound research budgets. They're going, we test everything. What would you do to man on cover? <laughs> Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Do you reckon they can send a traffic cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What, uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> I'm like, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, <laughs> it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. Whatever. Tie bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, Carl, look, let's have, uh, uh, let's have a little quick session of uh, White Man Man. Uh, For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, as <laughs> you may know, has uh, a section called White Man Man where uh, a member of the public gets to ask their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics and for he... What? He was, a ski, he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you do it? is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to... It's not, it's not gonna help you. No, it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, <laughs> athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not, it's not gonna <laughs> help them. <laughs> You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flag yeah. and you can try I, can it I, and you hold it. Can I say, can I say, the, 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 the drugs he was taking... that's his defence, Probably, the, it, it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't jacking up H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting doesn't... off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cos, uh, performance enhancing drugs <laughs> do. Wait, wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glint glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Okay, right, no, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up Swimmers muscle. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. For runners, example, runners, yeah. They're, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance wise, yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't why on a bomb would that help before. You? What? Why would that help you when you all you've got to do is balance on skis? <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like if, you, if if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I Very good. Bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying you know she's daft and that, but <laughs> don't make you. She's. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, you know, all right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you uh, agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, 
but he was stood there and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. <laughs> but I do recognise him and then my girlfriend got off the train and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so thank close. Thank God for your girlfriend. Does she, <laughs> does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what not. about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before I, you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because <laughs> um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down. Right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. <laughs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. It doesn't do you any good. What about wh where do you draw the line there? Though? What if you say lose a finger, pop into work? Um, depends if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Okay, and uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well he can't. It's, a, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's right. what he wanted to do. That is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best. So it doesn't really matter what it is, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. Doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And, uh, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Slow, slow, play a lovely song for you because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. Like, it's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's it's beautiful, and this is for Carl. The earliest art, which we know, um, which we call cave paintings, um, they date back between 30 and 10,000 years BC. Even those people tried to brighten up their cave with a bit of art. So in many ways, they were more advanced than you. Yeah, but they didn't have a big mirror. I mean, if you're living in a cave, let's face it, you're not going to go mad if your kids start drawing, doodling on the, on the cave wall, are you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Right. Uh, brighten it up. Uh, but they always did the same thing. It was always a yak, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it was they, always they, a yak. Yeah, but they drew what they saw. They, I mean, yeah. I love the fact that 30,000 years ago they're being criticised for being a bit literal. No, but surely if all you ever see when you step out the cave is a yak, do something different on the wall for when you get in. <laughs> what? Why is it always a yak on every wall? Is it always a yak? It's always a yak. When you see these Tom Robinson time team programmes, it, who's it's Tom Robinson? <laughs> He's the he guy a, did Murder Way, isn't he? Yeah, and a, a, a seventies singer songwriter, Tony Robinson. You mean Tony Robinson? Whenever you see him digging, digging around, they say, oh, "Hold up, everyone, get the brush. What's this? What's this?" It's always a yak. <laughs> yeah, they pretend they're interested. So they you're it. saying that you you wouldn't have, you'd have been so, no, I'm not going to draw a yak. I just saw a yak outside. This is what I'm saying to you about trends. One person has it, the next caveman goes, oh, I'll have one of them on my wall. Yeah, I'll do a yak. Why was there no one just doing something a bit different? Well, like it's what? not true. They did. It's not true. This thing about his yak. It's just in your own head. I've, I've, uh, the programmes I've seen, it's, I've, I've been to Pompeii, where they had, uh, doodling on the walls. <clears throat> and that was all, like, knobs, tits and arse. Yeah. All over the shop. Now, do that now. People go, that's a disgrace. Rub that out. Clean that. Get it down. Whereas now, if you see one in Pompeii, they go, oh, look at that. Look at the detail on that. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. This snobbery in art. It's the same knob. The knob has not changed. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I imagine in 50,000 years' time, if they dig up 
you know, a cubicle and there's tits and arse, people oh, yeah. will take pictures of we it won't again. Be. This is this is the interesting thing with the way we live now. We're cleaning stuff up constantly now. There's no uh almost no record of of our time. Because we're getting rid of everything. We clean everything up, everything's clean. Getting rid of rubbish, recycling everything. Well that's a very good point. Is graffiti um a, a valid art form? Some of it is. I think it is, yeah. I mean, we're not talking about the, uh, the, the classic spunking dick, which is still, I mean, it's still great, isn't it? Well, I mean, if, if I- If you see a lovely clean white wall and you see a spunking dick on it, you're gonna laugh. Always laugh. Do you add hair to the b to testicles when drawing uh, the spunking dick? a few. The testicles- Cause I'm all, I, it's always clean. My, my testicles are always clean. Really? Yeah, I, I put never- a, uh, I put, you know, the four or five bristles sticking out straight. See, I always thought that was a kind of common aversion It of looks it. like- mine looks like, um, I don't mean my real one, I, I mean my, um, uh, Illustrative. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks tight like two gooseberries and Thunderbird 2. Do you add much detail, um, at the tip of the penis? No, it's a straightforward, it's d dissecting across just a, a line across the, uh, 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 to, to show the helmet. Yeah. Then one little line for the, 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 and the, the do eye. do you tend to keep the same number of droplets coming out? I, droplets. I do three, but I don't do the line. I actually do the little teardrop little tear droplets, droplets yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and that is the that is the spunking dick. Mm. As, uh, mm. as when I, I was it. at school, it was referred to, and this may be specific to Bristol, it was referred to as the sacred. I just drawn a sacred. Oh really? Uh, I don't know if, where, where the origin of that was. Some graffiti is funny. I, um, my uh, I <laughs> I saw one uh, in London. It just said, Rachel is a big arsed, big chinned cunt. Now. I think Rachel's gonna see that and know well, that, well I'm I'm the only big arsed, big chinned cunt round here. I don't know how big her chin was. Sure. I think of her chin maybe looking like the arse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the big arse out there, but maybe she couldn't see the last part of it because the chin was in the way. Rachel is a be- and that's now, all she could see. Now where was this graffiti written? It was in, uh, um, near Centre Point. So do you think someone was so angry well, with I Rachel? Well I think, well maybe Rachel nicked this woman's fella. Right. And she went out. Yeah, and scored that. Yeah. In a lot of different places. I saw one that was something, I don't know it was back in Bristol, it was something like, Michael Peters is gay. And I always wondered if that was Michael Peters himself, who was having trouble coming out of the closet. <laughs> yeah! And was just writing that in a number of different places, so that by the time he finally mentioned people, they went, oh yeah, I knew that, anyway, I saw it in the toilet. Sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, because that's something, that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D, you can make something. You know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was, uh, quite a controversial one, a huge one in London, uh, the pregnant, uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wouldn't be room because it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. <laughs> I, d I, d I don't know what he was trying to say. It's uh... maybe she was saying, "Okay, we've had the human form. This is an example of the human form." Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal, and it was like, "Oh, I've chipped a bit off." <laughs> She, one of the arms got chipped well, it, off. Well, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And why, you see that, that square, Trafalgar Square, <laughs> you, you've got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That that was what they saw. That was what the artist saw. It's a, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what that, what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. It's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? What about the subject? Did you think uh, who's that subject? Who is that woman? No, not really, because because the Ledamides are around, and we, we've we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking, a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there, so Amazing. it's not it's not Amazing. shocking, is it? 
I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is, it just goes to show we're sort of running out of, of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it, or they try and destroy it? Uh, do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a twelve-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel of the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorways mm. are, are the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should you be looking at art when you, you when you're going at seventy miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, because it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and and look in know, the mirror. You can, you can. It's not a problem. Wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. What, so you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else? Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> <laughs> now you've spoken, uh, Carl, about, you know, art and what impact does it have, blah blah blah, and as Ricky's just pointed out, of course in some instances, art has been considered incredibly controversial, very provocative, and it's been banned. Famously one thinks of the Nazis b banning and burning certain books, not all of which were just books, you know, criticising them, it was often artistic works, things which they felt were subversive in some sense, and you get that in many repressive regimes, where people's artistic work is not allowed to express the way they feel about something, Stalinist Russia for instance, art there, literature, are not able to express its views because people see it as dangerous, as provocative. Well, yeah, the threat always comes from scholars, uh, with like any dictatorship, you know, and they know that. But not just, not just scholars, uh, writing, you know, scholarly texts, criticisms, but also people expressing themselves through poetry, through creativity. Well, yeah, Things expression's which are not dangerous. Direct. Yeah. They can be abstract and yet they can still be subversive. Yeah, but I think if it's done in a way that isn't just like a lunatic, uh, they get away with it. Like a nice poem, some people would see it, read it in a different light. I might read it and go, I don't even know what they're going on about there. So, as long as it's done clever, get away with it, don't they? So well, it no, makes the artist the case, better. But that's not often not the case, that's well, what I'm saying. Often, well, in these regimes, these things are repressed. No, but there's always like code words and that that you can use and they can't have you on it. Such as? I don't know. I'm, I'm not into that sort of work. Right, well, so you, you've just made a statement there, but it's not backed up with any actual information. No, well, if you well there was a good point way. there. No, there was a very good point there. Um, uh, the McCarthy era, where, um, he, uh, he was threatened by communism, uh, infiltrating the country, and, and he thought that, uh, entertainers might be a part of that, the conspiracy. It was a hotbed, and, uh, he made everyone come forward, writers, actors, say they're not they're not a communist, and, uh, some people were out in the cold, and so people had to be a bit cleverer, like, um, uh, was it Arthur Miller, the Arthur Crucible? Miller. Um, it's a, it's a metaphor. It's about witch hunts, but it's about the McCarthyism. So, yes, good point. You, you can put coded messages CB into CB Radio art. was the same thing. Go on. Well, it was all the codes. Mm. As long as Do, you got yeah, codes. Okay, well, I thought you had a, I, I, I mean, I was trying to make your point sort of more valid than it ob obviously was. No, but was. if you, if you need to refer to CB Radio, that's the obvious. Well, that's, that's what I can relate to. Sure. Yeah, we've done this, there's no point in CB radio. They go, they go, uh, how many candles are you burning? What? How old are you? Eight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no point to those codes at all, you know? So this is in no way, re this is in no way relatable to The Crucible. Why would you be talking about one of the most respected plays of the 20th, 20th, of the 20th century, and suddenly this, in your head, reminds you of CB radio? Just having, having this code going on that only certain people know everyone, how to break. Everyone, everyone knew it. <laughs> no, it's pointless. It, not, not that <clears throat> they didn't. Pointless. Because she said it was moving well, specifically around. just the head, she just crossed the head. With a stone. She got a tiny head shaped stone. <laughs> and squashed it. Because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was, it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with his one leg and stuff. Mm. You had to kill it. I imagine, I had this vision that one day... <laughs> So I'm um, just having to say to his parents, um... <laughs> <laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. I had to pull out of his misery. What? I just couldn't bear to see the you twitching like anymore. No. I know you didn't like to know, but no. I just took a rock. Yeah, and just squashed its head. What was in it? There was nothing in it. <laughs> nothing in it. Just, <laughs> just caved in. Was there, was there an egg in it from a... No, no, no. From no, a no it, was like, it was like, you know when you get a, a blown egg and then you crush it and it's just... It's, it was nothing. <laughs> just, yeah, nothing in it at all. But I just all. think... 
he seems happier. I'm certainly happier. I, I, I was happier because uh, I'm, I'm much happier because he's sort of uh, he's more more sensible without the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're still happy together, but now we use the dishwasher instead of him washing up. Yeah. When we already got one that cost more than a <laughs> What what metaphor are you taking from this? Just the way. Yeah, so that's at the beginning. There was meant to, there was, there was going to be a point you were going to extrapolate for this, like a fable. So, what did you learn from that? Um, <clears throat> I thought I was doing right at the time, and well, that's, that's, it, that's isn't it? important, isn't it? And is it objective or subjective? You know, one person's evil is another person's good. Some people think abortion is the worst thing you could do. Others think it's it's a it's a a woman's right, and it's it's a kindness. It's some people think that you should never kill under any circumstances. Other people say that some killing is morally right. Again, should uh, an action be judged on its intent or its result? If someone said to you, "Oh, I thought I was doing a good thing," but you know they opened the windows and your cat fell out. I thought they, would, they, they didn't even know you had a cat. Did they knock it though, or did it just jump out? It just jumped out. Well, I'd say it's not my fault. Your no. cat's daft. No. It was hot in here. Right. I've opened the window. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not getting the blame for that. No, that wasn't my point, was it? That if you if you open the window, right, and they come home and you go, oh my god, the cat jumped out and killed itself. You go, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I opened the window um, because I wanted to let some air in. I was doing a good thing. So I did I know it jumped out? No, no. I'd, I'd probably say, you sure they didn't do that before I got here this morning? Did you have the window open? Right. I don't think I. I, I looks like it's been there a while. So it's a bit hard. You instantly don't want to be culpable for your own actions. I mean, you, it is Hang your on fault. It wasn't it me is, who did it. It is your fault. The cat's dead. Yeah, it's your, it's an accident, but nevertheless, it's still your rock no, fault. Oh, if it's definitely me, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it jumped out. I opened the window because it was hot in here. The cat jumped out. It's dead. Let's go and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't, w wouldn't worry that much about a cat. Right. But what if it was a baby? Well, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Um, Carl, I'd like to ask you, if I may, stop twiddling that. Now, this is interesting, because you were fiddling with a bit of plastic there, and it was annoying me, and I know that a lot of things annoy Ricky, it was mm. very infuriating for him. Um, <clears throat> social etiquette. Now, that's a very, uh, that, that's not obviously inscribed by law. These are just things which have built up in society. So, for instance, it's impolite to sneeze and then shake someone's hand. Yeah. It's, um, Or sneeze straight in their face and yeah. go, oh, sorry, I've got swine flu. Now, those things are obviously good practice in terms of avoiding the spread of disease, so that makes sense. But other things well, are so it's just more good to be disgusting. If, so, if someone hasn't got a disease, I don't like to see someone sneeze on the pavement or sniff or scratch their ass. So social etiquette, I mean, how do you decide, I mean, what, what prevents you from being truthful and honest at all times? I don't know, there's something in you, and sometimes you can just pop it out, can't you? Uh, I've been in a situation when I've said stuff and I've thought, why did I say that? Go on. But it's not always... Uh, in the dentist. Last time I went to the dentist, I sat in the reception bit, big fat woman comes up the stairs, massive she was, <laughs> had a right sweat on. <laughs> uh, right. She gets there and... Uh, Out of breath. <sighs> yeah, she was, <sighs> again, you know, I mean, she was friendly, dead friendly, but kind of like, you know, leggings on, uh, sort of, you know, Shoes, but not on properly. She was, sh she was stood on the heel. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like she couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's like greasy air, um, and she went up, and she's been all all happy and everything. And I think that's what annoyed me. So when she sort of said, "Oh yeah, I've lost weight," she was talking to the woman behind the counter, and she sort of said, "Yeah, I find it really difficult, especially living where I live and having to come down this high street because there's so many cake shops and everything." And she sort of said, you know, today I've walked past, normally I always have a, a coffee and a donut, but today, you know, I didn't have a coffee and a donut. And I just said, why was it shut? <laughs> right? No, you didn't. I did, honestly. <laughs> Honest to God, on my mum's life, I said, why oh, was it shut? She said, oh, Hold well, on, why did you butt <laughs> in? She was even talking honestly, to you. I know, it's really, really weird. It's Wait, really weird. Did you have weird. to shout across the dentist's waiting room? Or no, no, it's just, it was a, it's a small waiting room, so you got the stairs, you go in, you've got about four chairs, and then this old desk, and I, I get on with the woman behind the counter, and I always sit close to it, and it was just me there, and I was talking to her about going to Corfu or something. She comes in sweating like some bison <laughs> up the stairs, <laughs> and, and she's there, and because she was showing off, it was like, well, you should have done it a long time ago. I think yeah. she, she annoyed me that she wanted some sort of pat on a on a big hefty fat back. 
<laughs> but she hadn't bothered having a donut that day. Now, maybe it's the enemy that just came out because I remember saying it and actually getting home saying to Suzanne, oh, I said this, I didn't even think I'd. I don't I know, know what you it mean, came though. From. Sometimes you, sometimes you want to go around with people and they're going, oh, I, I need, you want to put them down. You want to yeah. go, I'm, I'm stopping out with you because you're going to go straight back to that and do this, that. You know, I know you've had a lot. Just inject them in the head. Absolutely pointless. Get rid of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But talking about social etiquette, I was in a, um, flying to, uh, Edinburgh. And I was with um, Matt, my uh, uh, assistant, and um, there was a bloke on a mobile phone across the way, right? He's going, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get on the plane now. And he kept talking that loudly to people, right? And it was fuming. Then he stopped and made another call. And I, I was giving him dirty looks, and Matt was going, no, sit down, sit down. And then he was going, I am in the airport. And I shouted, he's in the airport. He didn't notice. I was shouting over. I was fuming and fuming, and Matt was just getting so embarrassed. Well, they don't see it. Though. And people were looking at me like I was the mental case. Yeah. yeah. But it was so fucking loud, and I moved through to another place. But I wanted to get someone. I wanted to be policed. I want to go right. There's a cunt over there swigging beer. Thinks he's a fucking Gordon Gecko player, and he's not. He's some cunt who's got his first mobile phone, right? But what, you know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. is that is infringing. That is like that's like passive smoking to me. Yeah. It annoys me when you hear these uh, awful middle class parents talking to their kid loudly enough to let everyone know what their kid knows. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, they, they, they bring up conversations because they're showing off about the kid. They're, they're, um, Toby, what's that you were saying earlier about you preferred Beethoven to... Right, okay, if that kid talks about Beethoven and Chopin, right? It, do you know what I mean though? Yeah. It's okay. like people showing off, yeah. thinking that the world is interested in everything they fucking say. That that thing about um, everyone's got access, which is fine, but it's yeah. those fat fucking morons on docu soaps that go, "I speak as I fucking th think." You f useless fucking blob of shit. Yes. <laughs> Have an education. Research, yeah. think, discuss, then offer your opinion. And stop your kids chewing on a fucking big ball of fat. Your mm. leg. Got someone specific in mind there? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's about it. I um, hope you enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Guide to Society. I think we've uh, we've sorted everything out there, Steve. Mm. Yeah, not many questions left unanswered. No, that's a uh, pretty in-depth analysis of what society is and... and uh, how to improve it, I think, yeah. in, in, in many ways. I uh, some of the big people are listening, Brown, Obama. Yeah. And they go, okay, what's Pilton want to say? Keep out of it. Unless it's an insect. <laughs> so it's uh, goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And from the little round-headed simian type thing we call Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, right. can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea. Okay, you can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you won't. Know. You won't. But you I want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors. Okay, we can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. And we're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What if you if you don't mind? We're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but what else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got the sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? I think I prefer Hair? No, because then I'd know it's not real. No, you no, would never know. It just, no, no, it just came know. back. Suzanne comes in one day and goes, why aren't you working? She goes, look, I, okay, I've left my job. Can we leave there? Why am I at work? I'm always going to be here, right? I've got a new tonic, right, from Boots. She pops it on your hair. Boop, baby gorilla. Yeah, I, d I, d I don't like this idea of suddenly Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think you need you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right. Right. Uh, in a minute, you're going to inject it in the head, you're going to go to sleep, you're going to be in a flow state, but you are going to suddenly leave this office and it's going to be a virtual world. You can do what you want. You can suddenly go, what was I hanging around with that bloke off the office for? I'm a, I'm a spy. You and you go to MI5 and they go, oh, thanks for coming in, Pilkerton. Um, listen, uh, uh, Drosky, um, he's, he's coming from Russia and um, he's got the... Bang, what do you do? What's your scenario? What do you do as a job? We've got munches, Suzanne's I, I never prefer, at work. I prefer what? to leave everything as it is. Brilliant. Go in right. it, go in it, but have everything the same so that I'm going, hang on a minute, 
has it actually happened? What are you talking about? No, you don't know about this. You don't know anything that's happened. No, because you've just said so you're gonna you're gonna put me in the tank and you you asking questions as to what no. I want when I get in it. No, yeah, no, no, but you no, won't know you're in the tank. Once you're in the tank, you won't know. You'll have a new life, a life that you've designed. Yes. You'd you have different memories if you wanted. You could be five again, or you could be now, but you did, weren't born no, in Manchester. I prefer it to be the same, with the same memories, but the difference is, when I next get British Gas round, they go, oh, I'm a Spilkinson. Yes, the- <laughs> oh my God! The so he'd like fixed. to have a major life, so his boiler's fixed! No, yeah, no, but So no, your no, boiler no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but you it gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler! You could be the perfect temperature well, all the time. Well, this anymore. I don't, I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change But you won't life. realise, it won't feel like change. Well, it's changed already. You're saying the boiler's been fixed like that. <laughs> I prefer to, to still have that problem go, hang on a minute, is this different? Uh, Suzanne's still going to work. Right. That's very important, <laughs> but, but then, you, you don't want her around right. all day. But then, <laughs> but then, things happen go that on. wouldn't have happened in this world. So then, right, okay, let's, right, let, let's see the differences. What do you do? Because I've got to program this. So you, you've got the same job, all that. Are we still around? Uh, yeah, because it's part I'm, of the I'm going to ask you a question now. Thing. Do I still squeeze your head every time I see you, rest you to the ground, and wind you up, try and stress you out, call you all hours? Uh, do I still do all that? What am I like? You, you, you're still the same and you still mm. do that, but maybe one day I go, don't do that anymore because it does annoy me. And you go, okay. And then well, I've dealt with it. I've sorted that problem as opposed to this machine, this tank deciding. Right. I don't like the idea of this tank right. making life good for me. Right. I want a few problems and if there's a problem I want to sort it. Okay. But. We've well, hit the nail on the head there. We're going to go back to this because it's fascinating, but Nozick concluded that no one would get into the tank because we'd rather have a real life with all its problems than a fake life. And I sort of think you've proved that by even getting into the tank with your provisos and scenarios. I mean, you've changed nothing except your boiler being fixed and me stop squeezing your head but now I'm and again. Which makes me think that you should have your boiler fixed. Mm. And then you will have the perfect life that you can imagine. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of, like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not, he's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got the problem hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got said a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I've fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just say, well, ask No, one, let, let him speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for- you, No, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole- Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yeah. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on, right. So it's better to have- you've got a problem hole in your head, right? Yeah. So you stuff in a problem into the problem hole. Okay, okay yeah, okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. Right. right. Is that good or bad? But that's not true, is The it? problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut up, Ricky! Let him uh, explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say, his problems are uh, not even problems. Well, how big is his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> Right, but why, Shut why, up! Let but, him but, speak! But, He's but, just okay. expanding on his idea! Why but do you what is his rushing? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little Skittles? Loads of problems. You, you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, that, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a ball. It's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball. No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me <laughs> ask. I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into and the bounce, problem bounce gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got has anyone got a pair of problem balls, <laughs> or is it always just? Because <laughs> ladies have a pair of problem balls. <laughs> no, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls? Is my question to you. But and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's, or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. 
So you right. could have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying it, okay. No, no, listen, suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, um, well, a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I've, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it, and I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole, and the, and 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 hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first? Is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right. He'd say, right. Take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish. He would put his hand." Or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he balls. Would. Wouldn't he? Well, 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 he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger in the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay. So, so Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> Okay, so in a roundabout way, back to Cogito Ergo Sum, I think therefore I am. Descartes, pondering, how do I know this isn't a dream? Well, he concluded he doesn't. When he took it further to, how do I know I even exist, he quite rightly concluded that, well, if I'm even pondering this question, I must exist. Whatever I am, wherever I am, the fact that I'm questioning, introspecting, thinking at all, I think, therefore I am. Because I'm even thinking, at least I know one thing, that I exist. That's all he said, Carl. I don't understand why he had so much time on his hands to be worrying about this. At the end of the day, get on with it. You're not doing shit all, Carl! <laughs> so why are you so annoyed at other people who aren't doing anything? I you're just going out in the morning, you're staring at worms, at bugs, you're staring at the sky, you're wondering what hasn't fallen on your head. You're making up, you're making up the books, that isn't researched. What do you mean making it up? What well, is it that you're doing? One of, the, one of the chapters in your book about travel was Australia, I've never been there myself. Forget it then, throw it away. No, cause you can still have You make up stuff about a grub eating a biscuit, we're all the same. Well, I mean, what is that? That's not, that's not, but... I laughed. Yeah. So it, so I enjoyed that book. Listen, everyone like me who that bought book that book- That book is absolutely pointless. It is in my lavatory, every time I pop in there for a shit, yeah. just take it off the shelf, have a little read. Yeah, Great but, fun. And I'm down to about four pages, <laughs> sometimes I forget to get bug roll. But listen, that is a fun book yeah, to wipe yeah, your ass with. It's a great book to wipe your ass with. But that book was good for me. I don't yeah. know if, if anyone enjoyed it, but I was emptying my worry hole. Is that another is that different to the problem hole you worry hole? It's next to it. <laughs> it's next Once a problem it. ball is being processed through the, the, the <laughs> hole, <laughs> is it dis, dis, is it deposited through the worry oh, hole? I, all I'm saying is you're right, I do watch a lot of insects and stuff. <laughs> and you never see them wasting time. They're oh. always doing something and ants carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it and it goes somewhere and comes back again. You think, does it know what it's doing? But at least it's trying. <laughs> what do you- Now, if there was a What big... is it doing though? What is that ant doing? Work. It's doing- it's building a house but or- what, what's the point? It's- everything it does is pointless. How can you say that? It's pointless. I'll it's tell just... you what, if, if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world and they went, right, let's look at the human race and, well, they'd look at the ants first and they go, right, they've got their hands full, they're carrying big stuff, they try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them really, <laughs> they could do that w between three of them, but they don't, they're all grafting hard, then they go, right, hit the human button, they hit the human button, they watch the humans. The amount of people who are just sat about doing now, they read about Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen in London at 2am, so what? Okay. Do you get that? Well, it's, it's yeah. a, I mean, that sums up puns, isn't it? It's things that kids get in a cracker. I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then, what's an idiom? Uh, Is that a new word you made up? No, I think mean, Carl Pilkerton's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them, what are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That's some stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Okay, I'll just say one, uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer, he was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something, he's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know, and uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, what? I went, the worm has turned, you know, you've- Stupid saying, isn't it? No, t well, okay, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of right. all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, <laughs> why pick a worm? It's a bad- it's a- it's, it's the worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. But you're taking turning literally! 
This means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but, but Things are gonna be different now and I'm sick of it. Chameleon. No, but- Chameleon is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. <sighs> Chuck that in the sentence. There's, there's, there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life to. You're talking about something that's- it, it's blind, isn't it? It's blind, <laughs> it's deaf. Gay. It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's it's a weird thing to use. Something that its arse is more it does more than its head. <laughs> <laughs> that could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. We've talked about, about what art is, we've talked about painting, sculpture, we've talked about music briefly. We've talked about whistling over music to make it better. Um poetry. Uh a completely different type of art form. There, Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? I've never really been a, a fan of it. This is a surprise. I, I think it's, it's sort of, uh, it's alright for the person who's doing it, you know, you say that whistling is just for the whistler, but I think poetry is more like that because you, sometimes you read it and you're thinking, what's he going on about? It's always a bit, I don't know, it's sold in a bad light, it's a bit sort of, a bit gay, isn't it? Right. Okay. I mean, it depends what sort you're talking about, because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people- I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and- that can't be gay, they weren't gay, they were- they were writing to their sweetheart. I- well, I don't know his name, he might- might have been a bloke, I don't know, but- So is- was it- was it a sort of a- what sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick, sort of a- like No, it was- it was uh, well there's- there's- there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, and they're very moving, they're about, uh, you know, the, the, what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is- you know, we've been- we've been sold a- a lie here, you know, and they really- we started seeing war in a different light from- from- from their point of view in the trenches. Famously some of them died so soon after the- you know- But I prefer a the proper- poem. a proper letter. No sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. Okay, you so you'd, it, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce at Decorum S through the post, would you? You'd have just said, what are you trying to say, mate? Is- what's the weather like? When you're coming home? Did you get my socks? Well, yeah, sometimes life is a bit like that, and it? It's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's the, well. Then that th you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth. If you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and me fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay. So Harry. Oh, well, no, that's right. So when were you married? Uh, about nineteen uh, nineteen thirty-five. Nineteen thirty-five. Nineteen thirty-five. So uh, you've been married about four years, yeah. Harry. Why don't you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. You don't look like, okay. So what 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 did you see in Harry? What what, what did you, why did you like Harry? Was he? He just was like funny. Uh, butch. He wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it? In the war. No. And you. He took everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say, would said to you? Well, I, I I thought it was coming because a lot of uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up. Having did to you just go hug there. him and say don't go or something? No point, because that would have just made it tough for him. So. <laughs> What's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried written, after he went. You cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got. To, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. <laughs> he said. He said what he meant, didn't he? In the well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. fanny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, w w "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right now, the colonel he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, <laughs> because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. They sent a telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter. From uh, from Harry, after he's died. Yeah, right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead. So I get right. this letter with his handwriting on. I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah, it's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. He's had yeah. his handwriting. Yeah. Oh God, what's this? What's I open it. Yeah. And instead of saying things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know everything's grim. It's cold. I'm sick of it. There's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. 
Well, what, did you know- It's not in his words. Poems are never in the- in the person's words. But did you know how he was a poet when you married him and made love to him no, that I night? No, picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he- he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he- didn't he say any- didn't he ever- so he, he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical right head. No, he wasn't no. Right, straight <laughs> to the point. He was like, get your knickers off. <laughs> I've ever heard! I've heard a fucking- What the fuck was the telegram coming before the letter? So specific! It wasn't like Harry the fuck's Harry! <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh god! There are a few things gayer than poetry though. I wanna- oh. I wanna uh, throw one into the pot. The Continental Breakfast. Oh. The Continental Breakfast. Yeah. That annoys me when I see it. Who orders that? If you've got the choice of eggs, beans, burger, Sausage. chips, uh, sausages, Bacon. all that, you've paid for it already. If I was a waiter and somebody said, uh, what do you want for breakfast, mate? And the bloke went, oh, I just have a little bit of grapefruit juice and a croissant. I go, do you? Do you want some cum on that? Or yeah. you can go back to the hotel and suck a cock. Yeah. So, no, I'm, uh, I'm with you there. What else is, um, what else is gayer than poetry? I remember when I was at school once, right? Uh, the worst thing you could be growing up was gay. Yeah. In school. It was the wor- it was the worst thing. It was the, the, you know. And, um, I remember I was about 14, 15, I was talking to this bloke, I talk about him on my stand-up, um, David Beasley. He's the one that said if you get captured by cannibals, they show you pornographic pictures when you're in the pot, so you get an erection and there's more meat yeah. to go around. So he, he was a, he was an idiot. He made Carl look smart. Wow. Really. Wow. Um, and, uh, he said, you know that thing that uh, kids always do, what would you rather be, blind or deaf? Yeah. We did that and we discussed that for a while and he went, what would you rather be, blind or queer? Mm. And I went, well, I'd rather be gay, cos... Still got all your sights, yeah. And he, he went, oh, would ya? I went, well, yeah, well, ra- rather than be blind. I said, yeah, I, I said, also, if you were gay, You'd like being gay. He went, I wouldn't. <laughs> I went, no, you would. I said, if you were gay, you would like being gay. He went, I wouldn't, Gervais. Sounds like you would. I went, well, if I was gay, I would like being gay. He went, well, I wouldn't. And he looked at me accusingly, and I went, no, nor would I, but gays would. Which made no sense at all. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, the idea. Yeah, yeah. But this is just like such, such a stonewall uh, 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 that, that I'd rather be anything than gay. Yeah. Carl, thoughts? Blind or gay? This is about art, is it? So there you have it. Our comprehensive and definitive guide to the arts. Next in this series is philosophy. Well, I'm looking forward to that one enormously, Rick, because of course you have a honours degree from the University of London in philosophy. Yes, but I predict that that one will also be as big a load of bollocks as all the others we've done. Thank you. Just to remind you that you can still get the Ricky Gervais Guide to Medicine, the Ricky Gervais Guide to Natural History, and now of course the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Arts. And that's, it's like how you enjoy, you know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than- Well that doesn't make sense, that goes c- totally counter to your argument. No, cause it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first one's really so your favourite. No, so hold on. on, so if you were to have one munchie, I'll go as a munchie mate, you no. go, I'm not gonna take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um. But what is- Well no, I'd like to have them all please. What, no, no, you can't have them all, don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie, have the first munchie, there but you I'm go. I'm gonna have one and I'm, I'm gonna get a taste for them and I, I'll probably want another. Well no, that, they're my munchies though, aren't they? Oh, I'll keep want... them then, forget it. Well, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to go, do you know what, I fancy a packet of them. But why do you, enjoy, <laughs> the la- okay, then why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry but not the second curry. But you know it's the last one. Because it's, no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about twelve in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <laughs> you shove the first four in! Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Yeah. Now, th- then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. Yeah. So, hold on though, you must enjoy 
a packet of munchies regularly then? Not as often as you think. Have well, I don't know. <laughs> well, not as often as I think. I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after a sort of maybe once a month. So every month you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies and the same experience. Yeah, you like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munchies once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um again, you you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for someone does feel better because you've got a you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. And the older I get, the the, the more sure I am of that. That working hard is itself the reward and I genuinely believe that but where does it end there's, there's no point having the struggle till you die and never get any happiness um, so w what's your balance we'd have to go into philosophical terms here what's your balance what's your yin and yang of a, of a, of a good life uh, and, and by good life, I mean one that you've enjoyed or, or, or been satisfied with, and one that you have no regrets or guilt or shame, and a bit of pride. What are you asking me? I, I, yeah, I've got a bit of all that. Right. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus. No, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is metaphorically, what what's the like, yeah, well, I'm, actually I'm using, named what revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well I'm telling you because it works in life. <laughs> go on then. But the revel you like is raisins? There. Go on. Well, well maybe if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, Do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, hold on, wait a minute. So, what are you saying? Where's this metaphor? Are you saying suddenly all the bad things in life are pretty good, actually, if you just well, get used to them? Sometimes, sometimes out of bad comes some good. Go on. At the end of the day, the uh, the revel mm. thing. What happens to the munch here? Oh uh, well, again, with life, if you have too much munches, you get sick of the munches. So move on, mix it up. What, what mixes it up? Bag of rebels. You've got a bit of everything in there. Right. So even the ones you don't like, you might like in the end, you'll go, do you know what? I was okay, wrong, lose, I was lose wrong the judging. analogy now. It actually just talking about rebels now, <laughs> in life. What about, what about, um, oh, what, can I, what has he enjoyed before? <laughs> what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? When I watched him fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most oh of the kids were. Oh God, it's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they look at it. They go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because. Whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One thing. Jesus. Just one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. <laughs> there is no, no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking no, but Pilkington. No, that doesn't work either, because like then well, I, not, told, Brett? Because I told okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? 
<laughs> Taking one of the big themes of philosophy further, um, why are we here, what's the point of life, what is it to be human, um, the ethical upshots of some of the technological and medical breakthroughs pose, you know, more of their own questions. Cloning, uh, is that is that a person that's saying, right, well, of course it is. Um, what about if you grow that for harvesting without the brain? Um, so, so growing kind of or uh, vital organs, yeah. presumably in a, in a laboratory. What about that, you know, uh, stem cell research? Is that, you know... I mean, there's, there's, there's weird things happening all the time with all this transplant stuff. Um, read about one who, uh, you know, a way of sort of, you're saying, oh, it's just a bit of meat. Yeah. You'll say no, it doesn't No, what matter. I meant, it, 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 organs can't have rights and feelings. No, but listen to this. Go on. So... It's gonna be bullshit. No. <laughs> no, 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 the, the, the senses went you, up. Would you like a small wager? <laughs> the senses went up when he said, right, listen to this. Okay, right. I'm gonna bet you five pounds, Rick, that this is not bullshit. Don't let me down, Carl. Okay, I'm gonna bet you, um, they found out it was the heart of a chimp and the bloke's selling like bananas. Okay. Uh, and the, doc the doctor bought it half price at a market. I've got faith in Carl. I don't think he's going to let me down here. Not when we're talking about philosophy. He's going to have done some careful research. Okay. Let's take a wager. Five pounds is coming my way. So, what happened is, do you know how like, people do uh, donor cards? Mm hmm So one fill one out saying, if I die, um, he can have my kidney. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, he died. He said, get the kidney out. He got the kidney out of him. Um, someone who needed a new kidney, they were like, over the moon, there's a new kidney on the way. Um, but this person who didn't, didn't, who needed the new kidney had a couple of things. Right. He, he wasn't very really good at driving. Yeah. And he couldn't stand yellow biscuits. Right. Couldn't stand yellow biscuits. Okay. He just didn't like them. There was okay. something, he didn't know why, he just okay. never liked them. Anyway, they pop it in, he's having his test done, he's in hospital for a couple of days. Goes home, goes, could do with a yellow biscuit. What's the fuck's a yellow biscuit? Just a- Banana baldies. What are you talking about? Just a yellow biscuit. Who, Call who it. decides? I, I like all biscuits except yellow ones. Where is this, uh, I'm just uh, supermarket? I'm Right, and, and well, I don't know why, I, would, I don't know what the colour of the biscuit's got necessarily got to do with it. It's like a phobia. It's right. an odd phobia. Oh, so he fears the combination of yellowness and biscuitiness. Right, so a bloke- He doesn't mind biscuits, I don't mind yellow. Don't ever put them together, that's my worst nightmare! <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'm confused as to who's got what, who's, okay. who's kidney. There's a bloke, a bloke's received a new kidney. He hated biscuits He's not very good at driving, he hates custard creams. Right, but now, suddenly, <laughs> after the hospital transport, the, uh, after the operation, <laughs> mm, 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 oh, mm, a really cream. fancy yellow biscuit. Yeah. Okay, does he go out for a drive at any point? He went driving. Right, he's going to be terrible. He loves driving. All over the road. What? 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 He, he loved driving. He liked driving all of a sudden. What? But he hated it. I know, but this is what's weird. It's bollocks. The kidney is a filter system. But, if you have something for long It's like getting a new tea strainer and suddenly liking yellow biscuits and driving. No. The kidney has no impact on anything. No. It's like how if you knock them out with someone, you pick up their little things that they do. Right. Suzanne kept saying to me, that's a nonsense. I said, stop saying that. You've suddenly picked that up from someone. I said, you've never said that before. And you've done it three times in about two days. <laughs> And it's the same thing, it's Jesus the same thing. Christ. Living with Carl. He doesn't like me saying nonsense. I don't know why. But, but let's be honest, if you're gonna live with Carl, you're gonna use the phrase, yeah. that's nonsense. You're gonna start coming lot. up with more and more bollocks, nonsense, <laughs> rubbish, shit. So you would so you see, you'd have someone else's cock and bollocks, but then you wouldn't donate yours to someone but else. What about this? What if you what if you discovered later, right, that the person who donated the cock and bollocks, right, was a sex pervert? <laughs> Was it was a homosexual sex pervert? I, I don't think though that I'd bother looking into the history of these cock and bollocks. You'd it's not like them. Uh, you know. You accept them willy nilly, but what <laughs> if what if you you just found out by that chance? That was his name. That was his name, willy nilly. That was his stage name. And what if come you on, out out by chance? chance? Yeah. How do I find out by chance? What's the scenario? They there? say well, the doctor goes. I should um, tell you, and I, I know you believe in a load of shit about yellow biscuits and bollocks like that, so I'll just tell you in case anything goes weird, this was a sex pervert's um, cock and bollocks, so uh, if you if you find that you're sticking these through letterboxes, don't worry, it's not your fault. It's where they wanted to have gone. That's, uh, would it concern you if you accepted the cock and bollocks that had a past like that? 
Yeah, because the problem is, it wouldn't be that bad if I had his eyes. Right. <laughs> Why? Because then I'm seeing what he wants to see and- That doesn't make any it. sense at all, but, Carl, but unfortunately, it makes no though. sense at all. You, you, the match is wrong. The eyes don't go with the cock and bollocks anymore. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, something's gonna lose out here. Either the, the, the cock and bollocks, they're not gonna get what they want anymore, or the eyes are gonna be upset. <laughs> so are you scared of the idea, to go back to your yellow biscuit analogy, that the, the cock and bollocks you inherit, that whatever the previous owner did with them- Lives on. Bollocks. That scares you, does it? Okay, there's one final scenario here, Carl. Okay. You've, uh, you haven't opted out, so your, your organs go to where they like. Now, unbeknownst to you, uh, there's a big way in this, there's a thing, they've got, they've got all your details and you said, yeah, whatever, I don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know, would you, after you die, where it goes. You say, I don't, because you've said, you don't want to know. If you don't know, you have a lovely life. When you die, they can go anywhere. They can do what they will, okay? Now, unbeknownst to you, they have got it down. They've donated your ass, right, for use, um, to a gay rapist with AIDS, okay? So they are, they are saving a life there. So when you die, they go, right, we're gonna, it's still warm. Get that gay rapist with AIDS around here, because that's gonna stop him raping someone, give him AIDS. He comes round, he's straight up there. He's shagging you, right? It's, it, you're, you're basically saving a life, right? We're letting him die. Right? Sorry, okay. sorry, I'm confused here. What? Why is the gay rapist with AIDS Got the arse. What's no, he's, he no he's, he's, he's still connected to Carl. They've donated the arse, so when when Carl dies, the doctors go, right, we're gonna stop a, a terrible thing here. So the gay rapist can, can shag the yeah, arse? Yeah, so he shags, comes round, he shags Carl, gets out of his system and goes, phew, that stopped me. Yeah. Right? Okay? Right, so- So it's just Carl's disembodied arse on the- No, 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 it's the whole, it's the whole Carl. Oh, they exactly. go, yeah. Carl's so, dead. So they Carl, they Carl gets drunk and he's having a heart attack, they go, free, <laughs> clear, <laughs> they go, no, we've lost him. At 10.01, they go, oh, he's a arse donor. And they go, okay, get the, where's the nearest gay rapist with AIDS live? Next door, get him round here. They go, okay, the, the gay rapist comes round and goes, where is he? Right? He goes, there he is, right? So Carl is face down. Now they turn around, they go, there, there's the arse, you've got 10 minutes, then we got to bury him. I'm surprised you didn't know this guy was living next door. <laughs> right, right. So, the gay rapist gets on top, he goes, right, this is lovely, right? He's loving it, he's shagging you up. Right, now, this is the weird thing. The doctors next door, they go, okay, the gay rapist will be finished soon, um, and then we have to bury him, but we should inform his next of kin, they go, oh, it's Suzanne. They go, um, your husband's, uh, uh, Daddy's avatar. She goes, oh my god, you come round and just identify the body. Um, uh, I'd leave it a couple of minutes, but um, then, <laughs> then come round. She goes, oh god, I'll be right there. So Suzanne's on her way, the gay rapist, right? He's, he's pummeling you away, right? But, you will not believe this. Oh my god. The movement and the way he's shagging you, right, has started, started your heart. <laughs> oh, wow. right, right? This is a stroke of amazing good <laughs> yeah, fortune. right? So you go, oh, um, he goes, ah, oh, right? He, right, has a heart attack, <laughs> right? And he flops down on you. He just like Ed butts the back of your head. So now, you're both naked, this gay rapist is up your ass, he's dead, right? The shock is a, you go, fuck me, how can I get out of this, right? You wriggle, you fall onto the floor. So now, he's on the bottom, face up, you're on top of him, he's still in you. His cock is up your ass, you're sat on him, wriggling, Suzanne walks in, goes, Carl, what the fuck are you doing? She's heard about me being dead, and she, because she's come to yeah, the hospital. She, yeah, yeah, she goes, and they go, he's in there, and she goes, he's not dead, I can see him. They go, oh, because it's been terrible. She bursts in, there you are, on top of him, wriggling to try and get his knob out of your ass, right? You're sitting on a, a man who's dead. What do you say? I, I just say you got a giant booper. It's very hard, isn't it, to imagine yourself at uh, a different period in time and how you would have reacted. Now, if you think about America in the 1950s, black people still very much second-class citizens. You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident in which um, she was obliged mm -hmm. to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it. Became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, and am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> 
So once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus. You've still got a number of stops. You live further away than Rosa does because you've got a lovely big house where she shouldn't have a lovely place. She can't afford it. So you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this now. You've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Maybe you've got on that bus as a privileged white man and she refuses to get up on your behalf. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. But why would you say that? Because you're thinking of the modern day car, you're not thinking of the man from the 1950s. Well, we don't, well, well the thing is, well, we don't have to, we don't have to go back in time. Or, uh, we can go to a country now where you'd see an injustice, where you were outnumbered by the law of the land. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the, to the shopping centre. We're only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you because there's no one sat next to you down there. I'm a bit crammed in up here because there's more blokes on the bus. <laughs> See you in a minute. It's not a big issue. I've done it on the train. Well, I've booked tickets and they've ended up being different tickets. And I'll go, oh, I'll see you in an hour and a half. I've got an iPod. But it's so you went first class and but she that's, was in, that's, in the But that's pod. luck. That's, that's luck. That's circumstance. One is, one is policy. Surely you can distinguish the difference between a principle and a bit of luck. Uh, but it's what you get used to at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not walking past them slapping them on the back of the head. I'm getting on and it's just that's where they sit, that's where we sit. Like men and women sit going into a separate toilet. Carl, let's put this to, to, I mean, obviously this is too much for your head to, you're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people and they're- I'm the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go, if I'm driving, I'd go, let's, lads, stop that, will you? If you're gonna be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day, it's the end of the day, we just all want to go home. We've all been working. Uh, he's not in your way, he's sat in his own seat, sit back, calm down, had enough. But, but what if they said, no, we want, we usually sit there, we want that seat? Would you think either black kid's a troublemaker? Or just, you, you, would you go, come on, just move, mate, it'd be peaceful. I'd, I'd go, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to move so this is calmed down? Or no, 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 you shouldn't say that. He doesn't, he, he doesn't matter if he wants to move or not. It's his right, right. not to move. Do what you want, then. If you want to stay there and fight your own No, 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 no. he again. wants to stay there, don't you have, uh, surely you come, surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here, I'm sat <laughs> driving a bus, I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here, I'm getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. think bigger than the bus rule, it's not just a bus thing, right, just imagine that you're not a bus driver. <laughs> Alright, No, but that's bigger. what we're talking about here. But yes, but uh, Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, he, no, well, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying what about you Rosie, full story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she's sat on the bus. <laughs> How did it work? She's got on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. The middle section of the bus, uh, what, black people could sit there, but it was, uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit, depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, some more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well no, actually this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Right. And she decided, no, I'm not gonna get up, it's my right to be able to sit on this bus, as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white, and that was why she got arrested. Well, she lost in the end, didn't she? What do you mean she lost in the end? There's a black president. Yeah, but it's not because of her getting on a bus. That's Ooh. just because times change. Yes, in a way well, it is. I don't know. Because it she is. became a spearhead of the civil rights movement that was we spearheaded by D Martin Luther King. But all those little things go towards change. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, of, uh, who's, who's been in a right mood, might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. So she's, so she's pissed up, she's she's pissed up now. No, no, no the person the sat next bee. to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke. 
He's been working hard, and he's like, I don't want this. But it's interesting you say the that. The bus pulls over, the Be police are called but in. But you say, this, it's interesting you say that, because in the, in the Rosa Parks incident, there were a number of other black men, all of whom did stand up. I think five of them were there, and four of them stood up, and she stayed sat down. So there was four people there who did choose the easier route, the easier life, and she stayed sat down, and she's the one who went to prison, and she's the one who's remembered, because of what she did on that day. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up, you know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause, or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now that's fine, you'll always get people who do what they want, and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand up, this is, this is the day I'm gonna do it. It's just happened to, she was fed up that day, she didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law breaking all the time, and she's remembered now because she's she made a change about bus seats. But when she got up that morning, did she say I'm going to do that, or has she been fly tipping before she got on the bus? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Is she just is she just a, a no, you know? A, no, she's not a troublemaker. She's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights. I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's, C yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't realise I had to- I didn't realise it would be this difficult. <laughs> Rounded in full, you've picked that from someone, st you've used that 200 times in the last three minutes. Head like a fucking orange. Stupid fucking bald cunt, where'd you get that from, Suzanne? You've said it three times just to breakfast. Fucking breakfast. hell, dim-witted half- <laughs> <laughs> Steve, five quid, yep. A big question, particularly in the, the area of, um, philosophy of the mind, is what is intelligence? It's just, it, it, it's what you know, isn't it? Well, that's knowledge, isn't it, really? Yeah, but it's a, it's a form of knowledge, intelligence. No, I don't think it is. Why not? Because intelligence, really, is everything from the ability to retain knowledge, to understand it, to apply. It's probably a little bit like the difference between how fast a computer is and how good the program on that computer is. It's no good. I'd say I've got a brain that mm. that can it can work stuff out. Mm. Um, but sometimes, if if I tell it too much, it can't remember all of it. Now, if I had a brain that had loads of memory space, yeah, tell me as much as you want. Well, that that's important. That's and important. You keep to it. But yeah, but that some people say that's what intelligence is, isn't it? Memory. It's no good saying he's he's brilliant. He learns ten thousand facts a day. Really? Yeah, he forgets them the next day. Yeah. Well, right. that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but but what good is that? Trivia is nothing. To uh, it no, doesn't it's show good. intelligence. It's good, it's it doesn't. Good for chat. It's good for chat. And it when you're out and about, if you meet a stranger, mm. it's good to drop something in, like you know, go on. Uh What would you drop in? To show you're intelligent. Well, just to, just to meet, you've just met me at the bus stop, you think, he's a nice fella. Steve, Steve's at the bus stop, there he is, he's there, he's got his, he's got his little duffel coat on, his little scarf, his file, he's, he's got his little glasses, yeah. they're a little bit muddied up where some, some ruffians are like thrown mud at him, and, he, and I've seen this, and he's, he's cried and he's shat himself. Well, that's not true. Yeah, and he's run to the bus stop to go home to his mum. That's okay? not true at all. So at the bus stop, there he is, you come along, you go, oh, who's this nerd who shat himself? <laughs> that right? would never happen. It would never happen. Right, and you, you I just fought that I never had a fight with him. <laughs> yeah, and you go, okay, he's obviously intellectual. Look at him, and he's gone, and he's looked at you, and he's gone, Jesus Christ, you look thick. Mm -hmm. Prove him wrong. No, what I'd do. I, go on. There's no point just having one fact. Right. I'd wait for him to start a topic, and I'd show my intelligence by having a fact on the topic he's brought up. Okay. Because we can all have one topic. Yeah. That you go, uh, oh, I'll show this off, and then, you know, someone goes, oh, has he been talking to you about the peanut fact again? And yeah. you know, he's obviously telling everyone, then it's just sure. a boring answer. Okay, so I might just say to you, you know, what are your views on mathematics? i just say the thing with numbers is, there's, there's, there's loads of them. I remember I told you an interesting fact, once again, to try and explain, um, infinity to you, and I told you this, there are as many even numbers as even and odd numbers put together. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's, I, I think I've said before that I don't think things like that are impressive because numbers are man-made anyway. Right. 
if you were talking about like when you mentioned about um, mm. there's there's more insects we don't know about than what we do, right. then you're going oh where are they? <laughs> where are they hiding? It okay. leaves a question. The well, fact that there's loads of numbers, it's like yeah, but at the same time, you could you could rule numbers out of your life if you wanted to. Really? You could live a life. Do you really think that? Difficult. Yeah, you could. There's, there's tribes. There's tribes in the Amazon. Yeah, but they're not they're getting their counted. food from Sainsbury's, are they? No, they, they, they count to three. They don't need any more numbers than three. And they just have three because they go, uh, one, they know what one is, they go, let, pass us one of them. And <laughs> they have one of them. What do you mean? Anything what over, you anything what over they three, yeah. they just say, well, you're being greedy. <laughs> so they don't need it. But what if they've got five <laughs> children? How many kids you've got when you're living in a place like that, mm. it doesn't matter. Mm. It's not about you're just part of the tribe. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Right, where is this tribe that only counts to three? It's somewhere like the Amazon or something. Really? And they, they, there's no more numbers than three. They mm -hmm. don't need it. Anything more than three, they just say, I'll have more. Right. Or give us another three. But give they us another three? To, well, yeah. Yeah. Or another one, or another two. But what if they need 200? That's complicated, isn't it? Well, you just keep going, give us three, and then... Just keep this is a slow three. way of doing it. They've got no else to do, they're living in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm at the bus stop. Um, oh, where's your bus? <laughs> <laughs> so far, you've told me nothing about maths whatsoever. So you're concluding that he is dim. Fucking idiot. When I was on holiday recently. Yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. um, I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh, yeah. Which is always sort tell, of... Tell, tell sign. It's, it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And... Um, the uh, red jeans are twice as much, sir. That's okay, I've got money. Yeah, it's sort of... It's either that colour or yellow. But you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think, yeah, he's got a few. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir. But they're the most expensive ones. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, can I just see your your bank account first? There is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, all right, sir. Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about. Ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Um, so he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his, his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and okay. he just went over well, and struck up a conversation. I don't know. Why did you notice his, what um, kind of the crotch area was? What? Why did you notice what you were looking the, at the arse I, I can see why you can see if you're looking at his face, you can see a white shirt. But why did you see you what colour this is what the I'm telling fabric you. around his this testicles were? You saw a good looking old man sat at the bar, you went out and bought him a drink. Right. Yeah. You oh, saw, I was you waiting noticed for the barbecue to open. Right. right. Okay. And you noticed a man's early. so you <laughs> noticed a man's night in the morning. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I don't like late nights on holiday. Okay. Jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, you're so noticing wait people, you're minutes. noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but get what your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. You what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. his, his reference points, I had no idea and what, what was he was he talking about. about? He was talking about how he was in some Cuban war, he told me about how he'd met President Reagan, he told me something about how he'd, he'd cut up a cow once, he was, uh, <laughs> and so, and, <laughs> and, and, this bloke, yeah, I think he's an maniac it's, it's who had spilled blood on his trousers <laughs> yeah. whilst hacking up his dead wife, he's gone insane, he's jithering and chatting away, claiming he owns a cruise ship. He, he told me he spent 36 grand on furniture. And when I sort of looked at him like, what are you buying? And he's going, oh, well, I needed a couple of shade lounges. And it, it was just, there was nothing I could relate to. <laughs> shade lounges? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't she in a TV series? I don't understand why you have no interest in either being in a Cuban war, 
having met Ronald Reagan, because why is that not interesting? Why because no I, didn't know, I don't know why the trousers would <laughs> m much more appealing to you. If someone was telling me, I, you, when, I was in a war. I met I Che Guevara, a, uh, Fidel Castro, Fidel Castro, and then why are you looking at my packet? So that's that's my point. It's just what's that, your point that you can have a chat with a fella just like I'm talking to the geek at the bus stop. <laughs> Even sometimes, pointed. sometimes what? you can't you can't take part. What what am I meant to say about him meeting Reagan? What am I meant to say about him being? Why are you just to ask him asking questions about he was in a war? When I sort of took it back to, oh, I wonder what what meat they're doing at the barbecue. <laughs> he wasn't bothered. <laughs> yeah, he loved the fact that that's your contribution. He's talking about the missile crisis, and you're going. Oh, he's met what? presidents and yeah. important people. He's experienced extraordinary you things, see, which would be fascinating to anyone. And you. You're not interested, you just want to know whether there's a but, but I mean, there, there it is, you see. He's come down, he's looked at you without prejudice and thought, I don't know this guy. The language barrier probably saved you. And he thought, he's probably a smart guy, I'll tell him a bit of my life. Why is he looking at my Why is he looking at my meat and two veg? You know, like the barbecue, you don't need the barbecue, it's a lovely little fucking sausage here. When but, you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it... Above the waist. Keep it, uh Looking at his bollocks. Keep it erect. <laughs> oh, because I made Carl laugh. <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, the in-depth study of the mother of science, the Ricky Gervais Guide to Philosophy. You can still enjoy the back catalogue of these guides, medicine natural history and the arts and seasons one to five of the Ricky Gervais show. Over the last few years with all our explorations, our studies, what have you learnt? What's the one big thing you've learnt since we've been doing this, since you've met myself and, and Stephen, since we've been prodding you, since we've treated you like, like an ape that we want to teach to speak? What have you learnt about yourself? and the world. One thing, if you had to take it with you. I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've learned anything that, that substantial. Ever? During all this. There's not been anything groundbreaking, has there? We've chatted about midgets with no arms and legs. Gay ones. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever crop up again in the chat. So even if, even if I've learned something from it, I don't think I'll ever crop up again. <laughs> So, it's no use. That's what I'm saying to you about information and intelligence. It's if you can use it. It's so, you're saying this series of audiobooks at a price of £1.95 is absolutely worthless and pointless. Yes, yeah, well, it is, yeah. Thanks. Good night. Testing. Testing. <coughs> this is almost the environment more than. It is the really, earth, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. Have we already publicised it as the Earth? Uh, well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, but that's fine. The Earth. Why is we it called the Earth? Well, no, we talked about what? I said, what do you mean? Why is it called the Earth? You mean why is the Earth called the Earth? It's why just Mars something I never Mars? say. I never say Earth. I always say world. Well, it depends. It's not called the world, is it? Because a world is it's relative. Mars is a world. It's it's the world because it's our world, but there are many worlds, aren't there? You, know, you could say the world of something. You couldn't say the Earth of something. The Earth is the name of the planet. But when do we need that? What? When do we need to say the Earth? When we're referring to the Earth. When does that ever happen? Well, for instance, <laughs> right now, when we're talking about the Earth, being that this is the name if of I, this, if I was this book. To distinguish it from other planets. If I was in, I know, but when's that ever going to be a problem for me? What? Well, it's not what it's not all about you. If I was in a rocket, yeah, right here we go. I'm sat at the front. <laughs> sat I look in the front. Sat the front. He's got a good seat. Yeah. The pilot goes, Carl, come up here, mate. <laughs> and I look in the mirror and I see mirror, a mirror in the rocket. Mirror, check, reverse, <laughs> indicate. Uh, Brilliant. And I see the world. I'd say, look, oh, don't the world look magnificent? You go, what do you mean? Yeah. Then? Yeah, that's how I'd say it. I wouldn't say Earth. I wouldn't dream of using the word Earth. But then you're in a div- you, you could say, well, this is our world now, for the next year. This is our world, this spaceship. I'd say, no, not really. It I'll is, always be mate. looking back <laughs> over there. I'm looking at, there's our world, there's our, there's England, there. Not anymore, mate. We're moving to Mars.
We're going to start a whole new world. Oh, which world are you talking about, Carl? Let's call it the Earth and Mars, like we always have, you dopey cunt. It is the really, Earth, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. We already publicised it as the Earth. Uh, well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, but that's fine, the Earth. Why is it we called the Earth? Well, no, we talked about- what? I said- what do you mean, why is it called the Earth? You mean, why is the Earth called the Earth? It's why just something I never Mars? say, I never say Earth, I always say world. Well, it depends. It's not called the world, is it? Because a world is- it's relative. Mars is a world. It's- it's the world because it's our world. But there are many worlds, aren't there? You, you could say the world of something, you couldn't say the Earth of something. The Earth is the name of the planet. But when do we need that? What? When do we need to say the Earth? When we're referring to the Earth. When does that ever happen? Well, for instance, right, right now, when we're talking about the Earth, being that this is the name if of the if if book. book. To distinguish it from other planets. If I was in, I know, but when's that ever going to be a problem for me? What? Well, it's not. What? It's not all about you. If I was in a rocket. Yeah. Right. Here we go. I'm sat at the front. <laughs> sat I look at in the front. Sat at the He's front. got a good seat. Yeah. The pilot goes, "Carl, come up here, mate." <laughs> and I look in the mirror and I see mirror. A mirror in the rocket. Mirror. Check, reverse, <laughs> indicate, um, brilliant. And I see the world, I'd say, look, oh, don't the world look magnificent? You go, what do you mean? Yeah. Then? Yeah, that's how I'd say it. I wouldn't say Earth. I wouldn't dream of using the word Earth. But then you're in a div you're, you could say, well, this is our world now, for the next year, this is our world, this spaceship. I'd say, no, not really. It I'll is, always mate. be looking back <laughs> over there, I'm looking at, there's our world, there's our, there's England there. Not anymore, mate. We're moving to Mars. We're gonna start a whole new world. Oh, which world are you talking about, Carl? Let's call it the Earth and Mars, like we always have, you dopey gun. That's the name of this planet but we're on. that's what I'm saying, though. It's, it's not our problem. We're never gonna leave it. So it's our world. So leave it as world. It's a bit of information. You don't write so-and-so road, London, England, Earth. You don't need it. <laughs> what other words are you annoyed by? Other words are out there, you're thinking, oh, why is that there? Because we do not need it. It's one of them where I come across something. They're not always in my head. It's just I'm trying to think of something that I've seen recently. That's a word. I'll say I some mean, words, Carl. You tell me whether you like them or not. Okay? Yeah. Um, root. What sort of root are we talking about? Good question. Uh, what about um, a, a, a pre-planned journey? No, I don't need it. You just go. Which way are you going? I thought you meant beetroot. <laughs> That's all right. What you like? You don't mind beetroot? Depends what I'm having. He <laughs> 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 doesn't mean the food. He means you don't mind the word existing. <laughs> this is because you have such a limited vocabulary that it annoys you and intimidates you that people are using words, pro correct words, the correct English language. Probably. Are you happy with chair? Should we keep chair? It's, it works. It's fine. Are you happy with the chair you sit on, or the chair who's in charge of like a forum or a meeting? What would we call a bloke who's in charge of a meeting? Chief. Chief? Okay, <laughs> what about, um, bloke who's in charge, uh, 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 of, of a group Native of Americans. Native Americans? I don't know any. Again, <laughs> not gonna affect my life. No, but what would you call him? He's a bloke who's in charge of the, all the Indian- all, all the- Seriously, all the... not- not a problem yes, to me. it's a problem for someone. So yeah. you've got to have a word for head it. Head chief. Head <laughs> chief. Oh, oh, so he's, um, that means he's the bloke in charge of people who are in charge of meetings. <laughs> That's confused. No, got, I'm confused. Right? Yeah, I don't know I'm you're confused. About, actually, I'm confused here. I mean, some words I know you're not happy with. There are certain numbers you're not keen on. What about number seven? You, would you get rid of that? I've heard about that tribe where the where it is just like they have three. They say that's all they need in their life. One, two, three. Really? Yeah, give us three of them, and then actually gives them another two with them three. It's all like just <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> they're still saying they're talking like that. <laughs> still down the market. Yeah. Uh, we should have a word for this three and this two. <laughs> nah, fuck it. I, I very rarely want three then two. <laughs> Keep it three then two. How many do you need now? Uh, just one and another one. We'll say two. Oh yeah, I could say two, yeah. Uh, do you want one more? If I wanted three, I'd say three. Do you want one more? Yeah, go on, give us three and one. <laughs> As the writer and pioneering ecologist Rachel Carson once wrote, those who dwell among the beauties and mysteries of the earth are never alone or weary of life. Earth, third rock from the sun, and the only known planet in the universe to accommodate life was formed about five billion years ago. Extensively covered by salt water oceans, it supports a myriad of organisms, the most evolved of which is man. Yet how we humans interact with our world could be sowing the seeds of our own destruction. With environmental concerns still high on the political agenda, what is the future of life on earth? 
How are we coping with the threat of global warming and is our newfound ecological concern too little too late? To discuss the past, present and future of the Earth, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Oh, look at his round head, the car! All right. I've been hit by global warming recently, Rick, a couple of times, actually. Go on. I don't want to be one of those people that's like, oh, you know, because of the snow and the rain, and that's obviously to do with global warming, but it probably is. Uh, I was flying out to the States, you know, just hopping over stateside. Yeah. And, um, on the old plane, uh, it was one of those bleak, kind of snowy days recently. They got us all on the plane, we sat on the runway for four and a half hours, right. four and a half hours, while they de-iced the plane. Now, it's good that they de-iced it. But I don't want to be told that the plane needs de-icing. I didn't know planes could get iced in a way that they needed to be de-iced. When I, sometimes, Rick, if I, if it's a chilly morning, right, got the old car, what I'll do is I'll pop the engine on, yeah. okay, let it warm up, yeah. pop inside another cup of tea, come back yeah. out, it's lovely and warm and toasty in there. That's yeah. what I like to have seen them do with the old the plane. Pilot. Yeah. The pilot goes, don't you get on yet, let me, let <laughs> exactly. me work let around me warm the block. Up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But also, when it's up at 30,000 feet, it's like minus 50, well, 60 it. degrees. This must get iced up anyway. So There's not some guy on the wing scraping with all those little plastic <laughs> things. <laughs> you don't see if you've oh, got we a window seat. We've got to put in here. We've got to put <laughs> yeah. in here for a while. It's iced up. Yeah, I, I mean, that's it. But also, I didn't see anyone de icing, so I don't know how they do it. It's not presumably with, you know, um, like I sometimes use a CD case if I haven't got one of those scrapers. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, mean, I don't know yeah. if there was people with, uh, you know, probably with a vinyl record scraping away, but um, yeah, four and a half hours to de ice it. Bunch of people on there whinging and phoning and calling and making and making me annoyed anyway. Get to uh, Los Angeles, City of Angels, famously, you know, glorious weather all year round. That's why people move there. Mm. Pissed down with rain the entire time I was there. I know you hit the storm. I I, I think I moved out of LA and went to New York the day before it turned horrible, didn't I? The problem was I hired a car, mm. right, and I was going to get a relatively cheap. Uh, car, they persuaded me to upgrade to a Mercedes convertible. I thought, yeah, I'll look good fl driving around LA, yeah. you know, and that. Couldn't use the, uh, the top down, obviously. Every day I'd get in this car, every day it would be pouring with rain. I could hear it splattering on the, uh, fabric roof, thinking, I just paid no the odds for this. And, you know, every time there'd be a break in this cloud, I would instantly stop <laughs> and lower this <laughs> thing and drive around sub-zero temperatures just to have the top down. I would like to Even have seen though it's still you, cloudy and grim. Like, uh, you know, uh, 85 degrees, just whizzing down the freeway at night. 90 miles an hour, yeah. but your glasses would fly off. They would. You? This is the problem. It's, I've never really <laughs> thought. Plus, I um, I lost my sunglasses, <laughs> so um, I have to wear a hat <laughs> in order to keep the sun out of my eyes. And um, all I all I had, well, I thought I need to take out of me. All I had was a kind of what I like to think is a rather fashionable Justin Timberlake style trilby. Oh, it's not that but hat that makes you look like one of Bill and Ben. See, I think ben. it makes me look like a uh, like Tom Waits or a sort of 1960s news reporter. All oh, right, but you. <laughs> makes I thought me Bill and Ben. Yeah, you thought I thought and the flower pot, man. The problem with it is, is when I bought it, I, again, I was suckered into it. A bloke sold it to me, told me. He was a street vendor and he told me I looked amazing in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I got I gave him the cash did, straight away. Did you have a game of find the lady with I, him as well? I'm beginning to wonder if that was part of his sales pattern <laughs> and he wasn't just a lovely fellow who's trying to help me out. But yeah, it's not quite big enough, so instead of sort of pulling in tight down by the ears, it sort right. of sits pork pie-esque on top of my head. Right. And it is in danger of flying off. It did fly off into the back seat when I was driving. Luckily, I, I could stop and pop it back on again. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great! It, it didn't fly off and, uh, in, you know, you don't want that as you're cruising past a couple of sort of playboy bunny types in an open top. Cadillac and you're just grinning to them and your hat flies off. Or it, or it hits um, a big Al's angel on a chopper behind <laughs> you course, in the yeah. face. He's, yeah, he's he scratched his bike, you stop and you yeah. go, it's my hat. Yeah. And he goes, is it? <laughs> exactly. What annoyed me was uh, we went, I was with my mates and we were driving around and we had a bunch of friends and uh, they said, oh, can you pick up a couple of friends of ours? And we picked them up, a couple of girls. I thought, oh, ding dong, here we are. Good looking girls. They got in the car. Instantly they were going, there's not much leg room. I was thinking, for God's sake, it's a bloody Mercedes! <laughs> I couldn't, I, I couldn't even impress them with it, it's costing me fortune! <laughs> I thought they'd go, this is a lovely bit of motor, but no, wind and screw, I never met before! First thing oh. they say. Yeah, see, now my image of an Englishman is, is essentially that cliched one. It is, I think, f Hugh Grant. So you're modern, you're straight well, away modern or now. I would say, it's either mixed between Hugh Grant and Roger Moore when he was James Bond. You see, you know that's I mean? another that's another small percentage of I Englishness that sort of annoys me. Those people that think they're James Bond, they think they can buy a suit and read GQ, and they're suave and sophisticated, and they get cars they can't afford. Or what they basically do, the people who think they're James Bond, all they do is work in a bank, come home, 
and flick through GQ at the adverts looking at people in- with wearing watches and aftershave. Who wears aftershave? Do you wear aftershave, Carl? Um, normally it's- it, aftershave is the sort of thing I let other people buy me. It's like underpants. Underpants, tea towels and sort of aftershave <laughs> and that. Other people buying me. Who's buying you tea towels? My mum. Right, and okay. Every time she turns up she's got Brilla pads and stuff. <laughs> I've got loads of them. <laughs> I keep saying to her, I don't need any of this, but she always brings a box full of stuff. Billa pads, tea towels, underpants. The underpants size hasn't gone up since I was 14. <laughs> but that's, I can rely on her for that. So do you not have anything in your life which you would think of as being gentlemanly? Do you ever dress smartly? What about suits? I bought one suit that time when you invited me to the BAFTAs. That's the only suit. I wore it for the BAFTAs. I think I wore it for one other thing. I haven't wore it since. I don't like- I don't feel comfortable, it's not me. But don't you go to a wedding? That'd be a lovely advert, wouldn't it? Him with a suit on going, I haven't wore it since. <laughs> Carl Pilkington hasn't wore it since. <laughs> I don't go to, be to a wedding. No, I don't like going to them. I agree. I mean, even though you know them, they don't give you any time when you're there, do they? They just sort of- they don't know whether you're there or not. They're on cloud nine. They don't know who's around. It yeah. doesn't matter, you don't need it's to all, be there. With them, when I'm wedding day, it's all me, 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 isn't it? <laughs> oh, what are they like? I know, it's unbelievable. Bit, you don't even get to make a speech, do you? Although I know you were annoyed, Steve. Steve doesn't like to part with money. I, I mean, I'm not- I'm, I don't know what the politically correct term is. Stingy cunt, isn't he? Mm. He's fucking mean, right? <laughs> and, uh, if he ever has to spend out on, like, a wedding gift to someone he's known, you know, all his life, um, he look down the list and he'll find things- things under 25 pounds. Then if he- if he bothers spending that much, he's furious when someone- an usher goes, just stick it there. Oh, it drives me insane. You spe- well, firstly, oh, I, I'm annoyed about the wedding list. I don't know when that's come along because I don't know why I can't just bring- maybe something I've made at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> why has there got to be a list of stuff? What bride- what newly married bride doesn't want a pair of homemade clogs? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And then you arrive there and it's just, oh, thanks very much, stick it on the table. Uh, well, but the saying that, I think people very much appreciate you being at their wedding. No, I don't. They do, I, they remember if you were there. No, they don't. They do. They don't. You don't get invited to weddings because you ain't got any mates. No, I have, I've got, I know enough people, everyone's getting married. But it's, they're always in the middle of nowhere. That, no, that, that annoys me when people say, come to our wedding. Yeah, fine, where? We're in Greece. Yeah. Well, no, down the road, I might make it down the road for the reception. Yeah. Go to Greece, what, you want me to book a holiday? and come to your wedding. Well, the thing that drives me insane when you do go is when they put you on a table with people you don't know. Well, that's I got it. all my mates there and they put- what- well, uh, cause I got to mingle with some people? I don't care, I need these- But well, that's what people. I'm not good at, They're talking to people friends. once. Talking to people who you don't know- No. Well, what sort of stuff would you make conversation about at a wedding? Uh, I'd probably say, oh, first of all, how do you know them? How do you know the people getting married? No. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, do you think it'll last? <laughs> Imagine getting- no, Imagine That's inviting Carl Pilkington to end and going, Oh, where should we put him? Oh, I don't know. Is there a- is there a table for one? <laughs> oh, just- You'd be on the table with the kids. Imagine being stuck with Carl Pilkington at a wedding. Yeah, what else? So you've asked them to think it'll last. They've gone, I'm sorry? Who are you? Uh, Carl Pilkington from Manchester. Right. Yes, we think it'll last. What else would you ask? So what was your next? Um, you know it's going badly. They're sort of like looking down their nose at you. They're thinking, why did they invite this bald-headed scum? It's just the, the last wedding I went to. It's going back a couple of years, but everyone seems a bit snidey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because you've got a mixture of families there, haven't you? Yeah. And none of them really like each other. No. And I got stuck with an old fellow who had a flatulence problem. <laughs> That's so fun. And then he went on to say it doesn't matter, the suit's hired. <laughs> and then it's just kind of- <laughs> I'm gonna die! <laughs> I love I that! Like I love that he's basically saying at a wedding, it doesn't matter if I shit myself. <laughs> 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 oh. To be born English is to win first prize in the lottery of life. So what do you think of that, Carl? I uh, may- maybe, uh... uh Maybe it's that thing that I don't appreciate what I've got, but to me, being English isn't anything that great. Really? Why not? Because, uh, it's just what I've been dealt with. But what would you, uh, having, I mean, I know you know nothing about the world, um... You've travelled nowhere, you've no, seen no, nothing. Yeah, um, but if you could be any nationality, what would you be and why? Um, probably be Italian. Okay. Why? Well, just, uh Yeah, I like the idea of it. I like- Italians are alright, aren't Where they? would you live? Rome? 
prob- I probably wouldn't want to be in, in the middle of Rome. It's too much hassle. Have you been to Rome? Yeah, it's nice to visit and stuff, but it's just I wouldn't want to live there. It's, you've got to get paperwork done and that, you just want to put a picture up, because everything's old. Everything's listed. He's, it's it's, he's only been Italian about three minutes and he's already slacking <laughs> he's it off. He's already no, no, but I like, I, I like, I like there. Rome. Yeah. It's good. A lot of old stuff. Why have you chosen Italy? I'm interested to know why of all the countries you've chosen Italy. I was a late comer to pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one year round. I like it now. It's like one of my favourite things I have. Um, which there isn't really anything like that in England. That even though well, it's- Well, well except pasta. Pasta's no, but exactly it's, like it. Yeah, no, but we it's got, not. We've we, got pasta. It's we? not ours, though, is it? And we no, don't know how to eat it. What do you mean we don't know how to eat we, it? We do it all wrong. You stick, <laughs> it, up, you stick <laughs> it up your arse again. Look at me. I know how to fucking eat it. No, but what I mean is, if if you saw a proper Italian, and they saw what we did to pasta, they would not be happy. What are we doing wrong? Tell me what we're doing wrong. Well, with I don't pasta. know that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing well, it wrong. How do you know we're doing it wrong? I've just heard we do it wrong. It's like how we we have the coffee at all the wrong times. I ordered a cappuccino somewhere, and the Italian fellow said you shouldn't be having that now. It's a breakfast coffee. Yeah, it is. Yeah, before twelve o'clock. Yeah, yeah. but I was having it like quarter to eleven at night. Oh wow! Like well, well that's mental. absurd. Don't you get to sleep with a lovely cup of coffee? Yeah, isn't that? Well, that's well a good I don't point. sleep anyway. You shouldn't drink coffee anyway at night. There was cappuccino or frappuccino or or mocha. Doesn't matter. Don't drink coffee after about four in the afternoon anyway, full stop. So hang on, so you love pasta, but you're not eating it right, so you'd like to be Italian in order to be able to eat pasta correctly, even though you enjoy the pasta you What eat. do you feel being Italian uh, is, and what, what's it's attracted just, it's to being- It's just very sort of, um, it's a relaxed lifestyle. Whenever you go to Italy, everyone's outside a cafe. It doesn't matter what sort of- Carl, you are. that's all you do now with your spare time yes, is outside a cafe. But they get more respect over there for- Why? You. It's, it's like, it's okay to do that. There's older people sat outside cafes who do nothing. I love just the fact that he wants to be retired. Italian so he can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than he does now sitting so- outside a cafe. No, but everyone's rushing about here. People have like colder coffee, they have frappuccinos here because they haven't got time to have a hot coffee. It's like they've got a coffee with icing so I can neck it. <laughs> get it down my neck and get on with my day. Relax, enjoy your coffee. I don't understand the rush. <laughs> you I, but, never but, enjoy anything. You say that you don't enjoy anything. You don't enjoy a coffee. When you're having a coffee, you're probably going, oh, I, can't, I don't know if I can enjoy it yet, in retrospect. And tomorrow I'll go, oh, I like that coffee yesterday. But the reason you enjoy Italy is because when you were there, you're on holiday. That's why you're able to chill out and no, relax. No. When you say that it's old people, old people sat in some little Sicilian village. Of course they, they got no money. <laughs> Here, I went to the Salvation Army. Right. Why? Because it's nice. What do you mean? You get, you get, you can get toast and a cup of tea for a pound. <laughs> oh, you little skin flint. Right. You little roundy heady There's nothing skin flinty about that. That's just, that, that should be the going rate, Steve. I'm surprised I haven't seen you in there, to be honest. <laughs> but the thing is- Where is now, it? Now, <laughs> just near Camden. What is it? Is it like uh, old people? A lot of old people, mainly old people. Um, and this is what I'm saying. These are people who are old and they sat in a cafe, but they don't get any respect. People are walking past and they don't want to go in. The way you reacted when I said I was in the Salvation Army, that's the reaction they get. Yet an old Italian person, they looked after better. Well, it's certainly true they look after their older families, don't they? They And that's all I'm saying, whereas, I mean, it's a lovely place, Salvation Army. Every old fella in there has got a tie on. Yeah. They make an effort. And that that, that chokes me when I see an old boy still put a shirt and tie on. He's, he's, He's 90, he's like been through the hardship and yet on a Sunday, they still shine their shoes and, you know what I mean? I mean, you sometimes can't even bother to put your trousers on. I said, no, no, no. I've got an elasticated waistband yeah. and they're, they're still fiddling with braces and buttons. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what I like about Italians and that. There's a, there's a lot of So you respect. want to be Italian because when you're old, you can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than you do here. Yeah. Look at the old people in this country. They never look happy, do they, really? Most of the time, when you see them walking around, they go, they go to pot. No one's keeping an eye on them. To quote the scholar and political theorist John Shah, the future is not a result of choices among alternative paths offered by the present, but a place that is created. Created first in the mind and will, created next in activity. The future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. From the schoolboy dreaming of big adventures to the scientist envisioning groundbreaking discoveries, we all care to imagine what the future will bring. Many people have attempted to predict the future, others to mould and control it. But what do we really know of the future? How does the past inform it? And what educated guesses can we make about the shape of things to come? To discuss these questions and more, 
I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, fucking mong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. There'll be so little difference between men and women, apart from the biology, economically, socially. It won't matter who the biggest breadwinner is, that's already being phased out. If you're in a traditional heterosexual male-female couple, it'll be who stays home, who earns the most or whatever. It won't be governed by, by gender. Um, and that's getting less and less anyway, as it is now. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I oh, heard that. So you, got, you, you read a, an academic study, Rick, but yeah. let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go, oh boy. <laughs> different point though, isn't it? It's That's a different, different point. point that. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. But no, it's on. just, it's just, uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that'll sort the population he problem He gets out. an extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <coughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that down just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. They're well, 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 no, well then that, that doesn't sort of, what do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are you so saying, many... are you saying, because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I stood up, you seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick, I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy, because at the end of the day we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so, uh, but what's this got to do with what What's this world like? Describe, you, because describe this a typical town or, or country It's exactly, me. right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it, it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just, still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that. Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on, it's ugly by today's standards, is it? So I throw forward to 75 years, you'll go, oh, everyone's what we call ugly, but what's happened to society? What do they think of everyone? They won't suddenly go in, ah, oh, and it's annoying, we've got, we've got uglier. Because it's not no, like a strict... No, because we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now... Yeah. ...at a school photo... Yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference between <laughs> some of the girls and the blokes. No, but that's not true. Because it is, honestly. You that's look at fashion it and, you and see nutrition. Stuff. And I see that, yeah, yeah, when I see an old episode of Bullseye, I think, Jesus, the men look like right. rakes with right. no teeth and a moustache. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, they're, they're bald with their hair down like a paedophile. And he goes, now how old are you? And I'm like, 52. 50 he goes, I'm 22. He goes, what? Yeah, but that's more because of the sort of people that used to go on Bullseye. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> Paul, exactly. Paul Newman was never going to pop on Bullseye. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, because he was actually then, a plumber from, you know, yeah. Essex. And then think of the people that he grew up with, well, where he, I mean, some of them live in holes now. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're, the, the class of um, Pilkey, 1982, doesn't really count. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school not. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? I wonder if he's confused it with the like, the paradigms of, of beauty have changed, haven't they? So in the 50s, Marilyn Monroe was, was considered, you know, a very desirable, whereas that body shape on women, yeah, more recently, has become, has become less, you know, there's yeah. lots of skinny women are seen as a paradigm of beauty. But, so that has maybe changed. But we will change. Yeah, we'll change. Probably not in 75 little years. Things. I mentioned before about, uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. <laughs> it never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. But again, it's what you mean. Like 75 years is nothing. 
the only thing that changes uh, in 75 years is trend, fashion, economics. The gene pool doesn't change unless there's been some sort of really weird mutation due to an external force. That I, I don't know. For things of science fiction where we all accidentally drank plutonium and got three eyes and one leg. It doesn't happen that fast. I've told you before, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's the little just... finger will be, to let me tell you, millions of years. Um... I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not so not, imagine not, that. to say, not, not French fries. But hang on, though. Well, at what point are we us, then? Yeah, this is okay, good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them them kids on that now. I just think, where, where have they stored that? Where's that gone in their head? Mm. How have they left that somewhere and it's just sat there waiting to be used? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. okay, that's application and, and, and training and all that. I don't but, think, I think But basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. Your, your brain capacity is It's not huge. the same as theirs. It's not the same. Well, you might not be what's considered as academically intelligence then, but again, uh, an awful lot of it is, you know, nurture more than nature. Um, your brain's good. Your brain is up there. Don't worry about that. Well, it isn't. But listen, so what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yeah. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Well, I'm not, because what what's the your point? head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Uh, I think you'll find that they're... No, no. Only Do you want to see naked ladies? No, <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. So, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Right. So why, why bother using? But you're your own still knowledge? the go-between. You're you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your mouth says. But you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, the car, he knows everything. So you're accessing the information like it was part of your brain capacity, but you're still processing and using that information. But, but, but hold on, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone, on, one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge a human just put being. It on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch the University Challenge and go, I want to be like them, I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted, I, I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, 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 uh, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing because intellectual oh pursuit God. that is! What a lucky lady! <laughs> what does Suzanne have said to that? Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one or whatever. I but remember, I love that, because I remember once, it was about, um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlour games, um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals. And you have to go, uh, first one is A, then B. So, you say, aardvark. Next one goes, beaver. Next one goes, cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went, egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on F. <laughs> So, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweler of Fabergé, is well-known for his jewel-encrusted war, <laughs> egg. Yeah, uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm saying. Oh. If you keep saying the same thing, eventually, 
It's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head looks like hay. <laughs> yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, w when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he said he's given up ever trying to get an answer. So now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. Another <laughs> 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 great game. Six hours wrote it on. <laughs> how how do you do with that? That's not. I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> There's got to be something else. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> another watch. there's what another like there's that? another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that you, you can't argue with that because the evidence well, is there. Can. Most people on University Challenge, which is a quiz show, if people don't have that in the country. <laughs> The, the, it's the brainiest quiz of all time, and it. To be honest, I don't know why they don't go on. Who wants to be a millionaire or something? Because they'll get a better prize than. A, I don't, what do they win on University Challenge? Because they'll be stitched up by a question of uh, who's in Ollie Oaks. It will be the <laughs> yeah. But that's the snobbery I mean, be, as well. It'll be what character does Andy Lincoln play in this life? And they won't get it. And you'll go egg, and you'll be correct. <laughs> <laughs> Same problem here. I've had work done recently <laughs> with uh, Dad. What? How to get rid of a body? Let me call out. <laughs> I've worked on recently, right? Bathroom retiled. Yeah. Right. It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. So then, like, he sort now, of finishes. Who's grout? Is that another mate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when after they put like the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet, yeah. and now it's there. The grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it. Drain the water. No, off. it wants him to go around the U bend. Well, it's no, you'd there. get it out there. You'd dry it off, wouldn't you? So there's no water in there. Well, just stick and your hand in. Get your hand in there. Why don't you put a, a, a Well, last time I did that, once, last time you called up when I had my hand down a grid and you were going, what are you doing? Get someone out to do that. Yeah, but it's just putting a marigold on and taking the screw out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the screw's not a problem. I'm not that bothered about Still that. Still down there, though, about the is it? Yeah, the screw's there, yeah. So you could have taken that out, no problem. Yeah, but it's half a job, that, isn't it? I want to get rid of the grout first and I'll get rid of the screw. Yeah. But I will, I'm not scared about putting. You, you called up here, I was oh, up to my shoulder, Steve, in like. Glunge. <laughs> <laughs> Glunge no, what, annoys me, what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm going to use that for flannimals, mate. Yeah, so you're up to your arm in Glunge. Yeah. Yeah, and Ricky called, and it's again, it was in Kent. The bloke had done the kitchen, been pouring down cement into the grid outside. I'm sort of washing up. Look outside, loads of water all over the place. I don't know right. what's going on here. Yeah. I go out there, all the water's like, because it runs to a grid outside, you know, that sort of system. Yeah. Yeah. It's not flo it's not going down, is it? Sure. There's loads of water there. Right. So I call up the main fella, who does the kitchens, there's a message there, sorry, I'm away in Cyprus. Right. So I can't get hold of him. Right. So he's, he's ballsed it up, but he's on holiday now, he doesn't want to know. <laughs> there's all this, like I say, gloopy stuff. Lunch. I'm, I'm scooping that up with my hand, up, seriously, must be close to my shoulder. Right. Not, not my problem really, but all these people, you're saying, recycle properly, don't pour stuff, um, all these bottles you get now, Demestos, it has like little pictures of dolphins looking unhappy, because people are pouring bleach down a sink or whatever. I've, I've never had that problem, I've never upset a dolphin, <laughs> but I know, if I hadn't sorted that out, it would have caused loads of problems for me and the neighbour, and it would have been my problem. And that's what I'm saying, I'm not that selfish really when it comes to the environment start of the people around Start using me. reliable tradesmen. And please. also, he do was. start caring about the dolphins, please. Because they're all we've got on this planet. <laughs> Why don't you care about what's happening? What are we going to swim with if not the dolphins? Yeah. I'm going to swim with one. It's never going to happen. Never well, going to happen. what if you had a little div, right, didn't have long to live, what do you want to do? And he went, swim with dolphins. So you don't want to do that? I go, oh, Uncle Carl killed them all. With Domestos. They're all bleached It'd and blind. It'd be some other animal. Anyway, it's not about the dolphins, it's about the ocean, isn't it, that the dolphins are in. I told you, if dolphins were in the Thames, they wouldn't be that keen jumping in there saying, oh, let's swim with a dolphin. <laughs> right. He says you want to swim with a carrier bag in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> It makes no difference. <laughs> I'd love to see that on Noel Edmonds. <laughs> We've got a little kid here, what's your name? Andrew. And uh, 
You want to go swimming? <laughs> yeah. What with? Dolphin. Okay, well we can't- <coughs> well, We can't no arrange dolphins. dolphin. They've yeah. all died out because of environmental oh. ignorance. Would you like to swim with the carrier bag? <laughs> well good, we can do that. <laughs> you can chuck it in the pond, get in. And you can take him home with you after and he can be your best friend. <laughs> Come on, Tesco. You know, you know <laughs> that's the problem, don't you? That's why. Do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in, I was in the supermarket, yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd, uh, <laughs> they'd turn round and said, "Do you want a carrier bag?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd bought like milk, loaf, I think I bought some uh, pikelets." Some what? Uh, <laughs> that's a pikelet. It's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> There's a word I'd get rid of. Pikelet. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I could, I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do yeah. not need a specific, specific thin word. Thin crumpet. But, um, uh, these, uh, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? Too thin. <laughs> Call it a pikelet or fuck off. I'd, I'd spent over a tenner anyway. Right. <laughs> right. I get to the till. What? It, can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> it's tough what? to- I've oh, tried that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No? I've, I've tried squashing a crumpet. How thick is a crumpet that you need a thin It depends one. where you go. They've got thicker. I'm not- I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. <laughs> Why? Because the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've- I've cut them out of my diet. Have you? Yeah, well, no, you straight the pikelets now, is It's also pikelets. because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought all this stuff. It's over a tenner. Uh, she said, do you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Uh, yeah. She said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the pikelets. I, no, I'm right behind this. Right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carry bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, right? Lazy bastards. I take carry bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carry bags. Reuse. I use no, them. Steve, so can I put, just put a question in? Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Okay. But, I didn't know <laughs> I was on my way home from work that day. Fine. So but this is the problem. Up. So be it. So That's you bought Come on. with a nose. 5p otherwise you carry yeah. one with you. And you got another one. And you got right, so I said, so I said, how's that gonna work? How's my 5 pence gonna help the environment? Typical. That is the attitude. That sums it up, yeah. then. It sums well, it, it up. Well, it goes to something else, doesn't it? It's just making you think. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles, that's right, they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, she said, she they said- think, They think they're the a jellyfish. jellyfish and they yeah. go, oh, 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 they swallow it, yeah, and they yeah. choke. So I said, right, so it's all right, I can, I can kill a turtle, can I, for five pence? You're not that bothered then? Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there- Yeah. Ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags, if you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence, I'll go and kill a turtle. <laughs> that's <laughs> what's annoying me. It's not compulsory though, is it? But th th what they're saying is that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? What? If they're the What's it going towards? Well, we don't know. Why are they She just told pence? me, she said, we can't give you carry bags anymore because you're killing turtles. See, there's no way she <laughs> said, we can't give you- Carl Pilkington, stop killing fucking turtles. Five pence. All I'm saying is, if carrier bags are killing turtles, stop making carrier bags. Because the thing is, I can afford two carrier bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been going in there. <laughs> So, oh, so, flash. so d does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? There could be for that 5p, you could get a little fella out there, when he sees a turtle going, he goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Will they? Carrier bag's better, innit? <laughs> <laughs> to be born English is to win first prize in the lottery of life. So said Cecil Rhodes one of the grandfathers of British imperialism. At its height, the British Empire ruled over one quarter of the world's population and consequently exported Englishness to the furthest reaches of the globe. But what is Englishness? Is it stiff upper lips and fair play, village greens and tea and crumpets? And who are the English? Are we defined by a shared heritage, a common set of beliefs, by the language of Shakespeare? Or in a multicultural modern age, when more languages are spoken in England than in any other country in Europe, do we need to develop a new view of what it means to be English? To discuss and define the nature and characteristics of the English, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick, an award-winning writer. Thank you for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man who by his own admission uh, didn't go to school, has no qualifications. Mention the head, talk about the head. I'm just trying to get to the point that he's not qualified in anything or True. really isn't, uh, has no authority in any subject or hasn't got the right to it. Got, the head. And it was known the world over as a man who has a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> right. I think one thing that's very English is harping back and whinging combined. People saying, oh, England used to be better in my day, oh, England was better when I was a kid, England was better in the 50s or whatever. Carl, do you think England's better now? Are you happier now um, than you were when you were a kid? Do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know, I wasn't around. So, so you understand what it was like in those days? 
Um, You've seen Happy Days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the fifties. And he's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest starting about 1984. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a specific year. Why? Why was, was that? It was just I was free and happy. How old, were, how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I need to... He's just counting on his fingers now. Twelve. Right, okay. And it was just good. So right. the happiest days of your life were between the age of twelve and thirteen? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or just riding in a circle endlessly through you, blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in. I was always when when everyone always goes, "Where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening?" I was always out on my bike, and everything was like, like you and McGregor. A, a memory is always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. <laughs> the only time I was in my house. <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But That's what I mean. But all you Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you have. Your hair, it your is. hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk stupid, ma'am. So yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see- And it was all downhill from then, was it? Thirteen. It's your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was thirteen, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your thirteenth birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> on his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, that... It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> My eyes moved around more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, I couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm, it's know, a yeah. workout, a baby workout. Oh, hey, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. Yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that! I said, I said when, I'm when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, alright. <laughs> I love the fact that he could reason with her. I love him, he's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going, no, she goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now. Because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just there loads of people just walking around. There was never problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I thought, what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony. Yeah. He did tiling with him. He <laughs> drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now the thing is, there wasn't panic. People weren't going. Oh God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just. How old were you? He's down the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, out. he's four years old. Yeah. <laughs> he's well, he's only having a. He's down the pub with Tony, probably playing darts. <laughs> Yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the pub. that's what it was Tony, like. you bringing a baby to the pub? <laughs> uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we're all bringing ours. <laughs> Alright, see you later, mate. But that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents they didn't do that. They looked out <laughs> the van car and you were gone. <laughs> some bloke's driving off in a van, and they're just going, yeah. oh, well, oh, yeah, uh, doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> This is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? 
I just was there for a bit and then uh, then For every bit just had a game of pool. Then my dad came in. He was like, Oh there you are. Mm. Oh there you are I love that uh, Where's my baby? The guy in the door, I'm just gonna have a quick pint. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright mate. So uh yeah, I think things were better back then. Rick, as you hinted at in your introduction, um the idea of Englishness and England is quite a vague term, isn't it? It's, you can play loose and fast with it. I mean, for instance, I was uh, looking at some quotes about England, and John Major, former Prime Minister, he typified England as being a place of long shadows on county cricket grounds, warm beer, invincible green suburbs, dog lovers, and old maids bicycling through the morning mist. Very yeah. specific vision of England. But he never came to the estate that <laughs> I was born on, sure. or Carl was born. You know what I mean? I, I, I think I know of that. If we go for a walk around Richmond, we see people playing cricket on the village green, and and it's lovely. But I don't know if it's it's typical. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where most people live. Um, but in a it's way, probably fifty-fifty, isn't it, in cities and in the country? But but that's wealthy country. But that's interestingly, that's the vision of England that people like to subscribe to. When you buy your nan a, a box of biscuits for Christmas from Harrods, that's the image Ooh, of England that's on why the am front. I, why am I spending money at Harrods on my nan? Well, why can't I just, she, she's out with sort of like broken custard greens. You've you earned a bit of money now. Well, I know, but don't, they don't need to know that. I mean, also, b both my grand and mothers are dead, so it'd be. It'd Sorry, be a, that up, Well, no, you? but I mean, who who buys their who who spends good money at Harrods on biscuits where she just suck them and and eat the Garibaldis and leave? The, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know why I'm wasting money on the elderly. I, bit. I worry that you you've taken that too literally. I was trying to get to making more of a point, like an analogy, but I, mean, I don't shop at Harrods. Right. Please, I don't. I, don't, I mean, I might you know get some sort of Easter eggs. Two well, this, days after Easter. Well, what do you think of this then? Um, we were in Fortnum and Masons after Christmas, and all and all the crackers were half price. Good idea. And there was a box of crackers for five hundred quid, down to two hundred and fifty quid. And I thought, right, that's got to be the best prizes anyone's ever seen. I'm going to get Cartier watches in these things. <laughs> so we bought uh, two hundred fifty quid. I thought, oh, it's a bargain. It's half price. Got them home, pulled a couple, and it was a little notebook, right, that said wine notes. That's one. That what? Every, wine notes. So you drink a bottle of wine and, and go- you make a note. Make a note of it, right? There was another one that had something that it was like opera notes or something. And then there was one for, uh, uh, um, travel notes, like what, what country you were. I'm thinking, what world are these crackers for? It was putting a cracker and going, I need it. Um, I've, I've filled up my, um, uh, wine <laughs> notes book. <laughs> it's not like- uh, 500 quid? Yeah. I mean, for some little notebooks. Yeah, I mean, if you'd have paid 500 quid, I mean, I don't know who buys those. Well, so I assume they're for presents. And it's I mean, probably the absurd, cliched, Toff Toffington Englishman, yeah. who has no sense anymore of what, wor of any sense of worth of anything, and it's just a crazy, you know, snotty-nosed inbreeding There was a, there was a silver-plated, like, mussel, you know, uh, like the clam, the mussel, mm -hmm. right? You know when you eat, um, mussels, you scoop I'm out with an open muscle. Sure. This is a silver plated one. <laughs> Who carries that with them? You get that out, we go, all muscles, good, um, oh, I, I, I brought it with me, my silver plated yeah. muscle to eat muscles. I'm um, wait, this wine's delicious, let me make a note. <laughs> <laughs> That's absurd. But again, you yeah. said, you said that because those are little images of what we would like England to be, aren't they? They're pandering to that image of what we'd all like to be, that sort of upper class English person who's worried about fine wine and good food. And again, I mean, is, does, this, does this England still exist? I'm presuming there's a small minority that does. But well, there are some people that, that are in that world that are posher than the royal family. Yeah. You know, I can understand what the Queen and Prince Charles are saying, but there are some people... What? And I don't know what they're talking about either. Well, I um, was never really aware of class and the English class system until I went to university. Absolutely. That I, I became I'd, aware of it then. Absolutely right. When I got to university and everyone sort of spoke like royalty, and that's when I discovered I was probably working class. But when I hear those people who do actually speak in that kind of, oh, Jeff, Jeff, you know, that sort of absurd, oh, rugger, oh, you absolute bloody well, you bastard. Know, you know they, what, though? I don't mind the mega posh people. I don't mind that. Ah, oh, bloody hell, yeah. Yeah, of course, take one. Take one. You know, I don't mind one of those. Uh, what I don't like is the ones that um, stand around in all bar one with a rugby shirt with a collar up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those sort of, uh, are going to work in the city, yeah. and they're loud and think they're gentry, yeah. but they're, they're not. It's that middle bit 
that annoys me more. That's, they've got this, that confidence, but without any of the charm. But that's the England that I think people think of when they think of it. It's the four weddings in a funeral England, and yet it's not the England I experienced and grew up in. So, what is your typical image of an Englishman? No. If I had to draw it for an alien, yeah. um, he'd be, uh, quite squat, um, quite sturdy, sort of no neck, um, hairy. Are you just thinking of yourself? Do you know what? I, it, it would be my build with Carl's head. Really? And no neck, yeah. I think he's sort of balding and unshaven, and, uh, he's like a shaved caveman. I think he's, he's tough, he'd have tats, he'd, he'd eat like a dog. A Ray Winston type. A, a, a sort of, yeah, that sort of, um, and he's Bob so Hoskins, just squat, strong, tough, doesn't take any messing, built like a giant wombat. It's the bulldog breed. It is the bulldog breed. I am thinking of the bulldog breed. <laughs> but, but that's, uh, that's the thing, isn't it? This snobbery on, like, braininess. The way that, <laughs> if you're, if you're a specialist mm. in, uh, I don't know, what something... Well, no, don't help him. Go on. Finish, just, you've started a conversation, you're halfway through a sentence, you've got a point you to can't make. can't bear out now. Okay. Say if you're a specialist in, uh... Go on. Latin tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Latin <laughs> tattoos! I don't know what, that is. what Latin tattoos! I didn't know you wanted something so specific! So that's a tattoo you have on your arm with Cogito or Gassel underneath, or is it, is it a Just tattoo... Just sort of, well, it's the only reason Latin's still alive, isn't it? Right. Right. Tattooists. Is so, it? you go on, you go on Mastermind... Yeah. ...and people will go, oh, he's clever, isn't he? Mm. You got, uh, you got 40 correct in 60 seconds. Yeah. Now, if you go on and say any questions about Coronation Street between 1990 and 1992, people go, no, oh, he's a bit of a knob. Because yeah. there's a snobbery to yeah. education. Yes. yes. There is. But a question is still a question, isn't it? Well, it, to a certain degree, although, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but there's but, no application to knowing who played Edith Sharples, whereas presumably there is something useful in, um, well, not perhaps Latin tattoos, because no, we don't, we none of us understand no, exactly what no. that is. But uh, if you're a, if you're a knowledge, you have knowledge of you know uh, astrophysics. Obviously, that's going to be you know, as Ricky says, it's going to take more application to become an expert on that than watching Coronation Street twice a week. But it's still information that you've had to learn. You've not learned it, have you? have just no. sat down in front of the telly and it's just piped into your brain very directly and very easily and enjoyably. Let's say the people working on that microchip that one day you'll have in your brain, mm. are they not doing something more interesting and valuable for society than, uh, than the Coronation Street fella? Um, no, because Coronation Street is, he, that fella who knows a lot about it, he's, at least he's enjoying his, his time watching that. Oh, well, I'm saying he's not enjoying it. So he's enjoying it, but, you know, a brain in a jar can be enjoying it, if it doesn't know it's a brain in a jar. Right. So what are you, what are you asking me? But we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem a difficult point. What we were saying. We what were I saying, mean is. Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain mm. isn't part of filling your head with stuff. The journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just if I'm say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit. They go right. We've got. What do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're mm. going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing. Yeah, I know we do, but... The, it's uh, odd that they would have chosen plumbing. They've got such... <laughs> oh, yeah. Such kind of small it's what, it's, it's uh, what ambitions for them. It's what his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> They want they want the baby to carry on the business. Of the they, want, they want the baby to be able to plumb. It goes on now where <laughs> where parents force the kids into riding horses, and you mm. see the kid without the parents about, and you go, "Do you like horses?" And they go, no, "Not really." Being forced to get on a horse, yeah. can't stand them. Yeah. And people would go, "That's wrong. The mm. kid should have the freedom to decide if he wants to get on a horse or not." That's right. Yeah. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. You've made the scenario. <laughs> up. They're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. 
No, what, well, what I, say that? No, no, no. That? I, I think Steve's right, and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun, you know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop, it's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but, lazy. But but you you straight away thought that now that that, that it went to some sort of weird um, uh, laboratory where it's all white and there's just a, a doctor uh, and he's everyone's in a silver suit right and they go we're removing your you the self we're removing the self and putting in chip <laughs> you are now computer boy <laughs> yeah it's but not watch Coronation Street well you won't in a few seconds but <laughs> I hate Coronation Street me Carl it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. <laughs> it looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm added. <laughs> right, look at it like this. Jesus, look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Hi. Oh, all right. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now, mm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, how are you getting there? Uh, car. Oh, right, yeah. Well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Well, just, just making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've, I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and... What do you mean? What, 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 a bit lazy, isn't it? Well, I don't... I'm not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Have you got an A to Z? Well, well yeah, but it's... Yeah, it was a, on a computer, the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... It's a bit, and la it's, a bit lazy, though. Not really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? A to Z's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit... Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road, we need to get going. What is this, uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really got to get going. He's a fucking dickhead. It, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're well, just, just, well, just telling him we're using the sound now because it's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but look, look, what's happened? Who the fuck Would Columbus found America? If he had had a sat nav. Yes! No, he wouldn't. He'd have put it in America and he would have taken it he to wouldn't. He wouldn't. America. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody d just but goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, <laughs> be on a sat nav? No. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> from finding oh, a continent to a little I love that! I love that! Little greasy I am, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Well, I don't know yet, it's the unknown <laughs> world. What are you taking? Just a uh, boat like all lazy swim, you can <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time, or got a compass. Don't you know where north <laughs> is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> <laughs> because you find you find new things. I'm for well, everyone. Well, Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. I uh... Just think, you know, Columbus. Right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Um, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? You never got Columbus. You never went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the sort of one thing you would hate. Is fancy dress. No, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right. So you found a fancy dress <laughs> shop. Where are you supposed to be going? That you got. You had time to get sidetracked and go in a. I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> Just Amazing! It. That's the last time. So you you gotta get lost. Yeah, you, you don't want to get lost. No, I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself. Get a sat nav. No, I'm I'm just saying you, that's that's how you find little treats along the way. And you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" You can go, "Yeah, I do." You go, I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't no, know where no, it was. No, 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 no. Normally, oh, I well, I'm not going to tell you, lazy cunt. Have you got an A Z? <laughs> oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself, you lazy mm. twat. Or am I getting lost? Good. You might find another one. I'm ju I, it just goes back to the, the chip thing in the head. I think you, you've got to learn along the way. We can't get lazy, we can't have chips in the head knowing how to plumb. That's what it's all about, isn't it? And, and making mistakes. 
If you make a mistake, I I've done some wiring, got a little shock. Won't happen again. It will. <laughs> I've seen that experiment with you before. <laughs> yeah. What would you do, right? If you run a business, right, your business could go under, right? It snows a bit. You've got ten employees. You're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl. A bit icy. I'll do it. I'll do it, okay? Right, they're snowed in, right? You're running the business. What are you running? It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up, it's just a, no, it's a factory, it, uh, it's, it's does U-Benz, it make bells, I make, no, no U-Benz, U-Benz for, you know, Toilet, so yeah. you run a, okay, right, okay, so, plumbing, so plumbing. You, you, you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there, what time do you get in? About quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, it's snowing, it's a bit snow, snowy, you got there, it took you a bit while, you'd set off early, did you, or? Gave myself a bit more time, because I had to put the heating on the car. Okay, ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilberton? Yeah, it is. Yeah, who's that? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Sheila. Um, listen, Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but... we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all but... on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make it. Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in- I'll give you twenty minutes, alright? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I I'll see you in I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm gonna- I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna come in today. It's dangerous. So what are you gonna do? Well, I'm just- I'm gonna wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm gonna they, come but in. But they're predicting it's gonna be about two weeks before yeah, they clear I'm all gonna, this. I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you because I need someone to come in with well, that big Why are you firing me? Because I can't get into work with this- this- well, I, I got think... into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but oh, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see bad, how- it was bad where I was as well, yeah, oh, I'm you, here. Do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my- not Tell me, you come round and drive my fucking car, because I'm snowed in, you fucking calling me a cunt, and I'll tell you, if you fire me, I'll tell you to drive you, you bald headed wanker! Right, you're fired anyway for- for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm, right then, see ya. Right, and right. then she's- she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, ring! KP Plumbing. Hiya, uh, uh, is that, uh, Miss Pilkington? Yeah, it is, yeah. Hiya, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, bit of trouble, um, uh, in my area, it's absolutely snowing, it's possible, no one's getting out, I live near Sheila. Bob, listen, way. yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on, she's saying she right. can't get in either. She can't, I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out and she's hurt her back, she's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it, because she's, she's not very rich and her car doesn't work, she hasn't got the right tyres. And there's no public transport, they've cancelled those, wrong snow on uh, this country. I'm not gonna make it in today, son, so, um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy? Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only now, if it's snowing still. No, listen. Might not, uh, well, I can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I tell you I'm what, you're you not off. coming Just, back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> one chance. <laughs> give them one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Just annoys me. Do you recycle? Um, I give a lot of stuff to Oxfam. Well, yeah, that's the sort of recycling, yeah. Hand-me-downs and passing uh, passing on things. Well, it's probably, it's a, probably a better form of recycling, isn't it? You're not destroying anything and remaking it, you're just letting someone else wear a jumper that you don't wear anymore, so yeah. that's, yeah. Don't really do all the, I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put, there's the cans, there's, there's the paper. You don't do that? You just throw it away, do you? Yeah. Cause oh, that's, that's not that and they can't do anything with that. That annoys me when you're just putting it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. But I haven't that got all the bins, there isn't enough room for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do- You've got yeah, a recycle box you stick outside. Yeah. What are you on about? Recycle box, yeah. I haven't got one. Well, no, you've got, uh, you got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a, um, a sofa, right? I was getting a new sofa, had the old one. You try and get rid of one of them, it's murder. Right? I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it, they said we're not coming round there till Friday. It was like a Monday. I said it's in the way. So I put it outside, they said you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said yeah, but you don't know where I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. It's not outside my house. No. So they said, well you do that, we've got your number What's the sofa like? It's a base room. Well if we see that. <laughs> so um, they said, if you if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow, 30 quid. I said, I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So, hung up, annoyed, called my dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up, there's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky sods. Called them up, said, I've got this sofa here, I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. He said, uh, oh, what's it like, is it in good condition? Yeah, it's alright, yeah. 
well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> I said, because uh, we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's nothing wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. <laughs> you can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense like stuff. It was expensive right. when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? So I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fag proof? So I said, I don't smoke. He said, well, go and get the, um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at my sofa <laughs> and I, I'm giving it away. I had to lift it up, it had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, could, I, could I just, um, point out for our, our American <laughs> listeners, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag proof, he's not gonna open the cushion and someone's go, you, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> so, I should explain that straight away. So anyway, it turned out it was fag proof. They came and picked it up, took it away, uh, <laughs> that was that. <laughs> but look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something mm. for a certain day of the week because it's big. A mattress. Is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of, or you can't stick it somewhere because no. it's in the way. It's a big, clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's not a bit of furniture really, a mattress. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Well, it's, it's a, a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't don't lean on it. It's a bit it's a bit spongy. Uh, what do you keep in it? We can't keep anything. It's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but you it's know not what really I mean. It's a furniture, to be honest. Well, it's it's part it should of, be on a bed, to be honest. It's part <laughs> of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when? I don't think you'd even ever count a mattress as a piece of furniture. <laughs> of course you can. It's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? Is, is a, 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 a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They'd be trousers. <laughs> They're furniture if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Can I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. We bought a flat in Manchester, right? And yeah. We, we, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you don't mean you bought a sofa, you ended up with a table. No, no. Bought, no you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah, a table. Yeah. Now, I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> know. Suzanne said you to buy a sofa and you <laughs> came back with a table. Now, back then, I wasn't as wise as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, what was he? Some snot in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Can I just apologise to any snot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? All right. So, oh. so I ordered a bed. <laughs> I ordered a bed. Yeah. It turned up. Oh, well done. <laughs> Oh, you know, that's I a thought, victory! I thought... <laughs> it went down Jim Green this that's time! That's the end of the story, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> so I thought, I thought, oh. I'm gonna get this in the bedroom, set it all up, Suzanne comes home from work, the bed's done, she'll be well happy. Yeah. yeah. So I get it all up there in the lift and what have you, I think it's, it seems like I'm missing something here. Put it together, no mattress. <laughs> Did you not notice there was no mattress? No, just because it's like, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I've got all the screws, I've got the slats for that at the bottom, there's, there's the post and that. So I'll put it together. Where's the right. softy spongy <laughs> bit of furniture that usually sits on top of the, uh, the more rigid bit of furniture? So I called them up, I said, there's no mattress with it. They said, no, it's not part of it. So what do you mean it's not part of it? A bed isn't a bed without a mattress, it's, it's a climbing frame, right? <laughs> so, um, they said, they said, uh, you know, you can buy one, we have got them in for that thing. But it was like 400 and odd quid. And I don't know why telling me this, I know this, this is, I've walked beds, so I understand this is how it works. The mattress isn't but, a bed, no, the, the bed is something else. Yeah, yeah, but that's wrong. You cannot use a bed without a mattress is what I'm saying, so don't sell it without it. No, but some people replace the bed frame that's with a, fine. and keep the that's old mattress fine. on the That's fine, around. once you've invested in it and you go, oh, will I buy a new bed or will I just buy a new mattress, fine. Well, they're not going to keep selling beds with new mattresses in case you've already got a mattress. What? A bed and a mattress without any pillars and blankets is no good, but you don't expect that to come with but it. At least you can sleep on that. You can sleep on a spongy bit, you can chuck a coat over you, you can yeah, use a cushion off a sofa. thinking some fuckwit might buy it without the mattress, we better include it. So yeah. anyway, so I was like, oh, I didn't think of this. <laughs> I didn't think of this! So I called my dad up. I didn't think of so I called my dad up! <laughs> dad, it's your fuckwit son again. Alright son, how's it going? <laughs> what have you done, bought a bed without a mattress? <laughs> oh. So I said, listen, I bought that bed, there's no mattress on it, can, you know, can you get us one? So he said, oh, I'll, I'll have a word. I'll call around, <laughs> right? So he calls back like an hour and a half later. He said, uh, got your mattress, uh, go round to Alf's. Alf is me sort of uncle who isn't an uncle. Oh, right. right. 
Uh, he's the one who I've told you about. I had two tellies. We've talked about on the podcast. I had two oh, yeah. tellies. One that works picture wise, <laughs> one <laughs> that works on the sound. Perfect. Slept in a rubber dinghy, right? <laughs> now yeah. the thing is, I remember Alf, yeah. He yeah. Uh, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a mattress. Come and get it. So I go why around he, there. Why does he sleep on the fucking mattress if he's got one? <laughs> why does he like, sleep in a fucking boat if he's got a mattress? He's don't. terrified of flooding. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I get there and uh, it's in his van. Right. Dragged he's sorry, he's driving off. around with a mattress in the back of a van. What is he, a fucking serial killer? So I thought Suzanne's gonna be happy. Dragged it out of the van, chucked it in the car, thought she won't even know. Do you know what I mean? No. So, uh, yeah. so I dragged that back and thought, oh, am I gonna make it rush hour by this point? And thinking, oh, she's gonna get home. Anyway, get home, drag it into the lift and what have you. Drag it up, drag it into the bedroom, stick Dead it on. Dead prostitute falls off it. <laughs> <laughs> a sheet on it and that. <laughs> Suzanne comes in, uh, she goes, what is that smell? Oh. So I said, what? <laughs> she said, it's like, oil and diesel. Hold on, why didn't you smell it? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. I think I just sort of got used to, maybe it, because I got in the back of the van, <laughs> smelt that, thought that's in the van, then I got used to that smell. Yeah. It's in the back of my car, folded yeah. up. I'm, yeah. I'm concentrating on trying to get this bed made before she gets in. Mm. Sure. Um, Plus, he used to wear a blindfold instead of sunglasses in those days. <laughs> so anyway, she's going, what is it? I said, I've got this off Alf. She said, we can't have that. She said, you no. know, it's a new flat, nice clean flat and everything, we've got this old thing that stinks, get rid of it. It was murder getting rid of that. And I had to tip it. I right. went round the back of some supermarket and left it there. Because you call fly around- tipping. Illegal fly tipping. Well, no, because I think it's illegal and bad when, you, when you're chucking it out, say, at a bus stop or <laughs> somewhere on a high street or something and people are going, that looks a mess. I chucked it near the bins at a supermarket. I'd gone out of my way, I thought, where is this not going to be offensive? Why couldn't you just go on the tip? I think I did try the tip. Oh no! No, there's a massive queue. There's ah, a massive queue. Uh, laziness, so laziness, Rick, a sorry. A queue at the tip? A massive queue. Where I remember was it this? now. Oh, Stratford. Stratford, that was. Why is I remember. there a queue for the tip? Don't know. I remember, oh. yeah. I remember driving past it and I haven't got time for that. And um, that was- that's So don't go on about you couldn't get rid of it, it's because you couldn't be asked to queue up, you lazy bastard. Um, Couldn't get rid of it. But what was he thinking? Why was he panicking? One, why did he get a bed without a mattress? Two, why is he calling his dad to get him out of mattress related <laughs> problems? His dad goes, Alf, Alf's got one in the back of a dirty old fucking van. <laughs> oh wait, that should be alright. No, but the thing is, what I'm saying is, when I was in that bed shop and I'm going, oh yeah, good bed, good bed, I'm sitting on it, I'm sitting on a mattress with it, <laughs> at no point did he say, now, have you thought about what sort of mattress you want? Have you got orthopaedic problems or whatever? That didn't come up. He said, there's your order, there's your address. I'm not a bed man. I go to the bed man to get bed advice. In the same way, <laughs> same problem here. I've had work done recently with uh, uh, Dad, what? How to get rid of a body. Let me call out. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, what do you think about all the pomp and circumstance around, um... It's, it's all alien. It's not, it's not for me. I don't like that sort of, uh... I, I try and not put myself in the same sort of circles as, as posh people because it's just a different, it's like a different club isn't it? It's like, like I said to you about young people and old people, there's such a different life going on. They say like the, the whale and the hippo are related, you never see them together. And it's the same with, with really posh, you know, well off people and someone who's just getting on with the life. But it's, but I mean, uh, that's the thing that's changed as well, the stiff upper lip thing, that's out of the window now. I mean, it, it's like everyone's got a new addiction. Everyone's, oh, I'm addicted to drugs, alcohol, I'm addicted to sex, not a problem, have a wank. <laughs> and everyone's got depression now. I Can remember. you be addicted to sex if you're not getting any? Because <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case then. <laughs> oh dear. Do you think there's a big difference, Carl, between the, the Englishman of year, yesteryear who didn't complain, I mean, he just got on with things, he might have whinged about the weather and the like, um, but he just got on with things. He's carried know. an umbrella. Yeah. He Whereas nowadays people are getting their Prozac and their antidepressants and going someone into in, therapy. Yeah. He kept out of stuff as well. I uh, just did a war and so and so. Alright. They're coming this way. If they come over here, give them a slap. Why are we getting involved now in everything? Thoughts on that, Carl? Uh, it's news now, isn't it? Sometimes I think, don't tell me. Don't want to know. Just get on with it. Whoever's job that is, get on with it. Yeah. Why am I being told about it? When I've got a problem in my job, no one else knows. No, no. one helps me out and goes, well, I've got an opinion for him. No. This might help him. No one helps me. But I'm being bombarded by everyone else's hassle. They love talking, actually. That's what the English do. Talking, but they never finalise it. They love just being in the meeting room, 
talking, saying, yeah, we could do this, we could do that. I'm the only one in that room not getting paid. Everyone else is on a wage. <laughs> I'm there looking at me watch, thinking, right, I've been here for an hour, nothing's been sorted. <laughs> They're looking, thinking we can drag this out for another half hour, get us to lunch. That's what annoys me. They're all sat there, just pushing bullshit around the room like dung beetles. <laughs> sick of it. And that's what the English do. <laughs> and it's a shame, because I don't think they used to be like that. I wish everybody just sort of kept to themselves more. Like, you know, certain animals do, you just get on with it. It's like no, an old-fashioned way. What animals keep well, any, themselves? any animals keep themselves to themselves. No, what? Said, no. Loads of things. What, what, keeps, what animals keep themselves? Badges. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd they keep themselves? Just, no, they just, uh, when, whenever you've seen them just sort of wandering about a roadside, they're on their own. Right. They're not, they're not sort of- What are they doing? In pairs. I don't know. Most of the time they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen more dead badgers than alive ones. I've never seen a live badger. <laughs> I don't so know that's, what his point So that's was. why they're one alone and two getting on with it. I love it. Most I of the time- I love that it started off with some kind of poetic analogy. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Most of the time- I just, uh... <laughs> oh God! Um, I like this thing of the, the, the Englishman I knew growing up. Um, was, uh, you had to, when you hit a certain age, when you hit, like, manhood, or puberty or whatever, 13, 14, 15, you had to start showing your metal. Then, the most important thing then was to, uh, well, the worst thing to be growing up was gay. That was like, you couldn't be gay. That was, it couldn't be gay. Anything but gay. Um, and then you had to be hard, you had to be tough. Um, I remember, right, when I first started going to pubs, Right, so I'm, I don't know, say 18, you walk into a toilet, the urinals, and the first thing everyone did was fart and gob. <laughs> yeah. That was it, right? Yeah, if yeah. you couldn't do that, then, uh, you know, you get funny looks. You yeah. know, you go in the urinal and they'd look at you and go, oh, sorry. Mm. It was all about, um, being a man. <clears throat> You know. I think wearing glasses makes you slightly exempt from that. It's like you don't have to- people mm. automatically dissociate. It's like if I was in prison, I wouldn't have to do that because I'd just be the professor. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Exactly, or brains. Yeah. I would- yeah, I, they would, I wouldn't need to be part of that. I'm never a threat because I never look like I'm going to be a tough guy. So consequently I live in this sort of parallel stratosphere where I haven't got a piss and gob. Yeah. Has that got more popular? Yes. Has it? Yeah. Well, well, we're doing it in the streets now. Really? It's not like in, not in Hampstead. It still is, you know. When I walk, walk the only here, person gobbing in Hampstead is me. <laughs> Jane says, "Don't gob. People are looking." Well, it is. It's your trail that I'm seeing. Then. <laughs> it's like a load of sort of washed-up jellyfish in London. Just big blobs of it. I, d I mean, I don't know how they're coughing this stuff up. I mean, they shouldn't still be alive. Some of them have like organs in them. It's just big lumps of stuff. I mean, that list of idyllic, antiquated England of, uh, you know, tea and cakes and cricket, I mean, is, is valid, but I think the things that sum up Englishness, I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war, we love a ruck. Yeah. We're built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. We used we to be. We are good. We used to be good. I don't yeah, know no, we're very good. We're good. We're, we're very good. I mean, we, I think we reached our peak with Churchill. Probably that's probably our, our greatest uh, hour, our finest hour. According to him. Yeah. Well, he should know he was there. He should know. And he'd like to drink, didn't he? He'd have to brandy. He's not afraid of a drink. He'd that's like to, he'd get pissed up and he'd no wonder he'd fight him on the beaches, he'd fight him anywhere. Yeah. See, there's an example of a posh bloke, it was like I was saying, he'd lead you into battle. He'd have a weapon too, he'd go in there, he didn't, he didn't sit back, I mean, when he was old, he did. But nothing wrong with being posh if you're willing to go and, you know, get stuck in. What do you think, Carl? Um, is it as scary though? I mean, imagine if if he was rougher sounding, and he was on on the front line. And, like uh, he went, he went, you fucking little can! I fight you on the beach. Uh, look, see me down in Brighton Monday. I'm gonna fucking smack your head in, you little fucking German can! Like that, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a <little> morale boost. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other point of one, isn't it? That he was. Those speeches were for as much as morale as uh, information and, and defiance. You don't want to feel like the, the leader of your country could glass you if you got on the wrong side. No, of exactly. It's got to be, it's, it's got to be rules under war, hasn't it? I mean, that fair play has got to come into it as well. Talking of the, um, English sense of fair play and war, when, um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. 
they said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick and uh, versus our our bowmen. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh, it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage? That's honour, isn't it? It's almost like it's okay to kill someone, but with skill. But uh, w what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. They're, they're your arms. They've got they've got trained bowmen. They're skilled. The most skilled sort of marksman uh, uh, soldiers in the country. Someone comes along, and goes, "Don't worry about that." Is a crossbow. Just pop it in. Put it back. <laughs> Deadly deadly quick anyone can use it so now you've got anyone with a crossbow killing people women children anyone can use it so the europeans they're going crazy oh william tellen is they he's shooting apples off heads yeah right but we did we resisted it because we thought it was you know unchristian and cheating to kill without skill what do you think of that but where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having a, having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was like sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family. <laughs> that's that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. Ye new bow and arrow. From Ronco. But what, what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I objective don't, I don't is to kill the place, enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all uppity about someone cheating or having a better oh, system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, it's just about rules, winning. Isn't it? No, not in a war. There isn't rules. So what about things like the Geneva Convention? It's the understanding that even if we're entering into a war, theoretically, there's a set of agreed universal rules. It's good for both sides, rules. isn't it? Fair play has got well, to come into the, everything. The, what's yeah. extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the, you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, I, I know we were fodder. It was fodder to use up some of their bullets. I mean, it was crazy. But, I mean, it's madness. But in a way, it's it's the gentry who are leading us, seeing you know the average Tommy as a sort of as well, cannon of, fodder. Of I mean, course, of course. And you know, we've got to realise that most of the people didn't want to be there. Most of them didn't even understand it. I mean, and if you think of the first and second, you know, they were just wars. You know, but um, I just I can't just can't imagine How what would it'd you be think, like. Do you think, Carl, in a war situation, you've seen all those films of the? Uh, I mean, that's the one they had a, had a knockabout and stuff, didn't they? they took, you know, the game of football in no man's land. Yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, an important thing, isn't it, that, that um, my, uh, my mum, this is when she was about 60, 65, uh, there was a, a neighbour who was, uh, uh, like, n you know, 85, 90, and, um, again, completely alone. And my mum used to go on there every day, do you want any shopping? Do it, right? She, she, was, she, was, she was good for us, she was like a witness in the world, you know, to her existence. But I remember calling her once, and uh, she'd come back, I said, what have you been doing? She went, oh, I've been around so-and-so. So I went, all right. She went, oh, she won't die, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's out with yeah, her, but she's yeah, thinking, yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> well, that's the problem, you know, if you if you get pally with an old person, yeah. then you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is it? You, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start um, popping in his sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do? If you're... It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop, as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs. Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> you you could just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you've brought up weird people. There was a fella called Shorts, man. Right? <laughs> it's so pedestrian! <laughs> oh, I love the fact- Shorts man wore some shorts. Now, now, what I like, yeah, he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. 
What do you mean? They were just, you know like shorts now, for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's yeah. no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's go nothing on. gonna pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. <laughs> so that he what? knew, with the big strides and the sh short shorts, Yeah. they were gonna pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why were you looking at the shorts? Just because it was, it was like, it was what like, it? it was like playing Buckaroo. <laughs> it was like, when are they gonna pop out? But what? <laughs> It's just what happened. So, wh right, but so shorts man, <laughs> so he was an exhibitionist, he liked, he basically wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah, and they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan, right? <laughs> now the thing is, what, what we like in England, I think we like that, we like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah, yeah. eccentric's very, that's very British, eccentric, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I'm glad I grew up around there with all them people, because so they're interesting. I. Well, there is a certain, uh, mindset about the, the great English, certainly the older English people. I mean, my grandparents are, you know, my grandfather died recently, but the amazing kind of eccentric, very English, seemingly, um, no friends, from what I can identify. I don't know if this is unique to them or true of a lot of English people, uh, older people. They're terrified of what the neighbours might say. They always did that thing of speaking like that in case of yeah. what Jack's in next door. Yeah. Like the, like the neighbours are constantly listening in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got glasses against the wall. They're constantly listening into what my grand's got to say. Yeah. Um, they had about three teeth between them. It was extraordinary. My grandfather had a, a plate of false teeth during the war that had a wooden pallet, a wooden upper wow. pallet with teeth on it, and those teeth slowly fell off during the course of the years, never but got woodwork. replaced. So you, they'd sort of invite you to Sunday roast, and they would get, they would wake up at six in the morning to put the beef on, and they wouldn't have it till six in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> they would cook it. The biggest compliment you could have, uh, if you made some food for my grand, if it was some beef, would be, oh, you're so lovely, this, so tender, you can suck it away. <laughs> she, if you could suck your Sunday roast through a straw, she was happy. Well, because you didn't have any teeth. Right, exactly. Basically, they got to about the age of 60 or something, and it was as though they were just waiting to die. It was strange. They, and they lived for another, or my grandfather lived for at least another 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, you must have been gutted. But in a, when my father, uh, my father needed a winter coat, a big heavy winter coat, and he was thinking of buying one, and um, my grand said, oh, don't worry about that, Ron. You can have your father's winter coat. And um, he said, well, but, but you know, he's, he's still alive. What do you mean to him? You know, he, he needs a winter coat. She went, no, he'll be dead soon. Just don't, silly to waste it. Seems to waste it, you know, just wait. My father must have been waiting ten years for that winter coat. I love the fact he waited. You can, <laughs> you can see where did. Steve got it from. Of course he waiting. did. Stupid, I'm waiting now. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you must be freezing. I am cold, but I'll tell you, it's a lovely coat. In English society, traditionally and now, is manners. Mm. I mean, obviously manners change, but etiquette. what is etiquette? What is good manners? Um, I think that the, a lot of that has been lost. Well, I was thinking the other day, have you ever heard of the finishing school? Yeah. Car? Yeah, of course. Do you know that? Uh, no. The idea is that, you know, the sort of gentrified ladies, after they finished their education, they would go to finishing school where they would literally be taught, you know, how to- Knives and forks, walking with a book on your head, just things like what to say. I mean, that's I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, a year of being Eliza Doolittle, isn't yeah. it? Don't put your elbows on the table. You start you start from outwards, going inwards with cutlery. You know, you eat soup, the spoon goes away. But there's things like the the fork. Uh, you're never meant to face those prongs uh, up. That you, so you either stab your peas, or you know, mm. there's ways of eating soup. You know, the spoon needs to be moving away from yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Scooping it up and bring it back to your mouth. I mean. It's crazy, but, you know, the people that subscribe to that stuff would look at the way you live your life, the way you eat your food, Carl, and would be appalled. Yeah, but In the same way we think that's absurd, they would think you're a disgrace. But who's, uh, as long as you're enjoying it. No, they would say no. Well, no, there are certain things that I can't stand. I can't stand eating with a mouth open. I think that's rude. I, 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 I ban chewing gum on the set of a film, because it, uh, I think it's rude. I think it's rude. The people stand there talking to you. Yeah, but we all know you're a preposterous hypocrite. I mean, the way you no, eat food, come on. No, I don't eat with my mouth open. I don't, uh, I do eat with just my right hand, smash it and scoop it in, but, the, but I see nothing wrong with that. I would say it was slightly rude when you're ordering the bill and getting up to leave yeah. when I'm still finishing my main course. Yeah. I'd say there was a touch of rudeness But I go into that. a restaurant to eat. Yeah, but you're supposed to wait when you're with the other people and let them finish as well. This is my ideal restaurant. It is empty. 
They know what I want and it's waiting for me when I walk in. I leave still chewing and I go put it on my bill. That's yeah. the ideal restaurant for me. Yeah. You're pretty much there. From yeah, what I, I try can tell. I try and that's what I try and try and do, yeah. Um but you know, there are certain things. I am one for manners. I think I, I hate rudeness, I hate lateness, I hate all those things, but some of them are ridiculous. The albums on the table is arbitrary. Why? I mean, there's a reason you say please and thank you, because it shows courtesy. Um, th those make sense. There's a reason you don't talk when you're eating, because it goes over and it's disgusting. There's a reason you don't lick your fingers and then put it back in the chips, because it's someone else has got to share that. But don't put your elbows on the table or, or start with that fork. I think it's ludicrous. You know there's those rules when you meet a member of the royal family. For instance, if you were at the royal variety before and you met the queen, mm. there's various rules they yeah, tell you, you about. Yeah, you don't fart or call her love. <laughs> exactly, for, for one. But also you don't speak until you're spoken to, you have to do a slight bow. I was um, invited to the, the palace a couple of times. The first time was after the office sort of broke and I got an invite, um, a company of the uh, Majesty of the Queen would like you to come to a, one of those dinner parties and um, I know what you're thinking, why didn't you get one? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, well, well wait, 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 I was, I was a big shot quicker than you because I was in it. Um, don't forget you didn't appear until um, but uh, even series so, two. If we'd, if we'd split the atom, they would invite both of us. <laughs> no, no. Not just a guy who does the press conference. <laughs> so, so, the thing came through and I thought, oh, I, don't, I didn't, I, I was worried about it to be honest. Um, but it just said, I will be attending, I will not be attending. Tick the box. And I couldn't bear to just tick, I will not be attending, because it was too harsh. So there was a RSPV number, and I phoned up, and it was obviously the, the, the head of the house or a butler or I, d I don't know, someone. Who, and he went, Hello, Buckingham Palace. And I said, Hello, it's Ricky Gervais. I just got an invite to come and. Uh, um, and I, I said, It sounds weird, but I couldn't bear to just tick, I will not be attending. Um, I just, he went, Well, you're the first person ever to bother to do that. Thank you so much. I went, oh, um, my pleasure, sorry I can't make it. And, but, I, I don't think that's weird. It is strangely brutal. It is strangely brutal, isn't it? I wonder if they've changed it by now. Yeah, there's a little asterisk, thanks to Ricky Gervais, <laughs> it now says, <laughs> I am too fat and lazy and busy eating cheese to visit your majesty. Oh, uh, what I think is this, that no one's ever ticked I will not be attending. Right, yeah. So it was never a problem. Until, so why until, did you not want to go? Um, I don't know, I just thought it was a bit intense and um, I'd, be, I'd turned down all those things. I, I think I would like to go now just to look around. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just felt a bit funny just being invited there. I, I was invited to all those things at the uh, um, Downing Street as well mm. and I just thought, you're inviting me because I'm on the telly now because I'm famous. Well, where was my invite when I was on the doll? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With respect, I wouldn't have invited you <laughs> <laughs> circa 1983. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got a problem with, um, you know, going to the palace or, um, except I do have a problem with sort of being wheeled around as, as a celebrity. Because I used to think if I was ever invited uh, to get given an MBE or a knighthood or something, I'd be like, nah, I'm not part of the system, you know, I'm a rebel, I'm outside. Now I think it would be be quite cool. Well, I only think it's a problem for a comedian because, you know, we're sort of meant to dish it out and it's difficult to dish it out if you're being seen. What I do find weird is the idea of having to bow and scrape before people because I'm told to do that. Well, like, I, 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 I what I find is that idea of I'm, I'm, a, I'm obligated to be respectful to such a degree just because someone's the queen. Like obviously I'd always be respectful but why can't I speak when she turns up? What I don't understand. That's how I find a strange what idea. What would you say though? Well, I just say, you know, honour to meet you, Majesty. But, you know, I don't understand why I can't initiate that. Why, if I, but I, I don't find think it she'd weird. mind that. If, if you went, if you went, honour to meet you before she'd spoken, what she's gonna say? She's gonna go, cheeky cunt. <laughs> I talks first, lanky. <laughs> Obviously the future is relative, um, us talking now, the future is one thing, the past is another, but to someone in the past, we are in the future. So Carl, if you could go back into any era, okay, you are what you are now, you are you as you sit there now, your age, with all your memories and all your input and all your advantages 
on uh, ages gone by and all your advantages over people gone by, um, where would you go? What would you do? Don't worry about ramifications, like if you squash a butterfly, you come back here and we're all speaking a different language and... Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe all that. Of course you should. They should have picked something better than a butterfly. The thing about if you kill a butterfly, it, there's a volcano somewhere. Right. There. Okay, what did that noise mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just passing the book, isn't it? It's kind of like <laughs> blaming a butterfly. Like, like, they only live about a day. So you blame it and it's dead anyway and there's no evidence left. It's a stupid is argument. Is that the theory? Is that yeah, the theory that you're blaming a butterfly for a volcano? I'm not sure that's it, is it? Yeah, it, when no, it it's wafts about, its wings it, and when it causes... Wafts, right, when a butterfly wafts, if you stop the waffery, then the whole world has changed because there was no waft on a certain day, okay? But that means that everything's part of the causal web. It's, it's a model for determinism. So things do, yeah, of course things have an effect on everything else. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's a bad example. The butterfly doing its wings. Well, no. Something you know, that, that butterfly. That butterfly might have um, flown in through a car window and frightened someone, and they crashed. Use a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is that preferable? Because you do panic. I've been in a car and there's a wasp knocking about. It's terrifying. But I, I've, yeah, I can see how that could cause a disaster. But a butterfly, you just go open the other window. I love that you've won him over to that theory now, <laughs> just by substituting a butterfly and a wasp. Let me think back to perhaps when you were a teenager or even before when you were growing up. You had visions, I suppose, of your own personal future and how that would play out, how you could change the way you lived your life in order to affect the future. I mean, I was very, I'm very lucky in, the, in, in some regards in that one of my ambitions was always to be involved with comedy. Yeah. And, um, I was very really strictly though, excited about that and I was lucky that I've managed to achieve that. A lot of people don't even know what they want from their future. Well, the other thing is that when you dream of where you'll be in 20 years' time, you don't change the future. You don't change the buildings and no. the, the, you just think of yourself sort of richer, having a happier life. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, And also, I was, always, I was always slightly more handsome in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept imagining I would grow a little more handsome. Uh, people kept saying, so my grandmother would keep telling me, you, you know, you'll fill out when you fill out a bit. She was obsessed with me filling out, this is why she would feed me endlessly, the idea that somehow if I was yeah. less gangly. Yeah, it worked with me though. Yeah, my, you just, you really filled out. I filled out, yeah. And it's funny because um, I still forget what I look like now in the present. Yeah. In my head, I still look like I used to look. Then I catch a little glimpse of myself in the shop window and go, who's that foul? Oh. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm yeah. so much better. But you did have a long, you've, you've journeyed a long way. I mean, you, good looking lad, and you are, I mean, it's preposterous. Mm. I mean, everyone I work with or meet who's seen a picture of you as a teenager doesn't understand it. I mean, I pretty much look the same, you know what I mean? I haven't changed much. Um, I'm still a constant disappointment to myself in a way, you know? Mm. I mean, I put on a tuxedo, that's the best I'm ever going to look, and I don't look like James Bond. Yeah. Whereas you at least had a moment where you, you looked around. I mean, it's, honestly, it's Jane I feel sorry for. Mm. Because well, I mean, she did not sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all, we've all no, changed. No, I've seen pictures of her in the past. She ain't changed much. No, I don't mean that. Whereas I mean, you, I mean, we've all changed. We've all, we all changed. Carl used to have hair. Yeah, but he had you by your own admission, had it for long. You, you, you didn't have it hair for long, did you? you well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Didn't want to hang around my hair. It was never. I've told you, it, it didn't feel needed, so it went. I never did anything with it. It was hair of a Chinaman, wasn't it? Even the hairdresser said. He said, yeah. you can do nothing with this. So what do you mean? He said, it's just too, it's sort of limsy. Limsy! <laughs> limsy. limsy. Sorry, was that, that, that's a... Limp or flimsy, I reckon. Well, no, that yeah. lim limsy is, uh, is a Chinaman. Um, that, 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 um, <laughs> gave his name yeah. to the, uh, the li limp hair, uh, of the, of the Chinese So place. you think your hair bailed on you because it was not getting treated well enough? I think that's, I think that's true. I think that's right. how it works. But yeah, I know what you mean. You sort of, I sort of think about, if I've changed and that, but I don't think I have that much. Mm. I still have the same sort of thoughts. Um, I like olives now, <laughs> which okay. I didn't like probably three years ago. Right. Mm. Wow. Um, but you can, if you eat four in a row, you get a taste for them. And I thought, go on, they'll have five. <laughs> and, right. I thought, yeah, they're all right these. <laughs> so that's different. But other than that, I mean, it's so what, what, what were your dreams and ambitions when you were young? Yeah, how many? Right. It was kind of uh, five years old. What do you want to be? What was um, the thoughts of the future? I didn't, I didn't worry. At five years old, you're not worrying about okay. work and that. Ten. What, what's your, what's your hopes and fears 
of all these years I met in thee tonight. I wasn't worrying about work till about, till about 13, 14. I was thinking, right, you know, people who are new had left school. They weren't getting work. I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be like that. Um, that's when I did boxing, you know, that, I could have gone down that route. Mm. Got into boxing, didn't I? Mm. Uh, How many fights do you have? Don't know, about three or four. Yeah. Uh, How many is it? Just, when does brain damage kick in? I guess it can, I mean, I guess it can happen almost instantly. I mean, it must, that must be, must be part of it. Were you, were you really, did you really get a bad beating on one of those fights? Yeah, Leroy gave us a right good clacker in. Mm. Uh, clackering. Right. Yeah, the thing is, your jab was a bit limsy, but Leroy's was clackering. <laughs> uh, then there was the dancing. I don't remember mm. this. Wait, what, break dancing? Well, I did that. I did a bit of body popping. Yeah. But did you ever th really think that you might do this in the future? You did never know, do you? But did you, at the time, do you remember thinking, oh, I, could, I wouldn't mind doing well, this I must professionally? Well, I must have, must have thought that for me to go, well, let's, let's try and join, you know, Twiggy's Dance Club and all that. And, uh, my mum and dad always sort of, you know, if you want to give it a go, give it a go. With the boxing, uh, you know, me, me dad was saying, right, I'll get you the proper shoes and that. And my mum's like, don't, don't bother getting in them yet. Let's see if he sticks at it for like four months, because they were about 30 quid for Let the shoes. Let him carry on in my furry slippers. Uh, <laughs> then with the dancing, it was the same thing. I said, oh, I need some leg warmers and that. And, uh... These tights are just as good. Come on. <laughs> no, pop, my dad, pop on your hands tights. My dad gave me, um, like his, uh, he cut, like, the, the sleeves off a shirt. Amazing. <laughs> and that were your leg warmers? Yeah. Amazing. But uh, it's funny, when you're a kid, it don't bother you. But surely cut him off a jumper. Yeah. No, I, I don't know why. I know it looked after I had cuffs on leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's amazing! But when you're That's a kid, amazing. what did they you think that is? It must have looked Lance Lauren and Bowen doing a handstand. <laughs> 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 but then, you know, that didn't last long and then my dad, you know, it, I was getting older now and he's like... Dad needed his shirt back for a wedding. <laughs> yeah, as long as he didn't take his jacket off, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dad, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my hat, I need a hat. I don't need a bloody hat. Put me pants on, Fed. <laughs> but then, you've got to make sure you, you try and get a job and school was sort of saying... So 15 now. Hang on, why the Twiggies? Why did you stop going down Twiggies? Well, it was shut, wasn't it? Amazing. Oh, it closed down? It closed down. It had a load of toilet rolls in there. It'd been turned into like a storage unit. I've never really had a, had like a dream. I've just bumbled along. Mm. Because, it, the, like I've said, it's Bumbled. that, it's that thing of, Clackers, sort of, Bumbled. um... Limsy. It's like, call my fucking blood. <laughs> there's no point, sort of, wishing for too much, because if you don't get it, you'll be fed up. So it's better just to sort of go, well, let's see what's around the corner. This is what I've said to you about a sat-nav system. Right. It? It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, sure, I have the sat-nav, type in where you want to go, and it'll take you straight there. Mm. But what I say is, use the back streets. Mm. Have a look around. Turn off. Don't go straight ahead. Turn right. Mm. The little dead ends. Yeah. Have a look. Well, you might get mugged. Have a look. Don't go down the dead ends. Why not? You've got a reverse back There's nothing there. It's dead end. No, but have a look. Well, there's nothing there. It's dead end. Well, what's the road doing there, then? Well, it's a dead end. It's yeah, but there must ends. be something down there. There's nothing. It's, dead. it's just ends. It's just a wall. Right, so it's not a problem. Reverse. Do, 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 well, don't do, go down do. there in the first place if you know it's a dead end. Don't tell people to go down the dead end. They've got to reverse out. Difficult. Well, I'd say just have a look, you see, that's the difference between me and you. Right. I'd have a look down the dead it's end. It's dead end, no, no, don't worry, it's What's dead end. What's down there? nothing, mate, dead end. Rubbish? Just yeah, no, rubbish. nothing. Dead nothing end. at all? Yeah, no, put going there, dead end. Right, so I'll go, well, I'll just have a look for myself, because I don't believe you. Okay, well, go on then. Right, I'll have a look. Yeah. Oh, look at this I've found. What have you found? Just box of money that you didn't know about. <laughs> All I'm saying is it could be He has still got the brain of a ten-year-old, <laughs> hasn't he? Money. He's still got the brain of a ten-year-old. <laughs> I'm just, uh, set your stall out. Right. So where's the stall? Where are you setting the stall? Not there, 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 <laughs> there, 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 there's no there's traffic. There's no thoroughfare, yeah. You want, you want to be on this a sort of public highway. Where are you setting your stall out? <laughs> what are you selling? What are you selling? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. What are you selling I'm first? selling a mixture of stuff. What? Like what? All, all sorts. What have you bought it with? A bag of money you found in the dead end? Leg warmers. Well, you got you got le new leg warmers with, um, do you want, have you got, do you want cufflinks for them? <laughs> what? Do you want cufflinks for them leg warmers? <laughs> well, now, why would I do that? Well, you got to fucking look smart, ain't you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're selling, uh, what are you selling? <laughs> so, you, yeah. set, you set your stall out. Yeah. Right. Now, yes. isn't it dangerous to sell all the same product in that shop? 
Right. Okay, where's, this, where's, where's the analogy going? This yeah. is a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, or similarly, yeah, what, what are you selling? What are you selling first? Bang. No, two, three, four. No, but Quick, this is, is what I'm friend? saying to you. This is what I'm saying to you, though. I just said to you. Yeah. You, yeah. well I don't know what you wanted to do, you haven't told me. Right. I'm saying- Do you want me to tell you what I wanted to be when I wanted to be- well, at five years old I wanted to own a sweet shop until my mum said, you know, you've got to buy the sweets first. Right. From ten I wanted to be like a scientist, fifteen a vet kicked in. But Carry at some on. point you jettisoned all of that to try and pursue a pop career. Twenty, I wanted to be a pop star. Twenty-five, I thought I'd better get a job. <laughs> well- At thirty I did. <laughs> Me saying turn off the main road and do a right yes. is saying just have a look around in the same way that if you go into a shop- It was a metaphor, wasn't it? Yeah, right. it was, yeah. Yeah. And in the same way that if you go into a shop, mm. you're thinking I'm getting a uh, quarter of bonbons. Right, a bonbons. <laughs> bum bums. Well, by the time you get to the counter- You're clackered. And you get some licorice all sorts instead because you yeah. thought, actually, I forgot about them. Sorry, now this isn't a metaphor, is it? This is re this is a real <laughs> shop now, isn't it? I just, uh, I just mean you're gonna, be, you're gonna be let down, you're gonna- be very, very disappointed with life. Mm. If, um, you know. What? Be what? If what? If what? If, if, if what? If, if what? The thing you're aiming for. Yeah. Doesn't happen. But what if it does happen? I'd like to take issue with this because there's a lot of young people who listen to our podcasts, and if they listen to you, this tripe that if you try for something in life it won't happen, so don't bother, I think it's a bloody disgrace. No. Imagine if Leona Lewis had thought that when she went on the bloody X Factor. She wouldn't have got punched by that bloke in that. <laughs> 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 well, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I mean. She would not be living her dreams. Yeah, but we don't know what Leona wanted to do. She might she have a backup plan. She wanted to be a singer. That's why she's done it. She might have had a backup plan. Yeah, but she fulfilled the main ambition, which was to sing. That's why she went on the show. She didn't go there because she thought I might want to work down a branch of water stones. You think she went in there and said, uh, "Quarter bomb bombs." She's like, "Oh, this is uh, X Factor." But she went, "Oh, go on then." <laughs> what was saying? Well, what about the, the 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 girl who looked like a fat baby? She went on there with a dream. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, yeah! But nah. the point is, I'm not saying you all have to go on the X Factor if you're a hopeless idiot. I'm saying if you've got a little bit of talent and you pursue it, it might take you somewhere. If you want to be a vet or a doctor or a pop star, you might have a chance. You might as yeah. well have a stamp for it, then say, oh, it's alright, I'll just sit around in my underpants. Yeah, they're doing a new one, the X-Ray Factor, where you can actually, you know, become a uh, top radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> but I've said this for, for an idea, I think they should do that. Because how many singers do we need in the world? You see, that's the thing. We're talking yeah. about the future. Yeah. I, I think it, we're not going to talk anymore. I think we're, we're all. We're, we're, it's going to be like living in an opera. The way yeah. things are going on now, everyone wants to sing. Yeah. Whereas, if you did a TV program to try and get a doctor, you know, X-ray get, factor. You know, yeah. it's all about you know getting in young kids, do live surgery. You know, there's big queues anyway. People are queuing up to have operations done. Yeah. So you say, look, Hilda. You have got a problem with your, with your left bu bunion. You can either wait for your proper doctor and hospital, but it's going to be a, a two year waiting list. Or you can or have Jedward do it. Are for you me. free Saturday night, live? Because <laughs> we've got two 17 year olds who are going to do it. Hilda! She comes out. They. they <laughs> start... a little voice! I've never heard him do a little voice before! So I'm going wait. I'm okay, okay. So this is. Okay, what is this? This is a talent show where people can have a go at being a doctor. doctor. Yeah. Right, well, this is like something from the Middle Ages. <laughs> but, they need, but they need volunteers who would rather have. Um, an apprentice, does someone have a go? Well, it's okay. not even an apprentice, it's someone no. with no training at all. Yeah. They learn how to do major operations in a week. But no, not major ones, that's for the final. You do a heart, <laughs> oh, of course, you yeah, you've got to build up that, sure. But you a build heart up. transplant for the final. <laughs> that's so anyway, amazing. so it's Hilda, and Hilda's not the person, she's not operating, she's just the person who needs a bunny. No, she's the, she's the foot problem, yeah. So she right. comes in, they have a quick chat with her. Have a chat with her, how's your life been? Bit of cold play under her. She's yeah, going, yeah. oh, it's terrible, I can hardly walk and all that, and they right. go, right. Here's a fowl who looks like a baby. <laughs> and then... And you think this is a good- you don't see any problems with this so far? You've not, not identified any concerns yet? If it means you get younger people into other jobs other than singing. Mm. I agree with you. I think it's crazy that everyone now just wants to be uh, a famous, a singer or something, and we don't need them. They're just contriving it. They're, all they're doing is knocking the last one off the top number one spot. It's just a factory. But I'm not talking about everyone should try and be a singer, am I? What I'm saying is, sometimes you're allowed to pursue your dreams, and they might be you may you may fulfill those dreams. Yeah, There's nothing Steve, wrong with that. Steve, it may be that you Steve. want to operate on a woman called Hilda or a bunny. Pursue that Go dream. On, but according Steve. to your negative views, we shouldn't even try and do that Steve, either. What Go I'm on. saying is. Go on. What's he saying? Leona was an example. I'm not saying everyone should try and be like Leona. No, but uh, listen. Listen, listen to his point, Stephen, because okay. it's got a very good point coming up. Here it now. comes. This is it. 
okay? He hasn't said a, 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 a normal word yet, but he's going to say some now and they're all going to be profound. People's dreams mm. aren't their own dreams. Oh, hold on, what do you right. mean by that? Okay, keep, that going, no, keep going, keep going, keep going, no, 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 he'll explain, don't, you don't need to ask any questions, he'll explain. Because they think they know what they want because mm. they see it on the telly. Mm. They see, you know, someone singing a song and they go, I want to do that. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, change the dreams. Mm. Change the dreams. Yeah. What? Surgery. They're watching that, <laughs> they see an elder happy with a better foot. The doctor's getting all the praise, they go, I want a bit of that action. That's what it's about. They don't want to be singers. Mm. They want to be known, they want to be famous. Yeah. So, fine, have a bit of fame, but do mm. some good, fix Elder's foot. Sorry, was that the end of the point? Yeah, because all we've done, we've, we've changed the dreams. Dreams are- Well, um, you've, you've hit on a good point there, because what is astounding is that when you, you know, um, people are inundated with praise for people who are just clothes horses. They are just skinny nobodies who don't do anything except have their picture taken and their role models for, you know, I'm not talking about, um, you know, anyone in particular, but it's just these people who, uh, you know, want to be seen with other celebrities and marry celebrities and be a celebrity. People think that's an easy life because they're getting rewarded for it. And yet, someone who's stuck in a laboratory trying to come up with a cure for AIDS, they don't know or care about them. And Okay. Can I just point out, though, that if we're going to have a go at people being successful, making money and being well known for doing nothing of any value, I point you to the man sat opposite me here. <laughs> and that's, hey, I tell you, there's times when I, you know, lie awake at night thinking, what was my dreams? Yeah, but- I'd love to be a little doctor. But I've got a new boy yeah. here. Hold on. And two houses. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be a little doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's past me now, there's no way I can, I can go back. Uh, well. But it would have been brilliant. You're wrong. Man. Carl Pilkington! <laughs> Hilda! <laughs> what is it? What what now, Hilda, what's up with you? I've got um, I've got terrible piles. Um uh, it's there's some there's some sort of blockage up there. I, I haven't gone to the uh excuse me, I haven't gone to the toilet for a week. Well, Carl, can you unblock Hilda's arse? Now live. Unblocking Hilda's arse. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I thought she had bad feet. No, the feet were, no. Jedward fixed her feet. It's a lovely job, that's why they stayed in last week. Her arse is worse than her feet. It's because she's been off her feet for so long, because she couldn't walk, her arse took the brunt of it, and it's just terrible. Piles of burst, and it's blocked up there, where all she just eats is cheese because she's so depressed. I'd, I'd just, I'd probably knock it on the head there. I'd Why? just say, because I'd just say, like going back to the, the street thing, I've gone down the wrong avenue. Right. I go, this isn't for me, I didn't know I'd be, you know, eye to eye with this. <laughs> What's up? It's not for me, and that's how you find out that it's not for you, by doing it. Right. But at least I gave it a go. So this the same as you had one fight with Leroy, you went along to a dance studio, it was shut, you've seen Hilda's ass, and it's turned you off proctology. Once again, you've just abandoned it. Yeah, well that's a, there's Have no Have a point. go! Have a go! Just feel inside Hilda's back passage, feel the blockage. Right. No, because the audience have already decided. They've seen a weakness in me, they're gonna vote me out. No! So there's no point me getting dirty fingers for this. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Future. The next audio book in this series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Look forward to that. Will do. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is forever Carl Pilkington. All right. So, <laughs> what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum when? up. Sum up. Let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing, okay, literally nothing, except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, okay? Suddenly, that exploded, and in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together. 
One of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Yeah. So, there we are. We've got the Earth. We've got this big... What happened next? Planet. Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. You see, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around, and if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> okay, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Well, say like a, a, a bin bag. I can put a bin bag outside. Bin men don't come until Friday. Sure. Mm. But I want to get, I don't want it in the house. Sure, it's got yeah. chicken in it. Yep. I pop it, I pop <laughs> it outside, right? Um, it's sat there for a few days now. Just time, time, like, you know, a, a day before the bin men are coming, yeah. I pick that up and take it round the front. Right. It's got a slug living under it. Uh-huh. Right. Like one of those little wood lice things. Yeah. Might yeah. be there. Yeah. Uh, snail. Yep. Yeah. Um. What's the, what's your point? Your We've point got a young earth. It's four and a half billion years ago, yeah. it's whizzing round the sun. Something's gonna sit on it. Yeah, something, something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, penicillin. Go on. Happened. Go on. It was, the bread was sat there, it yeah. goes off. Mm. Air would have, uh, created the greenness. <laughs> This sounds like the Bible! <laughs> that is, that is like the Bible! Air created the greenness! <laughs> That's amazing! Carry on, carry on, because I want to, I'm, I'm, in, I'm learning here, uh, I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. <laughs> this is like, this is like a monk that, that sat down. Oh, We're all sat cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you going to do? I'm going to write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on, because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, so where are we? So, so we've got, so we've got, we had greenness and now we've got so something. So the air created the greenness and then, what is it? Then we have, what was Just it? Just otherness, Other, from otherness. The greenness. Right. Because right. once you've got, once from you've other, got- From greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> the air created the greenness, <laughs> then you got otherness. If you create something, others will come. <laughs> <laughs> Build it and they will but come. But it's, it's sort of right in the- yeah, No, 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 what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. But there's greenness. Little, little patches little of greenness. Little patches of greenness, okay. Little bit of rubble knocking around. A <laughs> bit of rubble, there was a bit of rubble, okay. Um, we've still got a long way to go. We want to get to life, don't we? Okay, so let's, let's, get, so, let's skip forward so, then, so, to life. So everything was right, okay? It was the right distance from the sun. Okay. Yeah, but even if it, it wasn't, wait, we'd, it, we'd have, we would still have been creative. No, we wouldn't. We would, have. something no, we would have, have done. No, we wouldn't have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So, are you saying, um, if, if the atmosphere, right, around the Earth wasn't about 99, uh, percent nitrogen oxygen with 1% other gases, we'd have still had something else? Something would have been around. I'm not saying it might, it might, it might be better than us, it might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well it's, it's hard to say because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the shape and colour. Sure. Mm. And, uh, you know, everything else that makes you the person that you are. Okay, yeah. let's take Pluto. We know that's the farthest away. So it's, it is dark and cold there. Right. What, how do you imagine the creatures that will develop there will Big look Big eyes like? and airy. <laughs> How did they evolve? How did they evolve though? Because we evolved- just... Hang on. You yeah. always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought if, if planet's dark you don't need eyes because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't, they don't have, um, eyes or, uh, or, or colour because there's no point. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we do here? Why would we live inside Pluto? There's well, no, I it, wouldn't, it, it, I wouldn't. it couldn't support life, full stop, but, but, um, this, I mean, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. He seriously considered whether we live inside or on outside. On a ridiculously Pluto. false premise. No, Carl. We're listen. saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. 
people are living in basements. Now that's only one step away from, from being molish. <laughs> we're already going underground because we're running out of space. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right. Come on. Keep it going. Let him. I want to hear his point. Is yeah. that like being Amish? <laughs> so, uh, what you're saying is people, they don't acknowledge the, the crust of the earth. So, you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though. In your, in your, in, according to you, the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. Uh, well, it depends. No, I was only saying mm. they'd have better eyes mm. if they were on a dark planet. Where mm. they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they could trip over. If we're going, if we're going, if we're going underground, <laughs> that's their sole concern. <laughs> that's the whole evolution. Well, is well, we don't want to trip <laughs> over. I don't want to graze my knees. <laughs> You've got knees. They got them on Earth. <laughs> Coincidence, isn't it? Hub, hub. What I'm saying is right, and I've always said this. Go on. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No, no, we're not. No. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. And in aura. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just because she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them. Because it's all, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But they're knocking on the door. <laughs> no, no, but bell. she said that, no, she didn't like a bell. It makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, how, do they, how do they get in now? Well, it's a thin door and thin glass, you hear it. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What, so they, she, they have to knock They on knock the like that, on the door. And she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. why are they going to double glaze the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in, in with Hang on, so glass. she's scared by, you don't want a doorbell because that alarms her, but the knocking's fine? The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a, like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears... That's easy, that's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it because... But why don't you tell her, say, Aunt Nora, have double glazing, be warm, be safe. Hit the knock of the bell on the doubly door. This is it though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now if it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. Are you annoyed at that? You're annoyed? I know, he's such a fascist, isn't he? Aunt yeah. Nora, a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. No, Eugenics is where you, you'd be up here. Do you recycle and not leave the tap running and turn off lights because you're worried about a child born in a in, in hundred years time? No. No? No, because I don't think, um, at the end of the day, we have to face facts here. Go on. The world is, is it, old. Hold on. Right, okay. The yeah, world's old. old. Really old. And it's the same as, if you've got a gran mm. who's seventy. Yeah. Um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day she's still going to be shit in her pants. <laughs> she's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old and, yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out, uh, the earth in, metaphorically, is shitting its pants. You've only got to look at what's happening, right? Mm. It's freezing, isn't it, at the moment, out mm. there? Yeah. Ice everywhere, mm. snow everywhere. Mm. Now, an old person, what happens to them? They're always cold. Mm. It's like the earth, isn't it? Brilliant. The earth now is freezing. Yeah. It yeah. feels, it yeah. feels the cold it's more than ever. as well, it's also because it's winter, it's winter yeah. <laughs> And I think if you try and make it better now, you end up doing more damage. Does that, well, that make any sense at all? Any sense. Make sense. 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 Well, just... You can sometimes, sometimes it's too late to make something better. Like, I've had old relations who smoke like 50 a day. Mm. Doctor said you've got to stop smoking. Stop smoking, two weeks later they're dead. <laughs> Shouldn't have stopped them smoking. Yeah, they're smoking inside. Good good life, is it? Well, they're, good they're, 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 they're insides are used to all that pollution. Yeah. Set the pollution away, what will the world what? do? Go oh, good. That is a good point. Interesting. Yeah, this is scientifically grounded, is it? You've done a lot of the research, read a lot of the information about this. Or is it just a wild harebrained speculation again, backed up with nothing? Is it bullshit? <laughs> Which of those two is it? I just, like I said to you, I just think it's a, it's a theory. That's what it is. Mm. Um, yeah. It, you can, you're not telling me it's a coincidence that about three of my old relations have died because the doctor said stop smoking. Well, it might be because they're very old and... Well, yeah, they, they were old, but it's weird how, they, you know, why stop them smoking? They're old. Sure. Let them have a fag. 
Jesus. You know, they've got nothing else in their life. You've took that away, they die. <laughs> Let them have a fag. And it's the same with this world. Uh, it's polluted now. Um, I mean, there's rubbish everywhere. Isn't they? You just mean in the streets and stuff? Just, yeah. You know, different levels of, uh, I've noticed how rubbish changes depending where you live. Just like when I lived in the centre of town, it was rank. It was like human, human sort of poo. Oh, what? Yeah, I want to see down, down alleys and that. What, tramps, you mean? It must be. I don't know, I didn't sort of hang around see who's doing it. It's just, <laughs> um, but, but very human. It wasn't dog-like. <laughs> How do you know it's human? Just, just the way it looked. What, um, you, what do you mean? Well, you'd walk past it and you go, that's, look at that there, Suzanne. Yeah. Look at that, oh, that looks that. human. Oh, yeah. And what does Suzanne say? Yeah, can we walk somewhere else from now on? This isn't- yeah. <laughs> Why are we- why, why are you walking up and down this same alley? Well, I'm just, 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 I want to show you the human poo. <laughs> it's- it's a cut-through. Were you having a shit yourself? <laughs> it's <laughs> a cut-through that we used to always use and it's- it, no, most of the time it was just like smell a wee. Really yeah. strong wee. Yeah. And you'd see if you could hold your breath for the full thing. Um but <laughs> a little bit of fun, a little bit of romantic <laughs> fun <laughs> after a nice yeah, evening in a restaurant. I remember when he took her for a walk around the car park. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but now I've moved to like, you know, a posh bit of London. You still get litter, but it's, it's I saw like a rice cake. That's all I chopped on the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you it's know. just hummus tubs and, yeah. Yeah, but it's still rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. It's still yeah. rubbish. Who left this crouton maker lying around? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, don't you see what I'm saying though? The way the world, we've, we've changed more than the world has. We can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Mankind's foray into the future. I want this, this will be the introduction to a book about the future, it will then be read in a hundred years time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions just that you think, no, Just, just that you sum it up, just sum it up. Um, I believe, start off with, I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. Okay, start off and with that what, just have like a top five? Well, no, or just, just... Well, maybe just predictions. Just put it yeah. in okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So and I'm then a little, and then a little thing to remember, and remember ye this. So I can't Pilkerton predict that in the future mankind will. Uh, start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. I am Carl, and uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's a scary road. place, right. but the future's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay, your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh, mm. It's not a sound bite. No, Keep going. I've got a game space. Okay, okay, this, this is in a book. I've got, I've got to think about. I okay. Don't get it think. Wrong. Okay. Think first. Think and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. Wall of a lavatory, will it? I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. <laughs> Just because right. you see, you see kids now, they've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser, because it's dropping incredibly well, down the arse. You see now, you see kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one! Okay, that's an amazing one! They'll stop making trousers in the future, good, okay. Good. Uh, we're gonna get weaker. We're, we're, that's already, that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've definitely, that's, that's evidence, you can't argue with that. <laughs> I probably put that first because the guy's right, what's number two? So just swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Okay, they number three. They used to say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away! They used to say! They used to say, pull your trousers up down this day, put them down you can. I've never had such fucking Number three. <laughs> Right, number three! Oh, 
the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll and they go, ooh, what can number three be? Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. No, oh, this is not me! He was going to make a point about race! Yeah. Said, I never thought it would be! We'll blend all our food! Ah, <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just, um, yeah, I just think, oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen, oh. chewing on big lumps of meat, yeah. we add wisdom teeth. Yeah. Now they say, oh, take them out, you're not using them. Yeah. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yeah. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything's softer, Just isn't it? When you two, get an avocado, yeah. they say, is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think, I think chewing is a sort of thing of the past. The past. Yeah. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You don't mm. have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon, uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> These sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> this is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and Instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. You want to see. So if you're if if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto, yeah, with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking round? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No. What you mean is that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So, what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental point. This will never work. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But one of the so things you've ever said. Really weird that one. Yeah. It yeah. could be done. It, I it, reckon it, it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Okay. Okay. Because that last one. That's number four. That's a load of bollocks. <laughs> um, so, what's number five? There'll be, there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, we're not running out of no, words. we are. Now. We are definitely no. running out of words. Using it's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have okay. you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet yeah. is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling at we, all. We, we are. We're not. Boz Wallocks. <laughs> in shampoo. Now, there's a word where they've gone, well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. <laughs> you just made that up? No, no it's that, it's that they go, I knew, knew with Boswallocks and Ceramide are. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that the word? Is that real? Oh, you've missed yeah, that, no, I haven't, that's a real word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, go on. sodium. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium, he <laughs> doesn't like that. Because it sounds like an, 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 something in it, uh, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswell? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, it's real. It's, it's, it's real. And that's because 26 letters, we've wasted them. Years ago we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And <laughs> uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> well, and that's... now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Mm. Uh, things, no. cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something. Because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word made that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's <laughs> <laughs> so, Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Wow. <laughs> Since, obviously, the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless, um, you know, predictions. Apparently there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this. Um, and obviously, I don't know if you've been f seen the posters for that recent film, 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, that's based on this notion of uh, some kind of Mayan calendar, which supposedly predicts the end of the world as, as being 2012. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how do you spend that final day? I mean, this seems weird to me, but I've, I think I would, I'd like to experience a lot of the extremes of existence. So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, strange, but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're going to die in eight hours? I don't know, I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just see, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought because, um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately because they're gonna the die next anyway. day everyone's gone, so yeah, there's so not going to be mourning families. But, but then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. Well, that's so I true. Know, well, I know the moral guilt that I'll feel is over in, in a few hours. Morality isn't relative just to repercussion, is it? Because no, but you, the point you is can you do things without repercussion. But often people say, you know, what would you do it if you never got caught, or would you do it if you know, I, I, there is repercussions for that person, as grave as they might be, just because you feel that it's no big deal either way, that they're only going to live another eight hours, they might feel differently. And you're saying, well, you won't care because you won't be around. But then, why do people care about their loved ones when they won't be around? Why do people get a will ready? Because my point is that they know that those people will continue to live for an in indeterminate amount so of time. So you do care about the p other person's Of course I then. do. Oh, no, of course I do. But my point is, knowing that everyone is going to be wiped off the face of the earth the following day, all of those, re all those repercussions are no longer quite the same. Um, I'd find it hard to divorce myself from my morality that's ingrained just because it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, honestly, to me it seems that we're, we're approaching, uh, just the end, the end of all things. And so, I'm saying that there's something about the fact that we're all gonna end that somehow seems very liberating. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it gives, oh, 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 it's pikelet. <laughs> Someone threw a perfectly good pikelet away. <laughs> Talking about the earth, Carl is going around the earth. Um, myself and Stephen have set Carl up with a dream job. Um, not only have we got him a TV programme on, um, on Sky, but he's going to see the world. It came out of Carl not being impressed by anything, and we, Steve had this idea, and we've talked to the producers, and we're basically sending him around seeing the seven wonders. Okay, the seven most amazing things on earth. According to polls and opinion, it's, it's a bit of fun. We know they might not be the most amazing things on earth, but, um, if Carl finds all seven of them unimpressive and boring, there is something fundamentally wrong with him, we think. I've only done Egypt so far. And what do you think of it? They're probably the, the, the greatest and earliest so civilizations. Yeah, yeah oh, I just hang up on about that a lot. Well, yeah. And it's like, that's slowing them down, I think. Unlike the yeah. English, we don't drone on about our great past. No, no but we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't think we should. Carl, Move on. you go on about doing boxing when you turned up once and got battered by Leroy. Yeah, because you asked me about it. But right. the thing is, they're constantly, it's like they haven't moved on. Uh, everywhere you go, you see the Sphinx or a mm. pyramid on right. something, and it builds it up too much. So that when you actually get there, you feel like you've seen it so many times that it doesn't impress you that much. But I like the, uh, you know, it's it's different. I like all the, you know, locals and stuff and the way they are and that. And that's that's oh, good, isn't they? it? Oh, are they? Just a uh, lot of old people. Yeah. A lot of old and the old and the young mix more than our, our lot do. Uh, there was only a couple of things that I didn't like and that was uh, the toilets. Toilets are pretty depressing. Sure. Why? What's up with them? Just, um, it's just a hole in the ground, isn't it? Right. 
and I, I like the toilet, it's sort of, you know, me time, and to mm. sort of go in one of them, you don't want to hang around, it's yeah. sort of, you just want to do the job and get out, but my insides don't work like that, they like to sort of relax a bit, and, <laughs> uh, and you can't do that there, because you've got flies whizzing around your head, and uh, there was one time when we were out and about, and I'd had a bit of hummus or something, because that's, you can't get away from all that, mm. I'd been dipping my bread in it, and I suddenly thought, oh, my belly feels funny. Mm. Got to find the toilet. Cut through this market. Didn't know one was there, but you sort of smell it. It's like really? I'm getting close to one. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> Go in. There's like like a fella sat there, really old. He must have been about ninety three, about two teeth. Uh, sat there with a rag, and you have to pay him to use the toilet. What's the rag for? He doesn't wipe your ass for you. I don't know. I don't know. But well, the, the, well, the toilet's he? never been cleaned by the looks of it. I had to give him like five Egyptian pounds, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is, but I don't know what he's doing for that money because <laughs> the place has never seen a mop. So I go in there open the door and it's like one of them holes in the ground, I go, oh god, can't use that. Push the next door open, that's the same, you know, get to the end one, open it, normal, normal toilet. All right, ding dong. Brilliant. Sit down there, do what I do, look round, no toilet paper. Oh no. He's waving the rag over the top of the cubicle. Yeah. More money. Ten pound. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh god, I'm thinking, can I just get up? Because it was quite a clean, you know, I, I thought- <laughs> It was to, quite a clean drop, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking- Don't you know, they use water though? Don't they use water? Well they have a hose pipe, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't it? fancy that. Well that's cleaner though, isn't it? A hose pipe, I really no, get a proper wash. Heck, Why? Heck. How can it be? <laughs> Why? Because that's just gonna, that's, that's not gonna clean it properly. It's gonna get rid of some bits, isn't it? It's like when you clean a car, yeah, use a hose, but where's a sponge? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So, uh, yeah, so oh you, God. you rinse just, off a plate, but then but you always just, give a little wipe as exactly, well. Exactly, but I like it. That's when the bloke knocks on the door and goes, You need sponge? Yes. <laughs> so I'm in there, I look at the door, there's no handle on the door. So I'm, I'm trapped in there anyway. Someone's oh, yeah. nicked the handle. So I can't open the door. I'm sat there, there's no toilet paper. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling like the people I'm out there with. Yeah. They've got the phones off because we're meant to be filming. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, Well, if I just wait, Eventually they'll they'll call. They'll panic, yeah. And uh, they did after about. Hello. Oh, it's Carl. What do you need? A uh, handle and some toilet paper, please. <laughs> so they, they called up and they had to come down. That they, that fella don't let you in unless you pay five Egyptians. So they and pay. they all had to pay five. I mean, I don't know why they all had to come in to see me. Like it's some. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit embarrassing. Going. Yeah. yeah. Did you bring? Yeah. Did they bring you some toilet paper then? Um, no. That what well, they got it from the like the fella with the. You oh, pay yeah, money to re you should, you should have paid for some right. on the way in. So I think yeah. that's what you do. But they don't, they don't give you a full, a full roll. They give you like a strip, right? Which I'm pretty wasteful with toilet paper. Mm, well, I, I prefer you learn, to do a good job, use it up, replace <laughs> it, rather yeah. than five sheets. I've never done that in my life. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> my brother taught me something when he was in the army. He said you used to have to sort of put your hand through it get it all, then use that paper to get it off your hand. What? When you're in the army, yeah. you're taught survival techniques. Right. And they said if you're a court with very little toilet paper. <laughs> it's a survival technique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like- yeah. What did he die? <laughs> Died of a dirty arse. <laughs> no. uh, hold on, wait a minute. Right, what is this technique? You get the toilet paper. Right. Use two sheets. Right. Fold it over so you've got, normally to one sheet is two ply. You've right. got four ply. Right. It's, it's, a sort of, it's like a bog glove, a bog paper glove. Yeah, so you put your hand through it so you make a hole. Yeah. What do you mean? Make you a hole? Make a hole so your hand goes through it. Yeah. Then you can wipe your, wipe your ass with that. What, and with then, your hand? Yeah, and then the toilet paper that's left, you pull it off like that and you wipe your fingers with it. So you've still got shit on your hand? <laughs> this is horrible! Yeah, why, don't you just wipe, why don't you just wipe your ass with the toilet paper? Because you've only got a couple of sheets because you're in the jungle, right? And it's so survival. Know, so, so, it's survival so what's the difference between wiping Maybe your you ass with your hand and trying to get shit off your hand, <laughs> or wiping your ass with the toilet paper and putting your fucking trousers up? I don't know why this is a technique. That's some sort of mad sergeant's idea. What I do, boys, is I like to smear shit all over my face and then use the one sheet of toilet to wash my face <laughs> off. It doesn't make any sense at all. Don't Should I suggest something for you? You like wiping your ass with your hand. You don't like paper and water. You like a sponge. One of those big foam hands that you see at sporting, <laughs> sporting events. events. So you just yeah. go in with that, like Kenny Everett. You go in there <laughs> with two big sponges. You sit down. You wipe your ass. You just leave. Yeah. Them, you just leave. And then you can cheer about it as you leave. <laughs> Whatever it will do. 
Be careful with the giant sponge finger that it doesn't go up the arse. And cause damage. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. In the last series of, uh, the Ricky Gervais Guide To's, maybe the last guide to ever, maybe the last audio book ever. Who knows? As you've seen, we've run out of ideas. Well, I've had enough. Yeah, so have I, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, that was about the environment, and we certainly recycled some old shit there. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Bye. And the global village idiot that is Carl Pilkington. Well, it's a, an important thing, isn't it, that, that um, my, uh, my mum, this is when she was about 60, 65, uh, there was a, a neighbour who was, uh, like, you know, 85, 90, and, um, again, completely alone, and my mum used to go on there every day, do you want any shopping, do it, right? She, she was, she was, she was good for us, she was like her witness in the world, you know, to her existence, but I remember calling her once, and, uh, She'd come back, I said, what have you been doing? She went, oh, I've been around so-and-so. So I went, all right. She went, oh, she won't die, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's helping yeah, her, but she's yeah, thinking, yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I was like, laughs> well, that's the problem, you know, if you if you get pally with an old person, yeah. Yeah, and you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is it? You, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start um, popping in is sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do if you're... It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> you could you just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you brought up weird people. There Go was on. a fella called Shorts, man. Right? <laughs> it's so pedestrian! Oh, I love the fact- Shorts man wore some shorts. Now, now, what I like, yeah, he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know like shorts now, for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's yeah. no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's go nothing on. gonna pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. <laughs> so that he what? knew, with the big strides and the short shorts, Yeah. they were gonna pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why were you looking at the shorts? Just because it was, it was like, it was but like, it was like playing Buckaroo. <laughs> it was like, when are they gonna pop out? But what? <laughs> It's just what happened. So, wh right, but so, shorts man, <laughs> so he was an exhibitionist, he liked, he basically wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah, and they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan, right? <laughs> now the thing is, what, what we like in England, I think we like that, we like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah, yeah. eccentric's very, that's very British, eccentric, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I'm glad I grew up around there with all them people, because so they're interesting. I. Well, there is a certain, uh, mindset about the you know, the great English, certainly the older English people. I mean, my grandparents are, you know, my grandfather died recently, but the amazing kind of eccentric, very English, seemingly, um, no friends from what I can identify. I don't know if this is unique to them or true of a lot of English people, uh, older people, They're terrified of what the neighbours might say. I always did that thing of speaking like that in case someone yeah. yeah. jacks in there. Yeah. Like the, like the neighbours are constantly listening in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got glasses against the wall, they're constantly listening into what my grand's got to say. Yeah. Um, they had about three teeth between them. It was extraordinary. <laughs> my grandfather had a, a plate of false teeth during the war that had a wooden pallet. A wooden upper wow. pallet with teeth on it. And those teeth slowly fell off during the course of the years. Never got, got replaced. So you, they'd sort of invite you to Sunday roast and they would g they would wake up at six in the morning to put the beef on and they wouldn't have it till six in the evening. <laughs> they would cook it. The biggest compliment you could have uh, if you made some food from the ground, if it was some beef would be, oh you so lovely this, so tender, you can suck it away. <laughs> she, if you could suck your Sunday roast through a straw, she was happy. Well, because you didn't have any teeth. Right, exactly. Basically they got to about the age of... 60 or something and it was as though they were just waiting to die it was strange they and they lived for another or my grandfather lived for at least another 25 years <laughs> <laughs> so it was you must have been gutted but in a, when my father uh, my father needed a winter coat a big heavy winter coat and he was thinking of buying one and um my grand said oh don't worry about that ron you can have your father's winter coat 
And um, he said, well, but, but you know, he's, he's still alive. What do you mean to him? You know, he, he needs it when it comes. She went, no, he'll be dead soon. Just don't, silly to waste it. Seems to waste it, you know, just wait. My father must have been waiting ten years for that winter coat. I love the fact he waited. You can, <laughs> you can see where did. Steve got it from. Of course Worth he waiting. did. Stupid, I'm waiting now. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you must be freezing. Well, I am cold, but I'll tell you, it's a lovely coat. <laughs> In English society, traditionally and now, is manners. Mm. I mean, obviously manners change, but etiquette. what is etiquette? What is good manners? Um, I think that a lot of that has been lost. Well, I was thinking the other day, have you ever heard of the finishing school? Carl? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Do you know that? Uh, no. The idea is that, you know, the sort of gentrified ladies, after they finished their education, they would go to finishing school where they would literally be taught, you know, how knives to- Knives and forks, walking with a book on your head, just things like that, what to say. I mean, that's I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, a year of being Eliza Doolittle, isn't yeah. it? Don't put your elbows on the table. You start you start from outwards, going inwards with cutlery. You know, you eat soup, the spoon goes away. There, there's things like the the fork. Uh, you're never meant to face those prongs uh, up. That you, so you either stab your peas, or you know, mm. there's ways of eating soup. You know, the spoon needs to be moving away from yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Scooping it up and bring it back to your mouth. I mean. It's crazy, but, you know, the people that subscribe to that stuff would look at the way you live your life, the way you eat your food, Carl, and would be appalled. Yeah, I thought In the same way we think that's absurd, they would think you're a disgrace. But it was, uh, as long as you're enjoying it. No, they would say no. Well, no, there are certain things that I can't stand. I can't stand eating with a mouth open. I think that's rude. I, 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 I banned chewing gum on the set of a film, because it, uh, I think it's rude. I think it's rude. Those people stand there talking to you. Yeah, but we all know you're a preposterous hypocrite. I mean, the way you no, eat food, come on. No, I don't eat with my mouth open. I don't, uh, I do eat with just my right hand, as mash it and scoop it in, but, the, but I see nothing wrong with that. I would say it was slightly rude when you're ordering the bill and getting up to leave yeah. when I'm still finishing my main course. Yeah. I'd say there was a touch of rudeness But I go into that. a restaurant to eat. Yeah, but you're supposed to wait when you're with the other people and let them finish as well. This is my ideal restaurant. It is empty. They know what I want, and it's waiting for me when I walk in. I leave, still chewing, and I go put it on my bill. That's yeah. the ideal restaurant for me. Yeah, you're pretty much there. From yeah, I, I try. Tell. I try, and that's what I try and try and do. Yeah, um, but you know, there are certain things. I am one for manners. I think I, I hate rudeness. I hate lateness. I hate all those things. But some of them are ridiculous. The elbows on the table is arbitrary. Why? I mean, there's a reason you say please and thank you. Because it shows courtesy. Um, th those make sense. There's a reason you don't talk when you're eating, because it goes over and it's disgusting. There's a reason you don't lick your fingers and then put it back in the chips, because it's someone else has got to share that. But don't put your elbows on the table or or start with that fork. I think it's ludicrous. You know, there's those rules when you meet a member of the royal family. For instance, if you were at the royal variety before and you met the queen, mm. there's various rules they yeah, tell you, you about. Yeah, you don't fart or call her love. <laughs> exactly, for, for one. But also, you don't speak until you're spoken to, you have to do a slight bow. I was, um, invited to the, the palace a couple of times. The first time was after the office sort of broke, and I got an invite, um, a company of the, Her Majesty the Queen would like you to come to a, one of those dinner parties, and, um, I know what you're thinking, why didn't you get one? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, 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 wait, 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 I was, I was a big shot quicker than you, because I was in it. Um, don't forget, you didn't appear until, um, but uh, even series so, two. If we'd, if we'd split the atom, they would <laughs> invite both of us. <laughs> Not just a guy who does the press conference. <laughs> so, so, the thing came through and I thought, oh, I don't, I didn't, I, I was worried about it to be honest. Um, but it just said, I will be attending, I will not be attending tick the box and I couldn't bear to just tick I would not be attending because it was too harsh so there was a RSPV number and I phoned up and it was obviously the the head of the house or a butler or I, d I don't know someone who, and he went hello Buckingham Palace and I said hello it's Ricky Gervais I just got an invite to come and uh, um and I said it sounds weird but I couldn't bear to just tick I would not be attending um I just went, he went well you're the first person ever to bother to do that thank you so much I went, oh, um, my pleasure, sorry I can't make it. And, but, I, I don't think that's weird. It is strangely brutal. It is strangely brutal, isn't it? I wonder if they've changed it by now. Yeah, there's a little asterisk. Thanks to Ricky Gervais, <laughs> it now says, 
<laughs> I am too fat and lazy and busy eating cheese to visit your majesty. Uh, what I think is this, that no one's ever tipped I will not be attending. Right, yeah. So it was never a problem. Until, so why until, did you not want to go? Um, I don't know, I just thought it was a bit intense and um, I'd, be, I'd turned down all those things. I, I think I would like to go now just to look around. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just felt a bit funny just being invited there. I, I was invited to all those things at the uh, um, Downing Street as well mm. and I just thought, you're inviting me because I'm on the telly now because I'm famous. Well, where was my invite when I was on the doll? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With respect, I wouldn't have invited you <laughs> <laughs> circa 1983. <laughs> no, I haven't got a problem with, um, you know, going to Palace or, um, except I do have a problem with sort of being wheeled around as, as a celebrity. Because I used to think if I was ever invited uh, to get given an MBE or a knighthood or something, I'd be like, nah, I'm not part of the system, you know, I'm a rebel, I'm outside. Now I think it would be be quite cool. Well, I only think it's a problem so for a comedian because, you know, we're sort of meant to dish it out and it's difficult to dish it out if you're being seen. What I do find weird is the idea of having to bow and scrape before people because I'm told to do that. Well, like, I, 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 I what I find is that idea of I'm, I'm, a, I'm obligated to be respectful to such a degree just because someone's the queen. Like, obviously, I'd always be respectful, but why can't I speak when she turns up? What I don't understand. That's how I find a strange what idea. What would you say though? Well, I just say you know, honour to meet you, Majesty. But you know, I don't understand why I can't initiate that. Why? If I, but I, I don't find think it she'd weird. mind that if if you went if you went honour to meet you before she'd spoken. What she's going to say? She's going to go, cheeky cunt. <laughs> I talks first, lanky. <laughs> Same problem here. I've had work done recently <laughs> with uh, Dad. What? How to get rid of a body? Let me call out. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked done recently. Right? Bathroom retiled. Yeah. Right? It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. So then, like, he sort now, of finishes- grout? Is that another mate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, after they put, like, the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet. Yeah. And now it's there, the grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it, drain the water No, off. it won't seem to go around the U-bend. Well, it's no, you'd there. get it out there, you'd dry it off, wouldn't you, so there's no water in there. Well, just stick your oh, hand in. Get your of... hand in there. Why don't you put a, a, a Well, last time I did that, once, last time you called up when I had my hand down a grid and you were going, what are you doing? Get someone out to do that. Yeah, but it's just putting a marigold on and taking the screw out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the screw's not a problem. I'm not that bothered about it's that. Still I'm down there, about though, the is it? Yeah, the screw's there, yeah. So you could have taken that out, no problem. Yeah, but it's half a job, that, isn't it? I want to get rid of the grout first and I'll get rid of the screw. Yeah. But I will, I'm not scared about putting. You, you called up here, I was oh, up to my shoulder, Steve, in like. Lunge. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, no, what, annoys me, what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm going to use that for flannimals, mate. Yeah, so you're up to your arm in Glunge. Yeah. Yeah, and Ricky called, and it's again, it was in Kent. The bloke had done the kitchen, been pouring down cement into the grid outside. I'm sort of washing up, look outside, loads of water all over the place. I mean, right. What's going on here? Yeah. I go out there, all the water's like, because it runs to a grid outside, you know that sort of system? Yeah. Yeah. It's not flo it's not going down, is it? Sure. There's loads of water there. Right. So I call up the main fella, who does the kitchens, there's a message there, sorry, I'm away in Cyprus. Right. So I can't get hold of him. Right. So he's, he's balls it up, but he's on holiday now, he doesn't want to know. <laughs> There's all this, like I say, gloopy stuff. Lunch. I'm, I'm scooping that up with my hand. Up, seriously, must be close to my shoulder. Right. Not, not my problem really. But all these people, you're saying recycle properly. Don't pour stuff. Um, all these bottles you get now, Demestos, it has like little pictures of dolphins looking unhappy because people are pouring bleach down a sink or whatever. I've, I've never had that problem. I've never upset a dolphin. <laughs> but I know if I hadn't sorted that out, it would have caused loads of problems for me and the neighbour, and it would have been my problem. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not that selfish, really, when it comes to the environment start of the people around Start using me. reliable tradesmen, and please. also he still was. start caring about the dolphins, please, because they're all we've got on this planet. <laughs> Why don't you care about what's happening? What are we going to swim with if not the dolphins? Yeah, I'm gonna swim with one. It's never going to happen. Never well, going to happen. What if you had a little div, right? Didn't have long to live. What do you want to do? And he went, 
Them as dolphins. So you don't want to do that? I go, oh, Uncle Carl killed them all. With Domestos. They're all bleached It'd and be blind. some other animal. Anyway, it's not about the dolphins, it's about the ocean, isn't it, that the dolphins are in. I told you, if dolphins were in the Thames, they wouldn't be that keen jumping in there saying, oh, let's swim with a dolphin. <laughs> right. Says you want to swim with a carrier bag in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> It makes no difference. <laughs> I'd love to see that on Noel Edmonds. <laughs> We've got a little kid here, what's your name? Andrew. And uh, you want to go swimming? Yeah. What with? Dolphin. Okay, well we can't, <coughs> uh, we no, can't no arrange a dolphin. They yeah. will die out because of environmental oh. ignorance. Would you like to swim with the carrier bag? <laughs> well good, we can do that. You can chuck it in the pond, get in. And you can take him out with you after and you can be your best friend. <laughs> Come on, Tesco. You know, you know that's the problem, don't you? That's why, do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in, I was in the supermarket yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd, uh, <laughs> they'd turn round and said, do you want a carrier bag? And I said, yeah, I'd bought like milk, loaf, I think I bought some uh, pikelets. Some uh, what? <laughs> that's a pikelet! It's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> There's a word I'd get rid of. Pikelet. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I can, I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do yeah. not need a specific, specific thin word. Crumpet. But, uh, uh, these, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? Too thin. <laughs> Call it a pikelet. The thing is, fuck off. I'd, I'd spent over a tenner anyway. Right. right. I get to the what, till. It, can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> it's tough what to. If, I've tried that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No? I've, I've tried how squashing thick a crumpet. It is a crumpet that you need a thin it Depends one. where you go. They've got thicker. I'm not, I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. <laughs> Why? Because the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've, I've cut them out of my diet. Have you? <laughs> yeah, well, you you're straight to pikelets now, is it? It's also pikelets. because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought all this stuff. It's over a tenner. Uh, she said, you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Yeah. She <laughs> said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the pikelets. I, no, I'm right behind this. Right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carry bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, like, Lazy bastards. I take carry bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carry reuse, bags. Reuse, I use no, them. Reuse Steve, them. can I put, just put a question in? Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Oh. But, I didn't know, <laughs> I was on my way home from work that day. Fine. Yeah. So but this is the problem. Up. So be it. So That's go you bought Come with a nose. Five P, otherwise you carry yeah. one with you. And you've got another one. And you got right, one so I said, oh. I said, how's that gonna work? How's my five pence gonna help the environment? Typical. That is the attitude. That sums it up, doesn't it? Sums it up. It's the turtles. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles. That's right, they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. She said, she said. They think they're a jellyfish and they go, oh, they swallow it, yeah, and they choke. So I said, right, so it's all right, I can, I can kill a turtle, can I, for five pence? You're not that bothered then? Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags, if you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence, I'll go and kill a turtle. <laughs> That's what's annoying me. <laughs> it's not compulsory though, is it? Th but what they're saying is that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? What? If they're the- What's it going towards? Well, we don't know why are they. She just five told pence? me. She said we can't give you carry bags anymore because you're killing turtles. See, there's no way. She <laughs> said we can't give you Carl Pilkinson. Stop killing fucking turtles. Five pence. All I'm saying is, if carrier bags are killing turtles, stop making carrier bags. Because the thing is, I can afford two carrier bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been going in there. <laughs> so, so, what, so d does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? They could be for that 5p, you could get a little fella out there, when he sees a turtle going <laughs> he goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? <laughs> wow, <laughs> will they? Carrier bag's better, innit? <laughs> uh, if I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Mm. So I think you've got to have some rules. Right. Which rules would you repeal that already exist, that you don't like? Uh, it's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> So fly tipping, you'd like to see more fly tipping. What, what, what do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house and just like you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was it was a good way of recycling. Now they say recycle, but we're not recycling, it's just being put in a bin.
So you'd like to see more fly tipping? <laughs> no, not, you see, you, you That's see, all we needed, London, like, more rubbish. This is, this is the problem, you see, look what's happened. Look what's happened to what I've said, it's been taken the wrong way. Right. I'm not saying tip, I'm not saying chuck your bin bags out the door and let crisp packets go everywhere. I'm saying if you've got old furniture, you should be allowed to leave it outside your house. Without the council going, move that, it's dangerous, someone's gonna trip over it. Mm. Well, if right. you trip over it, it should've been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? Huh? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over them and smack their face in. What if a woman with a couple of kids in pushchairs has to go out into the road yeah. to get past and your get, piece of junk? And get crushed. No, because I'm I'm leaving it, I'm not leaving it on the on the pavement. What you just said you were, where are you leaving it? Sort of outside the house. Right. In well, your front garden, well, who's going to take it from there? That's just thieving. No, sort of just Where are you leaving it? Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because uh, so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything? Definitely not. They're, they're better on the feet than some people, because they're more cautious, aren't they? So- It'd Make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second-hand shop or because send they won't, it to they a don't come, Steve. They Honestly, will. they don't. They I've will. I've called up people and they're saying, "Yeah, we'll be there in an hour." And I say, "Right, I'm going to put it out on the street." And are you going to come and get it? Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. Suddenly, just blind the council all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor, bloody noses. Then the council said, "I call them up. Do you want to shift it?" Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You have to stay with it. Suddenly, I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of Saint George, the patron saint? What's your take on that? Is he the one who killed a dragon? Right. Tell us the story. There was a dragon problem. Mm -hmm. um, Where? Must have been in England. Right. Um, George took it on, he took on the job, he was like a rent -a kill <laughs> uh, <laughs> he came out. The interesting thing with him is, right, he was a hero then. I honestly think if he did that now, there'd be an uproar. Because he's the last, he's the last dragon. It's the same way we try to save the panda and all that now. If he came out and said, I've done it, and they've gone, done what? Yeah. They've just killed the last dragon, they'd, they'd go mental. They'd be marches. <laughs> idiot! Bloody idiot! <laughs> and that's what's interesting. But it was, it was going around burning people. Doesn't matter, we should have, we shouldn't have killed the last one. It's the last one! And that's no, what we'd be they, like. You say, you should have saved it, you should have captured it and put it in a cage so we can all look at it There's no stuff. point, it couldn't have bred anyway, it was the last one. Was it definitely the last one? <laughs> Well, you were saying it was the last one, I'm not bothered either way. Well, hang on, what, to sorry, me, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you think that there were dragons? Well, why are we celebrating then? Well, it could be a metaphor, a dragon slayer. It could be, um, a, a bad thing amongst us. It could be a foreign threat. It could well, be things that threaten our... Ne it could be anything. It could... It's not, it's not to be taken literally, is but it? But the real legend of George was that he was a figure who, uh, stood up for Christianity. Doesn't have you ever done anything brave? There was a kid at school who used to have epileptic fits a lot, and uh, the teacher used to always say, if it happens, grab his tongue. And I sort of had a go at that once. His tongue. His tongue? Yeah. What, it was, what, what, what do you have a tongue for? To pick stuff up? What do you mean a tongue? His tongue in his mouth. Oh, his tongue. Oh, his tongue. Yeah. Right, go on. And they used to say, if, if, he starts, if he starts doing it, uh, grab his tongue and that. Yeah. And, and I sort of had a go at that once, and it was wasn't nice. Well, how'd you grab it? Well, you grabbed his tongue, did you? Well, I tried to. It's like grabbing a slug. <laughs> and plus his mouth's going up and down like you think he's gonna have me handy. So you sort of do that thing where you go- So you were fact, you were trying to grab hold of a kid's tongue, yeah? And he was- He was throwing himself all, all over the place. It was in a physics lesson. I sort of had a go and then I thought, this isn't happening. So I just sort of kept putting my hand in like I'm having a go, but I, I, in my head I was going, I'm not gonna get hold of it. What you could have used is a pair of tongs. Well, firstly, I don't see why this is brave. Uh, kids have an epileptic, epileptic fit and you're just supposed to help them out. I don't know why that's bravery, but even given that, the fact that you were thinking more about yourself in that situation than this other kid. You were thinking, I'll make it look like I'm helping, but I'm not really. And yet this is kid having well, an I epileptic did, fit. Well, I did at the beginning. Doesn't that sum you up, Carl? Selfish. No, no, it doesn't. Because I, I, I didn't, no one else was having a go. At least I did try and grab it you at one point. You weren't doing anything. You were just making it look like you were. It's, have you ever tried to grab a tongue? <laughs> It's like chasing a chicken. It's murder. <laughs> and after a while, it wears you out. 
And it was weird anyway, because he was like, <laughs> I, 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 what was he doing it for? I don't know. Like, where did he go after hours of chasing this kid's tongue? I love the idea of you ever trying to grab in a tongue. Is a, is a valid question. I love that he's annoyed. He's annoyed that this what poor you, kid's What was your technique? Were you trying to grab it? Just, sort of just like? with your thumb and your, what's it, finger? Like, like, yeah. a, like a pincher thing. Yeah. But it was, because his mouth's going down and. and was all he, like, is he shouting or just. No, just throwing himself around. So that's your one attempt at bravery. Well, hang on a minute. Let me just think of Trying to else. grab a tongue. There was a time you were chased by a bee and you scored a goal. Oh, what about that? <laughs> that, that? That isn't really bravery, is it? As you were, as you were running away from a bee and the ball happened to hit your oh, foot and go in. Oh, that kind of is bravery. I love it when he goes up to the pearly gates and goes, as well, you know, have you done the act of courage? Uh, I pretended to grab a tongue. <laughs> a what? A tongue. A tongue, yeah. Uh, got chased by a bee, scored a goal. It doesn't count as brave at all. Well, what have you ever done? Well, it's a good question. I thought of some of them. When I was a kid on the beach, um, there was a, a baby, like a toddler, I was about 12, and uh, they were out, their little boat was going out, the mother missed it and they were miles out, and the mother was sort of distraught, and I swam out, and uh, I was a good swimmer then, and I pulled it in, right, and she bought me a box of chocolates. It's not enough, is it? What? It's not enough box of chocolates. I'd have been furious. Really? I'd have wanted a lot more. I didn't expect anything. No, it was like when I found that old lady's purse and I sent it back to her and she didn't. She sent me a little thank you note, but nothing. No cash, nothing. I was furious. I thought, come on, I've just, I've kept, I could have kept that purse. I sent really? it back to you. I, did, I need more than a little thank you note. I didn't. I didn't expect anything. I was. I was sort of. Uh, I wasn't even particularly proud of myself because I just thought, well, I could just. I could just do it. It, what, I mean, if it happened now, I'd go, what's in it for me? I've just eaten. <laughs> exactly. I'd go, is that your kid? They're miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got less brave. He's I've got out. more scared of the world, yeah. The things I used to do, jump off sheds, I used to jump down flights of stairs to see if I could do it, walk along, walk, you know, all those things that kids do. And, um, and you lose your nerve, I think, after. Apparently, if you haven't bungee jumped by your 30, you never will. Really? Yeah, you sort of, I think it's a sensible gene kicks in. I, I'm pretty sensible. Yeah, you think, well, this is not worth dying for, don't do it, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh. I think having glasses prevents me from doing a lot of things. No, seriously, because it's hard to be brave with glasses. Because <laughs> if I stepped into the middle of a fight and there's people being bullied and I stepped in, <laughs> my glasses come off, that's it. <laughs> No, now I'm just being bullied as well. But I'm also yeah. blind in this, so I'm just crawling. It's very hard to strike fear into your opponents when you're crawling around on the floor looking for your frames, going, "Don't step, don't tread lightly, tread lightly." That's totally oh. quick there. Oh god, I love that when you took up judo and you think you overheard the yeah. judo instructor say, "Just knock his glasses off." Just knock his glasses off. But why are you? Why are you? Who are you, Woody Allen? What are you doing in this scenario? Why are you stepping into the dojo wearing a pair of glasses? Well, how anyway? am I supposed to do judo without? Where am I supposed well, to? Well, they come off immediately. But what am I supposed to do? Not do any form of martial art because of the glasses? I don't know. Actually, I haven't thought about that. Exactly. This is the problem, isn't it? People don't think that. You never see boxers with glasses. Well, of course you don't. Right. Exactly. So I got no kind of athletic role models in that way, except. Dennis Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, a man with glasses. Me and my glasses. Hey, so tell you this, I could I could write a book on the difficulties of having glasses. But I suppose it's completely affected your life, hasn't of it? it? Has. Everything you do. Of course it has. Absolutely. Fashion, fashion. Yeah. Um, certain sport, dancing, moshing. Can't go in the mosh pit. Can't, you know, I've always wanted to jump on the stage, you know, <laughs> take my shirt off and then jump back in and everyone catches you and they sort of, you sort of sway along on top of everyone's hands. Can't do it, the glasses would come flying off. But how do you swim in the I'd sea? I'd have to hand them to the singer and then do it. <laughs> I, I went to, um, I was in India recently, I went to Goa and I got myself a pair of prescription goggles. Could not believe my luck. It's revolutionised my swimming experience. Alright. Goggles which have got the same lenses in as my glasses so I can all right. see alright. That's good. Went in there. Uh, literally, I, and they're pricey as well. Went in the water, within Love seconds, it. giant wave had come over, and it was crazy, it was like real all over again. It ripped off both my trunks and my goggles, they went flying off my head. What? No, I, I can only grab one of them. My like trunks have my never trunks. come off. Maybe once well, I've dived in, they come no, down a they, little bit. They came loose and they slipped down, thus revealing penis. Goggles came off. I off. reckon you're but like you know shorts, what? man. I think you've been doing it on purpose. You know how most swimmers. Tie your shorts up, Steve. <laughs> no, I'm just going to see. But if they well, come off, you know, if they come off, then you might see something. You know how most uh, swimming goggles would float. Yeah. My prescription is so dense <laughs> <laughs> that they just sunk straight to the bottom. If I should die, think only this of me. 
that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts, by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter, learnt of friends and gentleness, in hearts at peace, under an English heaven. Rupert Brooke, The Soldier. What an, what an amazing poem that is. Yeah. It's a shame you read it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Learn English with Ricky Gervais. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Carl Pilkington. I won't be speaking your language, I won't be translating what I say, I'll just be speaking English, okay? The translation will come up on the bottom of the screen. This is my friend, Carl Pilkington. He is bold. He is bold. He has no hair. Carl Pilkington has no hair. Yeah, I know. They can see I've got no hair. No, I know. Well, what, what do they need to know that for? If they learn a, a language, yeah. bald isn't a, a bald head isn't isn't that important. Teach him how to ask for bread or milk. We'll get to that. But this is about sort of friendship and family, you know. So it's all useful. There's so many words, you know. They might as well start somewhere. There's too many words. A lot of words. Lot of words. <laughs> so you say it. Carl Pilkington is bold. Carl Pilkington has got a head like a fucking orange. Right, I, I really don't know why they need to learn this. Because they might need to say that one day. No, but I get enough abuse now from English people. I don't want Chinese suddenly turning up going, bought fucking orange. <laughs> Teach them how to say milk. I need milk. Milk for tea. Coffee. Teach them useful stuff. Okay, well, do, well, 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 go on, teach them something then. Who am I talking to? People around the world, they can't speak English yet. So what are they... Well, so, Chinese, Chinese well, doesn't it do, Okay, what? I've been to China and none of them know English. Right. So they need to learn English. Okay. So, um, what would they want to know? You see, they don't need to know about milk because they don't like milk. They think English people smell of milk. They smell of milk. <laughs> smell. What does smell mean, Carl? Smell. Um, stink. Fucking hell, you smell. Rank. <laughs> Rank. Rank. So, you've got a Chinese fella, he's coming over here, and he's learned the word rank, meaning you stink. Smell. Stank. Stunk. <laughs> that stunk. <laughs> Give an example. Um. You smell. You shit. <laughs> Why are you teaching them? Pretty because you like... told me you said they want to know about smell. Yeah, right. But why are you teaching them without prepositions and proper grammar? Why are you teaching them to speak like this? Mmm, stink, you shit. Why are you teaching them to speak, uh, to just speak proper English? Right, okay then. Um... Always speak proper English. Okay, tell them. Um... So what, what do they want to know? Well, what's, what smell mean? This, okay, smell. This is about, so we're featuring okay, the word okay, right, smell. Right. Smell. This is about the word smell. Right, when something smells, they know what it means. It's when something um, stinks. When well, it's no, off. it doesn't always mean that, because it, it's also a verb. Oh, right, a nice smell. It's also a verb to smell. It's a verb. Smell is a verb. Yes, but what they've got to remember is if they go up to someone and go, you smell, 
it's not always positive. You right. wouldn't, you, you, you say you smell nice. Right. But if you say you smell, they'll get a smack in the face. Smack in the face. Smack in the face. Carl, what's a smack in the face? When someone thumps you. Thump. <laughs> <laughs> the worst English lesson ever. Right, okay. Uh, do you... <laughs> okay. What would they want to let you see? That's why we've got to focus on. Are we focusing on Chinese? No. Well, Just... we should because different people want different things. Right. So what would Chinese want? They come to England. Right. What do they want? Why are you talking to me like I can't understand? Because English I'm now? trying to think how what to be clear to them. Okay. So I'm okay. dropping out. So forget where they come from, wherever they come from in the world, they all want the same things. No, okay? but but words don't mean the same thing. At certain places, there's people where it stinks in the world. They wouldn't come to England and need to say it smells because they're from a smellier place. No, they're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> milk. Let's do milk. Okay. Let's do milk for anyone who isn't English. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, okay. We will act out a scenario now where you might need milk. Okay. Okay. Hello, Carl. All right. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, strong. What tea bags have you got? <laughs> that is a that is a that is a question I ask because it all depends on the amount of milk. Do you have Thai foo? That means more milk. <laughs> thai foo does not mean more milk. No, it's a very strong tea bag. Right, twinings, little bit. This of isn't. They don't need to know the details. This isn't a travel guide. This is just. This is English for people right, who start can't speak. Start again. Then. Okay. Hello, Carl. Hiya. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. I'm gasping. How do you like it? Strong, no sugar. Tea bag, okay? What? Yeah, tea bag, yeah. Well, that should be all right. Would you like some milk? Just a drop. A drop, not much. Would you like semi-skimmed milk? Yeah. Skim, semi-skimmed milk. Whoa. It's all right, that. Carl is enjoying his tea. He had it strong with a drop of milk. So, that's the basics uh, uh, in England. We like to drink tea. We drink tea. We also drink coffee. We also drink beer. Let's go shopping. So, uh, I'll, I'll just come into a shop. Okay. Drink. Afternoon. Hello. Hiya. I want a fish. What sort of fish do you want? We've got loads. What sort of fish are there? Loads. I haven't got time, to be honest. You've come in at a busy time. And did, uh, have a look and come back to me. And, I don't uh, know what... What type of fish is this? That's a, a kipper. Okay. A kipper. What's a kipper? Chinese and Japanese know fish really well. Okay. They don't need, need Stop. to... Thinking we're just talking to Chinese and Jap I don't know where the Japanese came from. It's something it was just Chinese people. This is for anyone who wants to learn English. Anywhere around the world. They might be Spanish. They might be French. They might be German. Okay? Why do you only care about the Chinese learning about this? Because most Spanish people can speak English. They've been taught it. But right. all right, kipper. Okay. It's a fish. It's sort of um, a fishy sort of fish. There's some fish that's more meaty. Tuna. What sort of thing are you after today? Is this for you or for someone else? This is for me. I'd like to buy a fish, please. Right, but, you've, but surely you know what kipper is. Look at it. Look at the fish. Here it's called kipper. Where are you from? I don't speak English. I'd just wrap any old shit up and give it... <laughs> you like this. Tenor. Rip you off. Because I'm busy, and that's what happens in this country. 
That's what they want to be careful of if they're watching this. If you come into England, don't be ripped off, rip off, conned, taken advantage of. Um, done up like a kipper. Done up like a kipper. Look at this foreigner. I done him up like a kipper. This is when English gets complicated because kipper, a lot of English words, can mean many things. Um, where? Where? Same word, different thing. Wearing. Where have you been? I'm wearing a jumper. Where have you been? Where? Brilliant. One word, two meanings. At the spa. Hello. I'd like to book an appointment for a treatment. Okay. When are you, um, when are you thinking? Um, we're busy all today. Tomorrow? Can we just do it today? Can it just be available now? Can't we just do it that it's available now? There's nothing... It's, well, it's... alright, I can fit you in. Someone hasn't turned up yet, so we can get you in, sort of, in ten minutes. Okay. Right. Okay. <clears throat> what would you like? Um, I would like... a back, crack and sack waxing, please. I would like my back waxed, my crack waxed, and my sack waxed. Right. Do you do the treatments yourself? No. I'd like you to. Well, I can't. Why not? Because I have to be on reception, taking calls. Well, okay. You can't request who's doing your sack, your crack, <laughs> or your back. There's a woman in the back who does your crack. <laughs> well, um... You <laughs> fucking insane. Right, that's enough. Wait, isn't it? No, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know who's going to learn anything. Wait, from wait, this. wait, wait. Okay. So, okay, wait, right, okay. Okay. Well, ask me some questions. Right? Okay. Well, I, I don't okay. have to ask you any questions. I said okay. you can be going in 10 minutes. Okay. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm a working. Actually, I'm not paid or qualified to be sorting your wait, ass out. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, okay. <laughs> actually, thinking about it, the hair on my crack hasn't grown back, nor has the hair on my back. But my sack is very hairy. Wait. My sack is very hairy. Um, I, I don't need my back waxed or my crack waxed, but I need my sack waxed. Right. Now, I'm surprised you haven't done it yourself. Because it's the back and the crack that's the difficult bit. The sack you can do yourself. Oh. And to be honest, it should all be growing at the same time. No. So there's something wrong with you. No. You've got a hairy bollock. <laughs> when your back, is, your back is lovely and bald. Right. You don't need it doing... Bald. Bald. Oh, fuck's my, sake. my back is bald. Yeah. My crack is bald. My sack needs waxing. Right. Um, right. It's quite an emergency. My balls are very hairy. Can I have them waxed, please? Yes. How much just for the balls? <laughs> Fifteen pounds. For Fifteen two. pounds for the both. For two. Okay, yes. that's good. So seven fifty each. It's seven fifty. Yeah, but we don't split it. That's that's the price. Yes. Yes. You can't have one done. No, it's I have 15 two. Pounds. I have two balls. I have two balls. How many balls do you have, Carl? Two. Carl has two balls. Are your balls hairy? Average. Okay. Which is strange because Carl's balls are hairy, but he is bald on his head. His head looks like a ball. His head looks like a bald testicle. Carl has a head like a bald testicle, but his testicles aren't bald. Okay. How long will it take to wax my balls? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So it's um, fifteen pounds and ten minutes. Um, can you do it? Can you can you do it now, please? No, I won't be doing it. You'll Why? be meeting Leslie in the back room. Uh, oh, I don't really. I'm a little bit shy. I know you. Could you? You don't know me. You've just turned up. 
Could you wax my balls? No! I'm not waxing your balls. Bollocks. Uh, scrotum. Um, what else is the Test eye. <laughs> if you're having one done. <laughs> Bollocks. Sack. Oh. Okay, okay, right, we've done, done that waxing, okay. At the doctor's. Hello, doctor. Hello. I have a pain. Okay, what's, where, whereabouts is the pain? My anus. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> None of this is worth using learning in a language. You go home. If you're ill, go home. No, if... if, if a foreign fella is in this country. He and can they... go to the doctors and use our, sis, our NHS system if he had an achy ass. He'd get on the first flight home. Why aren't you going travelling? You're here as a tourist. Yes. Yeah? Right, we'll see London. Instead of worrying about your airy bollocks, see the London Eye. The London Eye. <laughs> Tower of London. These are things that are going to be useful to them. Okay. Tower of London. London Eye, Buckingham Palace, the Queen. I've never been on holiday and had to have my anus seen to. I haven't had to have it seen to whilst I'm here, at home. Give them useful words. Fromage. Why are you teaching them a French word if we're teaching them English? I'm just saying useful phrases. Right. Uh, I've got a headache. Okay. Um, what would you do? Okay. What scenario would you do to teach them? Who Carl are you? will now teach you a useful scenario. Yeah, who are you? Any, anyone you want me to be. What do you want to do? The bins haven't been emptied. Who? Uh, and, and, okay. Who are you? You're making this scenario up. This so, is who, your... so who are you then? The council? It's up to you. Right, you're my neighbour. Okay. Why do you keep putting bins out? The bin men doesn't come till Thursday. You keep putting bins I'm out. I'm sorry, Carl. I'm very sorry. I'm a bit of trouble. I woke up this morning and it's the worst it's ever been. I've got a distended. I've got a prolapse left. I've distended. My testicles are very, very low because I'm old. I'm blanketed. Yeah, the, all right. Listen, can you just put the bins out on a Thursday? I can't put the... My, my balls yeah. are so low because I'm an old man. But can you put the bins out on a third? The bin men doesn't come till a Thursday, it's Tuesday. You're putting bins out too early, there's foxes getting at them, there's shit all over the place. There's dirty underpants you keep putting in the bin. I've told you, it attracts foxes. Stop putting the fucking bins out two, two fucking days early when they've got to sit there and it attracts you. I'm trying to sell me flat. There's dirty, shitty undies all over the fucking pavement. Mm. This has happened to you, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, it has. What did you they do? They don't give a shit. They don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> we hope that's been useful for you. So when you visit England, you can talk just like an Englishman. Thank you for learning English with Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington. See ya. See ya. Right, yeah, we're running. I'm happy we're rolling. Oh. <coughs> so, Carl, um, against all odds and despite a fair few um, of your efforts, mm. you are now a much-loved TV presenter, hugely popular. Um, millions of people love you. Mm. How are you coping with the fame element? Um, I, there isn't... There, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, nothing's changed, uh, you know, apart from car insurance going up. And... Uh, just be able to get a bargain in a shop. If you want to knock the price down, you can't do that once you're sort of known. People go, you made of money. I'm not. You can use this. That's the, that's the exclusives for you. I, I'm not made of money. Doing all right. I'm not moaning. I know people are having it tough. You are moaning. moaning. You're moaning all no, the time. I'm not, I'm not you never moaning. stop moaning. That's what you do. You only moan. That's your job. That's why this show's so good. Well, you say you can't get a bargain. How much were those trainers? Oh, 45 pence. 45 pence? In right. Africa. In Africa. That's what he gave. But look That's what he gave to, to someone who was selling some trainers in Africa. Could have even been 50p. He you was over have... the moon with that. Uh, Ricky and Steve, you knew him before he was famous. Um, has his head, while remaining obviously perfectly spherical, got any larger? No, not at all. 
No, he's got. I suppose he's got slightly more militant mm. in his old age. But that's funny because now we're coming up with things so extreme, so dangerous, so ridiculous, so annoying. But he won't back down because he doesn't want to give me the satisfaction of failing. So this second series is incredible. I mean, he's doing things that I never thought he'd ever do or we'd get him to do. But he does them. And, um, yeah, it's uh, quite remarkable. Like you were saying earlier, if, if we put some weird food down in front of you, you just eat it defiantly now because you don't want to give us... Yeah, yeah. yeah. not a problem. Nothing matters. He uh, shows that people worry about the silliest things in the world. That's what's changed. That. The, uh, I can eat anything. Um, you which can is eat weird. Anything. Yeah, I can eat anything. So if it, if it does all go tits up and I don't do a third series and I spend all my money, I know I'll survive. Because now, if I'm homeless, anything that's crawling about, I'll have it. <laughs> Could you eat a knob at night now? I wish I never said that, honestly. <laughs> it's the one thing I ate. What was it that David Bedeal said that time? Um, when you, you were saying, um, we, we were having dinner, and uh, Carl was around, and David Bedeal was around, and Carl was going, I've done nothing. He's just on the radio, he said nothing. And David Bedeal went, no, you did that song, Knob at Night. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's how I still feel. I don't feel like I've achieved anything that I'm really, really proud of. <laughs> I would have done with this if it wasn't called Idiot Abroad, I think. Mm. But that's just a little bit of... You've tainted it yeah. a little bit. Um, but it's an ironic title. You're not Yeah, I don't like it, though. Carl. I don't like it. Carl. You're a genius. And I wanted to change it, and then Sky Bosses are going, oh, it's established, we've got to stick with it. I fly. Now, Ricky says you're a genius, but you, uh, and you're obviously great mates, but you, do, you guys do give him a lot of stick about his physical appearance as well. Just from um, that particular screening, Little Bald Wookie. Um, obviously, head like a fucking orange. That's mm. that's well known. Mm. Shaved Mancunian idiot. This is like this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's well known. That shouldn't be well known, yeah. should it? Yeah. That shouldn't be well known. <laughs> Carl, oh God. Carl, oh. this is your your chance to to get back if you like. Uh, what what phrases would you use to describe their physical appearance, Ricky? First. To be fair, though, I've had a go at you. <laughs> Yeah, but also I'd like to point out I don't. It's Ricky who, who insults him. I don't call him. I don't call you names. I mean, I might sort of stand behind him and sort of cheer him on, you like do. the worst kind of bully's mate. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to show you how good I am. I'm not even going to. No, he's. A, he, if you I'm listen back on the old radio shows, he's yeah. always having a go. At he me. has a go. At, he said when he first met Steve, he said it was a shock. He said that first thing. He said, "Oh, that's a shock." So well, what do you mean? He said, "Well, I've never seen anything like it before." He's telling him to his face. Then he's putting on air that Steve's weird looking. Okay, so he started it. But, like, in the same way that you've sent me on these trips to make me stronger, mm. I think me saying that has done himself up a bit. Yes. Oh. No, he's, he's, he's... Oh, look at you. Yeah. So, in a way, you, yeah. you've made me a better person. He went right? from a weird little goggle-eyed freak to sort of Clint Eastwood. Yeah. God, I suppose I have, in a way. Hang Thanks, on, mate. Hang well, on, what was that picture from that used to be on the notice board in the kitchen at XFM? <laughs> that was your favourite, wasn't it? It's the weirdest picture of you. <laughs> It was from The Guardian, and you know when they, they, they used the wide-angle lens to get everything in? You were on the edge of it, so your head was really distorted. It looked like someone had picked up Stephen Hawking by the legs and whacked him against a wall. It was right? really weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't and know he what loved it. We really? used to go past to go and look at Steve. Hey, listen, we were both in the uh, Heat magazine Weird Crush. Uh, yeah. How did you get he on He won. He came number did one. Did he win? He won, it, yeah. I didn't even win, you see, so I got handed to Carl. Yeah. I no, lost that's better, though. Who did I lose out to? No, he... him. So he's no, weird. It wasn't no, the same, it was no, it was yeah. different years. Oh, was it? Wow. Yeah. Um, Ricky, you're getting, you're getting away with next. murder here, though. A goggle-eyed freak, the head like a fucking orange. What, Carl, give him both barrels. What could you? What phrase could you use to, to have a go I at Ricky? I, I, have, I, have I ever lost it with you? Pretty perfect, isn't I? I'm pretty perfect. <sighs> no, I don't, I don't smart, think I'd I'm sort of go good with... Good-looking, nice... With names, sort of I'll sort of go, you fucking knob. I don't think you can use that on ITN, but it's more that for me. I don't pick animals. Well, they can. Animals. They make a special exception for me. They're yeah. allowed. Yeah. They're allowed someone to call me a fucking knob. I've, when, it's the only thing they said. Can you it's remember? actually handed down on parchment. Thou yeah. shalt not say <laughs> not, fucking knob. Not censor <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's against Ricky Gervais. The fucking knob. When have I lost it with you and sort of got annoyed and yeah, haven't. you haven't. Um, when, Oh, you wanted me to call off the poster campaign. When I made that poster campaign, I said around the world, and um, uh, there was everyone yeah, putting up posters yeah. of uh, um, Carl Pilkington, um world's roundest head. Yeah. And you asked me to stop it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You thought it was demeaning. 
couple of quick ones. If you guys had cast Carl as a character in The Office back, mm. back in the day, who or what would he have been? Sorry, I hope you don't mind what? me talking about you like that. Uh, who or what would he have been? Wow. <laughs> What? Yeah. What would he have been? What would he have been? Yeah. I mean, yeah, what am I meant to say? Up. A bowling ball? What? Um, well, what funnily enough, bollocks? is um, <laughs> <laughs> what is Keith's bollocks? Well, his mum phoned him up and said, "Saw you on telly the other night." She thought he was in the office. It was just a bald bloke fixing my computer. <laughs> He's going, "No, it was you." He's going, it wasn't me. I'd know if I was in the office or not. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is the sort of job I would imagine you would be doing, though. You'd be fixing, fixing something, stuff. wouldn't you? I'd probably be quite happy work. with it. Sorting some problem out in the lavatories. So quite a manual job, I reckon. Yeah, maybe a courier that you come in. Helmets on. Yeah, but it's a perfectly round. He yeah. wears a pink helmet, and they don't see the difference when he takes it off. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to wrap up, but very finally, I don't know if you mind. I'm getting married next year, mm. and wondered if you wouldn't mind giving a message or saying why you can't be there or something. I yeah. don't go. I, I just don't go to weddings. Anyway, um, honestly, I, I don't know you. <laughs> You're getting married. Here you go. He loves a wedding. Asher, can I use this as a? That's annoying, isn't it? Steve's annoyed that he's got a girlfriend. Of course, though. I'm annoyed. Are there going to be any single women at this uh, wedding? You can come. Yeah, I'm answer the question. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll consider it. <laughs> It'd be best man. Suzanne's brother's getting married, and I don't want to go. But if I use this, is this on the telly just saying, sorry I can't be there, um, you'll have a lovely time and everything, good luck with the future. Um, say you're filming or something, say you pretend you're filming. Do you know what, that's the only thing that would make me do Series 3, if we can put it at the same time as that wedding. Suzanne said you can get out of the wedding if you're doing a well, TV show. Well she didn't, she sort of said, oh, you know, don't do it on purpose. But if I you're would, filming. Honestly, I'd rather do another land dive than, than go to a wedding, I hate it. I have not got married because I hate them. It's not even, not, you know, I wouldn't what's go your, to your wedding. What's your fiancé's name? Julia. Julia. Um, just say congratulations, Julia. All right, Julia. Have a good day. But you hate weddings. I can't stand them. It's so forced fun. He's shit. Well, I can't show this now, can I? <laughs> but I don't know why. How old are you? 29. And what, was it your idea or was it Julia's yeah, it was idea? idea yeah. Was it? She's lovely, yeah. I just, I don't know how people rush into it. Honestly, I don't, I don't get he'd, it. A hundred years ago, he'd be dead at 29. He'd have nine not kids. Now. He's not now. You've got a good it. job, you're working for ITA, and you can afford toasters and kettles, and mm. there's no reason to get married anymore. Unless you, you can have a kid without being uh, married and that. You don't, yeah. there's no reason. I mean, that's not his request. It, are you I paying mean, for it, or have you got your mum and dad? A bit of both. Well, no, her, her, probably your parents are paying for it. They're giving a bit, yeah. Yeah? That's yeah. A bit. Works, no, right? they're meant to... Uh, uh, Julia's dad's meant to stand yeah, up. Yeah, he's supposed to stand up. If he's not, if he's watching this and he hasn't paid a penny towards it, what yeah. a stingy bastard. Yeah. Yeah. No. And given that I'm there, I mean, I'll eat his lamb, but I'm not enjoying it. No, <laughs> yeah, lamb. What, what's, the, what's the menu going to be? Well, if, if he's got any sense, he'd start with some kind of mozzarella salad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he'd move yeah. on to a lovely bit of lamb. Everyone likes lamb. There's Is there a fish the, dish? I don't, I don't well, know. there's no. something for the veggies, but who wants to bother? There's probably one or two of them, you know, a little pasty in the corner. Ooh. Just just move the lamb out of the way. Of course, yeah. yeah and um, just enough. have some of the veg that comes with the what's lamb. The, uh, what are you thinking? Are you thinking fit rolls, or are you thinking like a trifle, or what? Thanks for asking, mate. It's more of a sort of, um, it's more of an eaten mess they've gone for. Really? Yeah. And is it sit down or sort of out yourself? What, sit what's down. the vibe? Oh, sit down. This dude's not pissing about. This no. guy's not going with any bullshit. So hold on, they get He's up. got a band as well. If he's got only a DJ, hold on. then he is not the man I thought he it's was. It's Stan do. Where are you taking him? What are you doing? What have you organised? We've gone to Prague. Um, he Brilliant. slept with 14 prostitutes. <laughs> They said it was a Hold record. On. They said those the girls said it was, was a record. Was he just scraping it off, or is no, he? No, he doesn't care. He doesn't no. care about Julia whether she's getting no. it or not. He's had no. his way, end away in Prague. He don't give a damn. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so there congratulations. We are. Yeah. Have a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. Mm. It is. Carl Pilkington. Good afternoon. All right. What's what's going on? You all right, mate? Yeah, yeah. I just start. You know, I'm grouting. Up a ladder, phone keeps ringing, eight, eight missed calls. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, it must be important, someone died or something. But I don't know. fella saying, come on the radio. I don't I understand. I've been on the radio all week to plug the DVD, which is out now, in early abroad. Nobody was interested. <laughs> Suddenly you're on, you say call him up, but everyone's got to start panicking, getting me on the air. What? 
<laughs> Why are you still grouting? You've been grouting all week. I mean, it must be. Are you doing a shoddy job or are you doing going over things? I don't understand. They're little small tiles, aren't they? It takes ages. But Carl, no, you've never done it in your life. No, I you? don't. No, because my time is I get paid more than a tiler. So it would be mad for me to spend my yeah. time tiling. I wouldn't be saving That's money, right. I'd be losing money. <laughs> so right. you earn more than a tiler. Well, so no, I don't. I, not, not at the moment. Nothing's, nothing's happening, is it? Nothing's rolling in at the moment. Your DVDs are? work is coming in. Your DVDs at number five in the charts. Yeah, but, hey, uh, Richard, you don't see that money for ages, mate. <laughs> Honestly. Nothing happens. He's so annoyed. He was annoyed, right? We've just got our animation on in uh, uh, America, Canada, um, uh, Scandinavia, Australia, right? Channel Four, right? Being a uh, second series being made. Yeah. All those things. Yeah. He's Amazing. going. He's going. When are we getting paid? When are we getting paid? He, he yeah. thinks it's going to come every week in a little brown envelope with gum on it. No, well, it doesn't. Well, I, don't, it, I don't know how long I'm going to be around for. And anything else, like you say, if I was a tiler, I'd do the tiling, and then the person would pay me. Right. But in this line of work, everyone's always oh, quite ready yet. The money's in a pot. Where's the pot? Where's the money? <laughs> What's it, it just annoys me because right. someone could buy it. Carl, who's, who's Carl, trying this off, Carl. And I, that was a, that was a, a metaphor. There's no real pot. When they said, "Oh, it's got to go in the pot," they meant all those DVDs. They go in there and they feel what the profit is, and then we get a profit share. Most people don't get a profit share. You have walked into this job under the wing of me and Steve Merchant. You should be so lucky. You've had the easiest ride of anyone in entertainment ever in the history of the world. No, it's not good though. Everyone keeps going. Oh, you must be a millionaire. No, I'm not, because the money's split. So many hands are out. Every <laughs> job I do, Ricky and Steve weren't away with me when I was abroad. Yet they get a the big bib. They've got their hand out. Their agents have got their hands out. I am not a millionaire, so let's get that out there. I'm skint at the moment. No money's coming in. I've just been on the phone then. The reason I didn't answer one of the eight calls that I've just had is because I was on the phone to the electric people, giving them a meter reading. They all want paying on time. I can't, I can't just tell them, oh, the money's in the pot. The tax man. The money's in the pot. You can have it when I get the pot. I don't know when I'm getting paid. That's how it works. I'm sick of it. <sighs> Good, well, thanks very much, Carl. Yeah, thank well, you, Carl. Carl, what, what room are you grouting? Just in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen, right, OK. But what yeah. are you... Is it all, all tiled? It must be like being well, inside a bath. No, well, there's one wall that there was tiles up. I pulled some off. The wall underneath was damaged, so I thought, right, I, I best not pull them all off. But what I'll do, I'll get my Dremel out. I'll take you out what? all the you what? You what? The, you the what? Dremel. The Dremel. It's like a tool that you use for getting the grout out. Right. Check out all the grout, put new grout in, they look as good as new. Thanks, Anyway, Carl. time for the news. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the format of Five Live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Bye-bye.